Welcome to EPT 2023. I'm putting for my cat. I think I've done. Balea bags the first ever EPT Paris trophy. I'm about to change the world today. I'm calling shots like in the play. I think I'm back. Watson does the double in Monte Carlo. He won the pot, he won the pot. I got me, huh? <laughs> Wichiak makes the call and wins EPT Barcelona. It's time to crown our next champion. Who will be next? Jason Mercier, he went with his instincts, he made the call. There's the professional level, and there's the Ivy League. Double! Sebastian Pauli coming to terms with what he has just achieved. Nicky Curran has done it! Two main event titles! Sebastian Mallets has gone from poker fanboy to poker champion. This is why people love the EDT. Hello everyone, welcome to Cyprus and the Poker Stars European Poker Tour. Yes, we are at the Merit Royal Diamond Hotel, Casino and Spa. A new destination, a new venue for the penultimate stop of EPT 2023. Kicking off five consecutive days of Cards Up coverage of the $5,000 buy-in main event. I am James Harskin alongside me, Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. And Griffin Benger. Hello, everyone. Very excited to be here. What a venue, what a Absolutely, the first ever EPT Cyprus, and it is a big one. We are waiting for confirmation on the field size. More than 1,300 entries. And we are going to be streaming it as it plays down to a winner on Sunday. We expect the bubble to burst later today. We are live every day at 12.30 local time, with the exception of today. And with the exception of Sunday, the final day, the final table day, at 1 p.m. Eastern European summertime, which is 12 p.m. Central European summertime. It's like a 12.30 sandwich. Indeed. And over the course of those five days, we look forward to hearing from you. I am advised that questions and comments are welcome. Hmm. So you can use the live chat on Twitch or YouTube. You can use X, formerly known as Twitter, using the hashtag PokerStarsTV. And if you're all across the socials, there is also great content from EPT Cyprus being posted on our Facebook and Instagram pages. So day 1A in the books, day 1B completed. The field now merges on day two. These are the chip leaders coming into today, and we can see some familiar names in the top 10. Darius Martino, a former World Series of Poker main event runner-up. Parker Talbot, Tonka from Team Pro. We're gonna check on his table a bit later on today. We've also got EPT finalists like Kyan Mokri and Tuan Mulder. Big stacks with around 450 players remaining from that starting field of more than 1,300. They did most of the work without us. So our first feature table is headlined by the online beast that is Nicholas Ostet, a.k.a. Lena 900, plus Jennifer Shahadi, a PokerStars ambassador, Paul Newey, a super high roller regular, and Pedro Neves, who you may remember was the runner-up in this year's PCA main event. A very talented field, Griffin, so understandably at this point, the players spread out all over the room, but we'll try and see as many of the familiar faces and big-name pros as we can over the course of the day. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Nicholas, not staying in his lane online. I've seen a lot here on the EPTs now. <laughs> Running up big stacks. There's Jen. Always fun to watch her play. Jen, not just repping poker stars, but also poker power. Our partner with the women's boot camp, which I believe plays today yeah <laughs> one of those 10 women earning a package to EPT Prague <laughs> spoke to a couple of them at the poker stars party last night they were very excited about today <laughs> Lena 900 aka <laughs> Nicholas Ostet playing a very <laughs> comfortable 110k <laughs> average stack right now is around 90k <laughs> <laughs> Pedro Nevis has the button in front of him. It's always coming, Nevis. 
going to be Raul Rifos in the small blind. Nicholas Ostet in the big blind. It's one of those uh, anagrams, or it's exactly seven boxes. It is. What do you call those? It's not an anagram, it's a. Uh, come on. Reverses? No, yes, that's it. <laughs> Griffin is all about the reverse. Mirror name? <laughs> So we are going to play five 90-minute levels today. Imagine that we will hit the bubble. Imagine we'll make the money towards the end of the day. Paul Newey in the one seat there, ready for action. Top dollar man. We start the action on level 11. Blinds are 1,500 with a big blind ante of 1,500. And it looks like we are almost ready to go. I like this dealer's glass. I wish you the the fighter pilot. Have a nice day. Thank you, guys. You can restart the game. You heard the man. We're restarting the game. It's shuffle up and deal time on day two of the first ever EPT Cyprus main event. Hand number one. I, oh, oh, okay. Time John yeah. Delano okay, there's coming in on uh, okay. Twitch yeah. here saying, Nicholas in character as he Lena on the table. Looks okay, like we have our first ban of the day. <laughs> yeah, you for reading it. <laughs> <coughs> Jihadi folding 8-6 of hearts. Ai Wong Song folds the 10-9. Rounds the blinds. Raul Rifos with 10-4 off. Nah. All that hope. Everyone folding. Can't even do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to go ahead and, and, and limp in on Lena. <laughs> Lena blind on blind with the 10-4. I think I'll fight another day. You don't mind if I bring this closer to me, right? It's got Who would you limp in on with 10 4? Everyone else? You. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> so a walk for Lena 900 on the very first hand of the day. Now he's in the small blind. Paul Newey in the big blind. Action starts with Jen Shahadi. 10 3 off. She folds. Ace Jack for Song. Oof, awkward stack. Yeah, starts the hand with 25 bigs. Opens to 3k. Pedro <coughs> Neves in the cutoff has a seven of diamonds. Going to be expecting Song to have a pretty strong range here, raising an early position off this stack. So, um, you know, I think Neves would elect to three bet this some of the time against a different opponent. Is going to decide to do it anyway, putting a lot of pressure on hands such as this. You know, just because you have the worst hand Ooh. doesn't mean as S. Ted wakes up with it. <laughs> but a real awkward hand, like like we've said. I mean, Song is a pretty strong open. This is a pretty strong three bet. S. Ted might just find a very big fold here. Of course, we can see he does have the best hand, but if he that does find a fold, way covered. Too. Yeah. Exactly. I think that's the important thing that Joe just highlighted. 110k starts the hand with. The effective stack is 35k and. Here comes the four bet from Lena 900, re-raising to 15,000. Action back on the original razor. When you calculate the bounties, you have to do this. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think the bottom of Nicholas's range will prepare to do this, but does find it. And the four bet gets through. Only Lena 900, though. Anyone else with ace-queen suited there is going to be up against pocket kings yeah. and ace-king. elusive over the years as far as media is concerned oh yeah never been denied but never got the feeling he was dying 
to do an interview, dying to come on the podcast. I did run into him in the elevator in Barcelona. Perfectly friendly, perfectly reasonable. But I was too chicken to ask him uh, if he'd come on the podcast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't like being told no. So it's Alexander Vasarin who's opened here with Jack 10. Paul Newey in the small blind has called. Chen Shahadi folds the big blind, and we are going heads up to the flop. First flop of the day. And it is a domination situation. Newey, a three to one favorite. And an even bigger favorite now on an ace nine six board. As long as you don't hit that jack. Continuation bet from Vatarin. 2,000. Called by Newey. Give up. Give up. And there no. is the jack. Two pair for Paul Newey, who now has a lock on this. Vatarin may think that's a good card for him. He's going to bet again. 7,000. Pretty surprised by this turn bet from Faderin. Um, you know, if your opponent does have something like 10-9 suited, calling from the small blind, you've just gotten there. So you we're probably not going to fold out an ace. So a little surprising to see a second barrel here. Oh. Well, Paul Newey. Going for a raise. Interesting. This is where you convince yourself he's doing it with clubs. <laughs> Whatever he convinced himself of was the right thing. Did you guys stop by the party yesterday after bagging? Did no. not. No. Yeah, you? Yeah, oh, it was great. Yeah. Me too. I was there too. I didn't go for long, but it was nice. The great music. Yeah, yeah. nice. I saw him dancing. Oh, you? <laughs> yeah, he was <laughs> swinging. I don't dance. Move around a bit. <laughs> um, oh yeah, sure. We. Oh, all right. I've got a bit of a handover. <laughs> I watched some video of the party last night, what I think was probably the beginning of the first big DJ set, and the music was hopping. But then I looked at the crowd, and everyone was just kind of like milling around a little bit. I was like, yep, poker players. No, it really picked up. There was a lot. Of the, the, the dance floor ended up getting pretty active as the night progressed, I guess, as people got drunker. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> So Vatteren, having just lost that hand to Paul Newey, is back in the action. Nines under the gun, raises to 3,000. Ace-King for Pedro Neves, who is the effective stack here with fewer than 20 big blinds. Something tells me, uh, based on the sample size of one, that Pateren is going to be tough to get rid of with these two nines. Yeah, Neves, not the kind of stack you really have much room to three-bet and deuce. And facing a shove, I think Faderin will probably at least strongly consider calling. It is early position. It is 20 big blinds. You're not getting a lot of pocket eights and pocket sevens shoving here. So that doesn't make it a snap call, but it's triangle time. Neves all in for 29,500. Queen Jack for Song in the big. That's a fold. Snap called by Fatterin, and we are off to the races. You should check in all your players at the table, not only the new entries. So please check in. All like Riz versus Drip. One of these two things has a slight mathematical advantage. Neves is the at-risk player, and the player who is slightly behind right now. 
But there is a king on the floor. And a nine! Top pair versus a set. And Neves down to just 3%. I could have gone to the party. <laughs> <laughs> Six on the turn has Pedro Neves drawing dead, and the PCA 2023 runner up is eliminated in the first 10 minutes of day two of the EPT Cyprus main event. So we think we have around 430 players remaining. Looks like a starting field, and please remember this number has not been confirmed yet. Looks like a starting field of 1,320. More than 1,300 entries in this event. Man, I'd have taken the under on that. I'm glad to be wrong bigger than any event we've ever run in Prague, which is, again, among the bigger EPTs. This is our record turnout for Cyprus. That much is true. What do you guys think? A little, a little fast bender, bad look-alike for Fateran? Mm. A little Magneto? Pretty bad, but I can dig it. Ten minutes into the broadcast, and the bad lookalikes have started. A little shame. Raul, Ace Queen. Raises to 3K. We are at the 1,500 blind level right now. Paul Newey has a dominated hand here, King Queen. Called in position. 8 7 suited. The Dai Wung Song in the small. Folds. Boo. The kind of hand you would love in the big blind here, but just playing 20 big blinds. And the Terran is in from the big with Queen 5 off. Boo. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> Three way to the flop. Down on the chimps, I mean, certainly things have been working out. No five on the flop. And that means ace high is still the best hand right now. As we see the Terran check. Yeah, an advantage to Nui here with that gutter ball. An opportunity to fire something out here and get both hands to fold, including the best hand in the ace-queen. A bit difficult to defend on this texture. They were just heads up, I think. Maybe Rifos would check call this a lot of the time. Might still do. Fateran, what are you up to? <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. Hear him out. <laughs> Let him cook, as Let they say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, that queen on the turn is a bit like that jack on the turn in the previous hand against Paul <laughs> Newey. It's going to get for Terran into trouble. Newey, top pair, solid kicker, straight draw. Bets again. It was 5,500 on the flop. It's 14,000 on the turn. And for Terran has improved in inverted commas the top pair i just want everyone to know he really did the commas thing in the booth it was great i mean i can see this sort of consternation if his plan was to do something funny on the turn and now he can't because he hit his queen let's let's look at this optimistically let's look at this generously Oh, that is a straight. It is indeed. I mentioned that Newey had the straight draw to go with top pair, solid kicker. He gets there on the river. Fateran is checked to him. And Newey sitting there with the effective nuts. Question is, does he want to get greedy? Not greedy. He sizes down. I mean, against the kind of hand that Fateran has, it it uh, it might just work. 
Come on, aren't you curious? It's so, so small. Griffin, if you think your opponent's going to have a lot of two pairs here, is this I, uh, yeah, I too small or is this perfect with the four? I, four yeah, I would there? probably bet something more like in the against this particular opponent, too, if I think they have two pair, probably closer to 20,000. Mm -hmm. But against this exact hand, this might just be the perfect bet. Did get called. <laughs> what was I doing in this hand? <laughs> uh, well, Alexander Paterin is still table chip leader after losing a couple of decent sized pots to Paul Newey. Newey's chipped up to nearly 100 big blinds in the first 15 minutes of the day. Dai Wung Song remains the shortest stack of the table with 20 bigs. <coughs> Griffin, you're getting a lot of uh, compliments in the chat for the let him cook meme, but. I honestly didn't even say that because I thought that mean it had already come and gone. That that nobody was doing the let him cook anymore. I think it's like a meme for old people now. Is it no? Come on. I feel like that that just started like in the last couple months. I guess trends move quickly. Well, out with the old and in with the new because we've got a new player taking a seat on the main stage. This is Kerem Turiscan, who has just bought in at the start of day two just before registration closed. And here is a hashtag fun fact courtesy of Stat Trek. This guy has eight live caches, or eight have been in Cyprus. Oh, there you go. I wonder how he would do in my Cyprus trivia quiz from the last episode of Poker in the Years. Maybe I could administer uh, it to Griffin. Probably, maybe. probably Cyprusingly well. <laughs> <laughs> Is it possible to get banned from the booth? <laughs> We're working on it. It's been a frequent topic of conversation <laughs> for the last 18 months. Did you like it? Yeah. No, I'm in before. So for Taryn, facing this raise from Song, and again, with a dominated hand. I guess he has strawberries working for him. Yeah. Now we're waiting to see what Raul Rifos does in the big blind oh. with Ace King. Rifos, more like re raise, am I right? <laughs> See, that would have been good without the two terrible ones beforehand. <laughs> I'm a work in progress. Okay. The problem is you've been a work in progress since 2018. <laughs> <laughs> there is the squeeze. Three back to 13,000, which <laughs> is greeted by two faults. Rethos playing 114k right now. Average stack is 95,000 with 415 players remaining from a starting field of around 1,320. Because registration only closed in the last 20 minutes, we are waiting for a confirmation <gasps> of the total number of entries. And of course, we're waiting for confirmation on the prize pool in this EPT Cyprus main event and the payouts. Can expect that during the second or third level of the day. Or as people on YouTube like to call it, the price pool. Can he resist? All right, well, we figured out one part of the folding range. Reefos is called, right, out of the small blind? I see a chip, and I see cards. No, it's only the small blind that's out. 1,500 of the blinds right now, so he's been <coughs> thinking about what to do, and he decides to raise. Yeah. 
Why not? Put a little pressure on the 20 big blind rebuyer, but gets a pair. Sorry, Refos, it's his, it's his home turf. He's got home field advantage, as they say in sports. I mean, if you're going to buy in at the start of day two, that's kind of how you got to play it, right? Oh, yeah. for the Omaha High Low, Joe? You know what? I unregistered am. moments ago. Omaha High Low is, uh, is my best game. Follow me. Surprised. Do you know I used to unironically say that? Oh, yeah? <laughs> like around 2008. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so Paul Newey opens under the gun with Ace Deuce of Diamonds. The short stack at the table a one song with King Queen. You know, the problem is on this stack, you really just want to be shoving if you're going to play this. You have to worry about not just Nui's ra raise under the gun, but the four players behind you between uh, the cutoff button and the blinds. Yeah, four checks out. You have nice little blockers with those king queens. So I know you hate to hate to hate to say it, hate to hear it, Joe. But it is less likely people wake up with kings and queens, and it's going to get through that ace deuce. Never known that to be the case. <laughs> if I ever play a tournament where I shove ace king and don't run it directly into aces I will maybe start believing in blockers but unfortunately 100% of the time that's happened to me Shahadi's wrist looks kind of badass. Didn't catch it. Fresh off the reshub with the King Queen. James can't even believe all these people are wearing watches that don't tell time. Look at this one. What brand is that? Minimalist. This dude loves to play poker. Refos once again can repop. Yeah, very comfortably because Song is only playing those 22 big blinds. You're okay getting that in if Song is prepared to do that. And just what you've seen so far from Fatter in your really want to get uh, more chips in the pot against his range. And here comes the squeeze. I think important to note too, there is a interesting dynamic established between the three of these as this is the second squeeze that he's made um, earlier in the rotation when it was the button and the blinds made the same move. You can't go wrong with the James and Joe. Oh, you can, but we like it anyway. Some consideration from Song, but I think this would be a mistake just because I can see the cards, but I don't really think that Refos is going to take this spot super light a lot of the time. Now up to Fatterin. Is that 
Yes. Yeah. Yes. Starts at I think 10th November. 10th of November. Yeah. Do you know what the name is? 3.3. Uh, we got a missed rebound to 4K. Okay. Poor fella. Yeah. I mean, so many frustrating hands to be playing. Marginal city. Yeah. And marginal positions with a marginal stack. He made it 3K. Has the button and blinds to get through. Our steps folded the button. Paul Newey in the small blind passes. Jen Shahadi in the big blind. 8 7 of strawberries. Yeah, very happy to see a flop here. Fair fight against the King Jack suited. Ish. Yeah, sure. I don't think you expect to be ahead with 8 7 of hearts. Well, it's not a terrible flop for 8 7. Open ended, backdoor flush draw. Song's still ahead for now with King High, but he is a statistical underdog. I mean, you really do hate this against the big blind, though. Song aware of that. <clears throat> but it's going to be difficult to play if you don't start with a bet. You'll be betting with all your overplay pairs. You still have a stronger range. Come on, right? Look at that bracelet. That is pretty cool. like something out of Hellraiser. <laughs> and it's only 23 and a half back. Shade could just justify putting this in. But maybe a bit scared of that under gun range. Doesn't want to just blast in half for stack against, you know, what could just be two queens. So, having just called the flop, we now see Song become a two-to-one favorite on this brick turn. Not a lot of wiggle room for Song here. Just a stack to pot ratio of about one. And it's just tough to shove a hand like this. And now what does Jen do? The diamonds have bricked. 8-7 is bricked. You know, your 10-8s and 10-7s have missed as well. Do you always call those for a near pot on the flop? 4-5 has gotten there. 5-7 would be, you know, a double gutter on the flop has now gotten there. So a lot of the draws have gotten there with that 4, and I think that's why... Jen needs to pull the trigger here, and I think why Song most of the time will fold. Well, Song's going to fold this hand most of the time, but what if, what, you know, like a stronger nothing, like a ace king, does he fold as often? Good question. Yeah, I mean, it's. They are kind of in a way the same hand, right? You're not going to be bluffing with the missed ace hex of diamonds there. That would be beating the king high calling, so. I mean, I just, it's just, either way, I would just, I think I'd just as likely fold the ace-king as the king-jack. So, nice little feature table, all-in bluff from the chess prodigy turned poker player. Starting on Alexander Paterin. All right, eight deuce and six deuce are folds. <laughs> Joe has his uh, little notepad Take out here. Notes. Yeah, and, and Nicholas is just getting a bit bored here, I think. 
going to be feel so comfortable playing against his opponent's preflop that he's willing to mix in the queen six from the cutoff. I don't think this is the kind of hand that he would be mixing into his cutoff opening range and, you know, some of the super high rollers you might see him playing or even some, you know, main events online. But Paul Newey, a bit of a reputation for being a bit on the tighter side. Jen just having played a big pot. He just goes for it, gets it done. I actually think this feature table is an excellent opportunity for Lena 900. When you think about what you know your average day two table might look like, maybe a, a couple more familiar very successful faces. I think Nicholas is, is, is a bit ahead of the crowd here. Yeah, I think that last open is a pretty strong indicator. Yeah. That. yeah. Jen Shahadi making a classic error and playing the Spraggy. <laughs> A7 offsuit. Ironically, it might work out for her here because for what seems like the 20th time today, <laughs> Alexander Fateren finds himself with a dominated hand calling out of the big blind. I mean, it's loose, but also a little unlucky. He should be live in some of these situations. Yeah, I think the 7-5 is, is <laughs> going to be, you know, okay facing a button open. You already have that big ante in there as well, but somehow Shahade has the dominating A7. Terran checks the flop. Jen continues. Terran calls the two and a half K. King of Hearts on the turn. Ace high, still the best hand, and Jen better than a four to one favorite now. Yeah, and Jen can go pretty big here if she wants. Try to scare off some, you know, three X, two X type hands. A draw like the 7-5 just also makes it easier to play um, going to the river. So a nice bluff and then a nice two barrel. Great work from Shahadi. Did have the best hand, but I get the, I get your point. Yeah. Chips up to just shy of 90k, slightly below the tournament average right now. Question here on Twitch from Thomas Lancaster says, "You ever thought of adding poker star screen names of the well-known online guys to the player graphics?" Uh huh. Thank you for your question. Well, as Oxbridge observes, playing the Spraggy is only an error if your name is Spraggy. Maybe the hand does occasionally work for other people. That's exactly what I was thinking. Oh, yeah. Griffin, you want to handle this one from YouTube? Are there any Koreans alive? In the world? Yeah. Thank you for your question. Here you go. Here's your chance. A real live Korean. For now. Well, just to be clear, if he's eliminated from the tournament, he won't actually be eliminated. He'll still be alive. I haven't checked the local rules, but I assume. <laughs> yeah. Nothing's changed. Uh, for Terran, feeling lucky. Really? Is a queen 10. Is a genuine decision with queen 10 off in the small? Look how stressed out he is, of course. 12 big blinds is a fold here with queen 10. Maybe blind on blind, um, you can call it, but.
Jared says, all right, Jens, you ready for Fateran's look-alike? Come on then, Jared, we're waiting. Let's see if he says the same thing I did. I'll be vindicated and get to make fun of someone for being unoriginal and not paying attention. A young Robert Patrick, the T-1000. Mm. You know, I'll skip to it, Robert Patrick. Uh, fun fact to say, have you ever read about the, the filming of Terminator 2 and how Robert Patrick really was running that fast and he was running yeah. too fast? Yeah, they had to, had, they had to have the kid uh, <laughs> take off a little sooner because he kept catching him. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know that because I sent it to you, bud. Is that, is that why you know <laughs> that? Yeah, I send, send Joe a lot of memes. He sends me a lot of a fun, lot of facts, fun facts, facts, a lot of memes, a lot yeah. of things I have to ask him to explain later. Yeah. A lot of things I just ignore. <laughs> he answers most of them. I do answer most of them. Paul Newey. A loosey goosey open for him. King six of spades. And Raul Rifos has ace queen in the small blind. I'd say maybe the stream started catching up and people are <laughs> adjusting, but with the hour delay, that has not happened yet. One day only. We do have an extended delay on the stream. 60 minutes behind at real time action. Apologies for the technical issues earlier, which prevented us from going live on time. At least you don't miss any of the action from day two of this EPT main event. And worth highlighting that while watching the stream today, you can play the mini EPT Cyprus online series. Starts today, runs for the five days that we're streaming from this event. And there is $60,000 added value. Power path tickets up the wazoo. And on the final day, final table Sunday, two gold power passes available, added to the prize pool of both mini main events. You know, I've been getting messages from people who are winning gold power passes and they are excited because they're coming to Vegas. Nice. We have another new player at the table, and this is a face we recognize from earlier this season. Joachim Haraldstadt, who came fourth in EPT Monte Carlo this year. That was the event that was won by Mike Watson. He plays on stars as Jokey Apart, and is a very strong mixed games player. But is he a very strong ace jack player? Let's find out. Again, a relatively light open for Newey under the gun. Nine eight of hearts. I like the side of him. And this is what Waldo does in his free time. <laughs> we finally found him. Simmer over this. Yeah, you know, I like, oh. the, like the call here. You know, you put out 3,500, 7,000 more to call. You know, these, these are the kind of hands. Playing at this stack depth, 70, 80 big blinds, you know, you want to be able to defend hands like this. You make a lot of nut hands, disguised hands. And even though Nui has been outflopped and Harold Stad continues to lead, has some ways to win this hand with some heart luck. Maybe uh, another eight on the turn. Perhaps a nine? Probably pretty aware of all the cards that are good for him, I would guess. You think? Yeah. But dink. Could get a free card here. 
Harold Stad. Probably not thrilled about betting this card, even though he's going to think his hand is, is good a decent amount of the time. You know, you're still losing to your ace queens. Flushes, and there you go. Ooh. Is a flush for Harold Stad. And it also gives Paul Newey two pair. Very curious bluff. I'm a bit surprised by this bet. Um, you know, it's not a blocker bet. This is well over half pot. If your opponent does have a big diamond like an ace jack, I don't think you're going to get a fold. Tell you what, it does look strong. I mean, Harold Stats <laughs> really considering this. You know, it's 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 not just the third third nuts; it's the fourth, right? Um, you know, Nui can just have that ace of diamonds as well. Are you counting straight flushes too? Uh, I don't think we should have to. I'm not. I'm not saying that. Yeah. L no, we'll let the. Uh, that's what that gives an opportunity for people in the chat to. Yeah, say okay. that we're wrong, right? We, it makes them feel. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I like to give them a. I like to give them a little. Uh, Buzz Killington open. Oh. Harold Stad folds the flush. Yui's reputation precedes him. He just it's said, "Show eight nine of hearts." That was <laughs> what? Look at that. <laughs> And Harold Stad recognizing that Nui is not going to be calling a re-raise with Ace Eight off, so recognizing that he has been bluffed almost pretty much 100%. Right? Not going to be calling King Eight or Queen Eight Flush. with the King Queen of Diamonds. <laughs> nice. So Nui came to play today, opening the King Six suited under the gun. Yeah. The Eight Nine suited. Turning two pair into a bluff on the river. Let's go. We got ourselves a feature. Action folded to Joachim Harold Stat. Raising with 5 4 of hearts. That's a pretty good hand. Raul Rifos, aces in the cutoff. Can I have one of those waters over there? Thanks. Oh, perfect. Oh, Jen, slow I'll down. I'll a couple of in case somebody else wants one. Thank you. <laughs> The re-raise is to 9,000. Round to Paul Newey in the big blind. 8-6 off. He folds. Back on Harold's stab. In my mind, Jen's asking for water because she's super hungover from the party. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Quite a small sizing here from, from Rifo, so I think this might give Harold Stad license to, to C3. Makes the call. Will be out of position. And is absolutely crushed right now. Has hit a small piece of this board, a pair of fours, but Refos over pair, nut flush draw, loving it. With, with a small enough bet, could get a call from Harold Stad. But it all depends on what sizing he goes with here. Anything in five digits, I think we'll probably see a fold from Harold Stad. But anything under like that eight thousand dollar bet, getting a pretty good price, could still be ahead of your 
or ace kings and ace queens even with the club. Makes the call. These two go to the turn. King of clubs, that is the nut flush for Refos. Harold Stat now drawing dead. That would be a bad time to get someone to try to fold the flush. I like this check. You're oh! oh wow. The victim becomes the victim again. That sailboat on the river gives Harold Stad trips, but as previously referenced, he was drawing dead on the turn. Drawing dead is my favorite time to improve. Guessing this is a blocker bet, Griff. Yeah, you know this is sort of just wanting to. You want to make sure you get value from, let's just say, two red queens and this small, tiny, you know, twelve percent bet. You might get a curiosity call from such a hand as that. Do you ever get a just call from a uh, ace high flush because of the paired board? No. Not that counts really. <laughs> no, but I don't think Harold Stad. I mean, it's it's your opponent is going to have that sometimes, but they're always also just going to have, you know, jacks with the jack of clubs that will just probably call this and not raise. Whereas if you check, those jacks might mm -hmm. bet 15, 20, 25,000. That's kind of what I was asking. Yeah. Yeah. Now the problem is too now that this is paired the board, so Refos is not just representing the ace of clubs, right? This could be pocket kings that would check the turn on the fourth club. This could even be pocket tens that would check the turn. So there are a couple boats here. I think against a $5,000 bet, you know, something like ace queen or queens with the queen of club would, would, would might still raise as well. Hmm. So it's not just, I mean, again, this is a 5K bet and a 38K. It, it looks like he's just trying to stop him from betting. So... Refos wins the pot. Jared saying, what kind of watch is Refos rocking? That is the Rolex Skydweller in stainless steel and white gold. How does he know all this? I gotta say, that is a cool name for a watch. Skydweller? Most complicated watch that Rolex makes. Hmm. Track a second time zone, and it has an annual calendar as well. An annual calendar? What does that mean? Like, it tells you what year it is? It tells you what month it is. Oh. Perpetual calendar will give you the year as well, but an annual calendar will give you the calendar for it. Man, leave it up to the geniuses at Rolex to come up with a way to tell you what year it is. So those are the stacks of the players we're watching at our current feature table. Um, with the rate of eliminations, this is not unusual, by the way, to see quite a few players go during the first level of day two. I think this table is going to break during the second level of the day. So I think it will necessitate a feature table change during the first break, even though I personally am enjoying watching these guys. Yeah. I hope Harold out there is enjoying watching his dad. Still waiting for the confirmed number of entries, by the way. We think it's 1,320, but they are literally crossing T's, dotting I's. In other words, verifying the information before they announce that and reveal the prize pool and the payouts. Let's look at some of the players out in the field on day two, including Darius Martino, the World Series runner-up. 
as former EPT finalist Parker Talbot, a.k.a. Tonka, who I understand is feeling a little bit worse for wear today after going hard at the party last night. Mm, I remember my first beer. There is an EPT champion, Anton Wig, at this table, and sat the other side of the dealer is an Argentinian rapper. It's Papo MC, Alejandro Lococo from Team Pro. Taren raising under the gun with pocket threes. Yeah, and Turskan with not a lot of info here having jumped into this table um, about halfway through this level. Ace 10 is obviously a difficult shove to make off 20 big blinds against an under the gun open, but maybe it's something you'd want to explore doing had you known how active uh, for Taren has been. Certainly would have worked against pocket threes. What about this, though? What if you know that they're active, right? But you're like, they're going to have a hand eventually. Yeah, it's just all about, you know, playing the odds in your head. Also, Ace 10 can suck out. 30% of the time works every time. I thought you were saying the the queen suck it, as in <laughs> don't play it. Ace <laughs> five off for Nicholas Ustet. Raises to 3,500. I was going to say it looks like a chess thing. Yeah. Snowman's. Nom nom. With that stack, I think we might see an all-in for the song. All in. All in. Present that man with the red triangle of death. The red triangle of elimination. He's all not going to die. <laughs> he might also double up. Now it's going to be a bit too rich. For Astad's blood, just saving a little face here. Just to make sure it's not uh, artisanal. James, I'm going to pull up the uh, trivia game that we played on the podcast last week. Every once in a while, you give me the green light. Let me, let's let's do let's do some Cyprus trivia with uh, Griffin. Well, one of your fellow countrymen, mm -hmm. Daniel Devoris, yeah, who's done many trips here to the Merit in Cyprus, performed reasonably well. Okay, it was a winning score with a little bit of assistance, but. Nonetheless, a winning score. So the bar is relatively high. By the way, if you want to hear that quiz, you want to hear that interview with Daniel, check out the most recent episode of the Poker in the Years podcast. As we see, Ostet open here with 9-6. For Taryn with king-queen in the small. I feel like I'm going to be very embarrassed by not having the answer to these questions. I think that you'll do better on the, the questions that, that Daniel did bad on. Okay. And worse on the questions that he did well on. This is not geography. Okay. This is local history. Okay. Still. And happy history. Every every country has some pretty terrible things that's happened. We're going to focus on the, the happy things like inventions and okay. Next poker. Famous people from the area, that sort of thing. I'm going to go to Asia next month. China and Japan. I've been there before. So. Paris six is here. Bellina at 900. Terran checks. No poker there. Well, going to Macau, yeah, Nicholas going to happily bet like here, protect this six against hands, just as, like the ones that Fateran has. I think the poker scene's pretty much died out there, I think. Where's home, where home for? So remember, Griffin, all the questions are multiple Birmingham, choice. Jersey. Birmingham and Jersey. Yeah, Birmingham first, then Jersey, Great. then Asia, then Prague, then Christmas. 
How do I get on Paul Newey's Christmas list? Note to self. Get on Paul Newey's Christmas list, 2024. Can really use a new VCR. Don't be a Cypriot idiot. Okay. I'll do a pocket queens here. Mm -mm. Taryn on the button. They say it's always coming seven. But it's never coming, Nevis. Not this time, at least. Not today. Just a call with the pocket sevens on the button. Refos in the big blind. Studio 54. Let's get weird, says Refos. I'm for it. Five for it. Oh, so close. Well, the ace high flop is not going to be popular with Paul Newey, but Queens are still way ahead. And hey, he's happy to continue into two opponents. Not even a thought from Fateran. What I like is that Rafos, if he drills the straight. I mean, Rafos could raise here. He's the only one that can credibly ha have a three, but just gonna fold instead. And the fun thing to do it with the five four, the four of clubs as well, is you can keep repping on a club if, if an ace calls. This against these two hands, it would have just worked as a pure um, folds on the flop, probably. Nobody folds a flop, though, right? You gotta probably gotta go. I think they both you fold on the, the flop. You think they both yes. would fold the flop? Yes. Don't you think? I mean, think of the situation here. Knew he has to fold because there's a guy behind as well. Tell you what, you know, we haven't been thrilled with some of the plays we've seen from Fateran, but finding a 16,000 chip bet on the turn and actually folding out Paul Newey's Queens. Impressive. Yeah, I mean, he's got some gears. One, raise, three, thousand. Three, With the best hand. Not the worst flop when you elect to complete here from the big blind. Just playing 20 bigs. And you're hoping for exactly that. A free card to Hell yeah, turn a nine or a diamond. You hate to see the ace. But might get another one. From Nui here. But Paul is going to start betting. Mm. 
nice to pick up the easy ones. All right, Griffin, you ready? I'm ready. Question number one. First question of don't be a Cypriot idiot. Cypress lays claim to the oldest manufactured wine in the world. It's called Commandaria. And it was named that during the Crusades. And as such, One, two, it was served three, at the four, wedding of which king? Three, was it Odin the Destroyer, Vlad the Impaler, Richard the Lionheart, or Eris the Mad? Vlad the Impaler. Vlad the Impaler, that notorious crusader. The See? clue there is the crusade. Oh, Who's okay. the king during the crusades, Griffin? Oh, uh, Richard. Richard the Lionheart is correct. Okay. So that's one point. That was a, well. To be fair, Devoris got a mulligan as well. That's your right. one mulligan. You got a mulligan. Okay. One mulligan. All right, we're going to see this. It's like the mulligan. breakfast ball, ball in golf, you know? Always the first swing, you, you, you get a mulligan. Yeah. I, j I just didn't understand the rules. <laughs> fair enough. And look at that. The shortest hand ever, so we can squeeze another one. I just wanted to say Vlad the Impaler, you know? Never had a reason to. You you played that hand a lot like uh, Fateran. Yeah. You were just like, you you decided what you were going to do before <laughs> I even finished reading the question. Exactly. All right. The island of Cyprus was once given as a gift from who to whom? Vlad the Impelier. <laughs> <laughs> was it from Mark Anthony to Cleopatra? From Alexander the Great to his mother? From Napoleon to Josephine? Or from Genghis Khan to General Chow? Uh, I'll go Alexander the Great to his mother. Alexander the Great to his mother is the exact same thing that Daniel DeVore said. And they're both wrong. They're both wrong. Okay. As Mark Antony said to Cleopatra as he opened a crate of ale. Five, mm. three, three, Do you know what ale is? <coughs> um... Do I know what ale <laughs> is? It's not question three. I'm just trying to find a win for oh. here. Um, it's a part of the sale, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. With my sale minus the S. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Pateran opening here. King seven of hearts. I'm going to have to spread these questions out a little bit because <coughs> poor Griffin. He's he's faking an allergic reaction now. So yeah, he have yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Nui defends 10 do suited. According to Orson Joe, Richard the Lionheart took that bottle of wine by force. It was not a gift. S story checks out. You'd think a king could afford to pay for a bottle of wine. There's a lot of paying for things back then, I don't think. All right, Griffin, question number three. Cyprus is the first country in the world to put what on its flag. It is. I thought it would be a sail. <laughs> would you like the choice? <laughs> yeah, yeah, get to me. <laughs> Stars, stripes, a map of the country, or a hashtag. Please tell me you've seen the flag of the country you're in right now. Um, can you repeat the options? Yes. First, was it the first country to put stars, stars on its flag? Stripes. stripes on its flag. Okay, I'm going to go with country uh, or a hashtag. I'm going to go with a map of the country. You're on the board, Griffin. There we go. You're on the board. A clean win right there. You're on the board. But if you ask me, the true innovator will be the first country that puts the hashtag. Yeah. Hashtag nice. <laughs> domination situation in a hand that allegedly you're supposed to defend. The, the perfect example why you shouldn't right here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this hand should play out pretty quickly. Okay, this is a boring hand. Another one. <laughs> Sure it's going to be bet fold. Come on. Look, if Jen somehow just jams here, I don't want to be asking you a question about halloumi. Whoops.
Go to the next one, come back to the yeah. one you're about to ask. <laughs> Griffin, a 2005 excavation in Cyprus discovered what is believed to be the world's oldest, over 4,000 years old, the world's oldest factory of what? Is it the world's oldest paper factory, the world's oldest perfume factory, the world's oldest pantyhose factory, or the world's oldest parachute factory? Okay, first question. What is an X vacation? Excavation. <laughs> okay. All right. he, was, he was joking there. I'll it's go, just when you're I'll such a dodo the rest of the time, and then you are dodo go, on purpose, it's hard to tell the difference. I'll go with, uh, with perfume. Griffin, you nailed it. Nice. All right, Griffin. You got the last two in a row. Now, the questions get a little easier from here, in oh, really? my opinion. Watch this hand first. To see if anyone wakes up with a hand in the blinds. Turiscan has opened in late position with ace three of diamonds. Jen Jihadi, jack seven in the small folds. Disgruntled vet says, X vacation is when you break up with someone when you're on holiday. Nice. <laughs> Song, the short stack, jack five of hearts in the big. You kind of got to see a flop here, don't you, Griffin? Yeah, kind of. Can we do the question? I'm not really invested in the day. <laughs> He's live. I like this. Two short stacks, both in that, you know, not, not quite in the danger zone, but uh, getting close. Advantage, Turris gone. Now, since you probably would have called Jack six suited also, can you just pretend like you have a six here? It's a little hard. By the way, I don't like that people always say represent or bluff. I like saying pretend. <laughs> All right, Griffin. Here we go. British TV producer Simon Fuller was born on Cyprus. Which of the following shows was his creation? Okay. Did he create American Idol? Did he create America's Got Talent? Did he create Survivor? Or did he create 90 Day Fiance? I think he created Survivor. Survivor is the same answer that Daniel DeVore said. Now, uh. in Daniel's defense, he didn't even learn English till he was nine years old. So questions about North American television didn't really go over that well with yeah. him. Survivor was created by a Brit named Rob Burnett. Do you want to take another stab at it? Uh, okay, yeah, I'll do, uh, I'll go do the, the first America's one. American Idol is correct. Simon nice. Fuller, nice. born on Cyprus, did create American Idol. Back to the has opened with Queen at nine. Alexander Fetterin just defends his big with sixes. He is still the biggest stack at the table, by the way, despite losing a fair few hands during this opening level. 15 minutes till the first break of the day, and we have a jack four three flop. Which means sixes are still ahead. Five, check. Ten, bet. Continuation bet from Lena 900. And a call from Fateran. Nicholas looking for a barrel card like a 10 or an 8. Five, check. I think King of Clubs will still. Mix into the barrel range for Nicholas. You want to fold out hands like an ace four, no club, or even something like, you know, sixes. Going to be a lot easier to fold out sixes, no club. Let's see if the Terran gets sticky stubborn here. Don't let this guy push you around.
All right, Griffin. Mm. All right, wait. We got cards in here. Hold on. Miss that one. So we're Jihadi with a dominating hand here, King Queen. Three, three, right. Nine, um. King Jack suited. Nope. Sorry. Uh, that's just that's just about paying respect to a pretty oh. hand, you know. Yeah. Even though you know you got to fold it, you, know, you just gotta gotta give it a second. So nice, <laughs> so suited. Yeah, All right, ten. All right, Griffin. Mm. Which type of cheese was invented in Cyprus? How's Jersey? How many people live there? Oh, about just over hundred thousand. <laughs> We're gonna do Jersey. Well, I have another friend instead. who lives from there. Jersey as in the, in the Channel Islands, yeah? Yeah, and they have like a separate Olympic team and stuff, right? Well, they only really had a rugby team, but they've just gone bankrupt. They had a, they've got a decent rugby team, but not anymore, because they ran out of money. And the government won't help, so... Oh, dear. But they did, they... They yeah, go to the Olympics, yeah, right? Yeah. So you could just learn a sport and play, right? Yes, <laughs> 100,000 people. Maybe the government could yes, afford sir. to bail out the rugby team if people pay tax there. Yeah. Guess who'd be the first person to move there, by the way, if he made that kind of money? Your boy, James Hardigan. Shahade now with some calling chips. Very comfortably going to see a <coughs> flop here with the sixes. As long as she can get through the button and blinds here. Let's get a call from Fatera and let's get a little complete from the big blind. Let's get some four-way poker, huh? Did Griffin answer the cheese question? No, because with this this hand, uh, because they started talking about Jersey, so I wanted to not trample what the players were saying. We were always dying for them to say more, so I figured might as well. Not being funny, Griffin. You should have got this one already without the options. Um, yeah, it's uh, um, Ham Looney. Is that the right one, right one? I'm going to give it to you, despite the fact that you're intentionally <laughs> trolling. Mozzarella cheese, halloumi cheese, teleme cheese, or Monterey Jack cheese. Those are your choices. Yeah, I'll take halloumi. But the third one is a good misdirect. What was teleme it? Teleme cheese? Yeah, that sounds like something that someone might might guess. I assume that Devoris got it right. Devoris did get it right, but it was close. Like he almost said the third one? I think, yeah. Great misdirect. No, I think I think he was pretty spot on with this because he is au fait with the buffet. That's right. At the merit and therefore has had his fair share of halloumi. Taryn. Betting in position here with bottom pair. Okay. And tell you what. With 15k out there, definitely think that you could have justified calling with the sixes there with a check through on the flop. Just hard to imagine what your opponent's really repping there. He's me poker and Olympic sport. Even if it is a block bet, like or something it's like an eight, you're going to be Olympic live sport. with They're the sixes. About it for Chaz, so. To a yeah, straight, so. It, there's been talk for 20 years. <laughs> We've been on the list. Not many good poker players in Jersey, but Charlie Carroll's from Jersey. All right, question number seven. <laughs> Last question, Griffin. You ready? So, Cyprian born, but Canadian for most of his life, jazz musician Leon Redbone mm -hmm. sang the theme song to this popular 80s sitcom. And if you need another clue, this popular 80s sitcom. Production was once halted for an entire day because the show's lead actor had to be hospitalized after sitting on his own testicles. Wow. <coughs> Do you want the choices? 
I feel like you might have heard this story already. It's a legendary story. Wait, did 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 Redbone do the stay woke? Ding ding. ding. No, no. I don't know. Maybe different trivia quiz. <laughs> Here are your options for which theme song was sung okay. by Cyprian Bourne, jazz musician Leon Redbone, in which the show's lead character had to be hospitalized after sitting on his own testicles. Was it Mr. Belvedere? Who's the boss? Cheers. Or Alf? Uh, I feel like... Looks like you were right, by the way. Redbone is the Stay Woke song, yes. I will go... Now, do you know what Alf is? Yeah. Do you think Alf is in the running? Yes. You do? Yeah. How have you not worked out yet that option four is always the comedy option? Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Jeez. Yes, the lead character of Alf, who is a puppet, did not sit on his own. Yeah, but someone is, is he's not a puppet, though. Isn't he someone in, is in, in a suit? No, it's Alf's a puppet. Suit? It's a puppet, yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. I've watched every episode of Alf. I think okay, that. so. <laughs> okay, I'll go, with, I'll go with Cheers. So you think that Ted Danson... One time sat on his own anatomy uh, and therefore like had to be hospitalized. You're right. Okay, I'm going to change my guess. Okay, there's two down. Okay. Now we're left with Tony Danza. Uh-huh. From, from what show? From Who's the Boss. Yeah. Or, and I can't even remember the actor's name from Mr. Belvedere. Let's go with Who's the Boss. You have managed to choose every answer but the correct one. <laughs> okay, Who's the Belvedere? I'll go with that one. Mr. Belvedere is correct. Yes. Leon Redbone sang the theme song to Mr. Belvedere. And the lead actor in Mr. Belvedere. Uh, Alf was performed by Paul Fusco. Who was a puppeteer. And in most scenes, it was a puppet. However, there were a few scenes where you see Alf's full body where a small costumed actor was used. A Hungarian who was uncredited called Michu Mazoris. That infamous Mr. Belvedere story is actually true. <laughs> King Queen way ahead of Jack 10 on this flop. And raising it for value. You want to be able to mix in some check raises with hands like that to make your bluff check raises more credible like if you had a 7 8 or a 5 7 there anyway girlfriend good job i think you got thank you too upset <laughs> Cut off hijack here. It is effectively 50 big blinds. So that's why we just see the call from Grifos, even though I think he's going to think he's way ahead of Harold Stad's hijack range here. And knew he's just like, yeah, why not? Okay, so three ways to the flop. Flop is 10, 10, 4. Pretty good flop for nines. And could be an opportunity, actually, for Refos to get some action here from Nui in the big blind. Lord Barry says Refos is a Dutch legend. Go him. I mean, the way he's, the way he's rocking those sunglasses, I have to agree. Attention, and the Rolex Skydancer. You. you know what does get a quick fold? Entries. 
generating a total price pool of $6,402,000. We will be paying 199 places. 199th will receive 8,325, and the winner of EPT Cyprus 2023 will take on $1,042,000. Wow. Well. Prices will be up on the screen shortly. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your tournament. That is the voice of tournament director Toby Stone. Yes, Optimus Clang. Toby off screen for this announcement, confirming 1,320 total <laughs> entries and confirming a first prize in this tournament of more than $1 million. Mm, love it, love it. Over oh, a million. There. Turning people into millionaires or giving million dollars to someone who already has millions. Love it. Uh, Chen looking like she might have her game face on. And I am incredible at my job. <laughs> So a reminder that we are going to play into the money today. A prize pool of 6.4 million. 199 players will make the money. A min cash worth just over $8,300. And yes, the first prize, $1,042,000 as Nicholas Ostet decides how to respond to this three bet from Jen. Yeah, just so ahead of his opening range on the button here. I mean, this is the same guy who's been opening queen six at the cutoff. So, king-queen, you're probably going to have to mix into your defending range. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see Lena 900 continue here with the king-queen. Isn't going to be thrilled by, you know, maybe depending on how he perceives Jennifer. But is going to play very cautiously and I think is fortunate to get a flop such as Jack 5-7. Would have been disastrous for a king or queen high flop. The black elf on Twitch making a good point that the king queen dominates a lot of the bluff raises from the big blind. Certainly something like a king hmm. five off or a king three suited. Hands of that ilk. It's a word I don't use enough. Ilk. And at that price, Nick says, you know what? I don't really believe you, and I'm going to get into more trouble as we get a stack to pot ratio of almost one to one here. Yes, more trouble indeed now that Lena is drawing dead on the turn. Sizing up the situation here. Do I have room to try to extract more value? Should I just shove for this near pot size amount I have left? I'll tell you what, as long as she puts more chips in the middle, I don't think we're going to be hearing from Estad at all in this hand. And Shahade should, well, will definitely finally get over that. 100k mark. And does find the 20k bet. And Jihadi and her bracelet of pawns chipping up as we come towards the end of this first session, heading towards the first break of the day. Good morning, everyone. Just so you know, after the break, you will be back to your initial... And we did advise that this table break during the next level, so we're going to bring Papo MC to the main stage for the second level of day two. We saw earlier on that Papo has an EPT champ, two EPT champs at his table, because in addition to Anton Wig, mm. Andrew Mateos 
has taken a seat there. I don't know how excited Griffin is to oh. see the pace Look at him. Chaos. Just look at him. Maybe good I didn't hit my hand. Then. What's that? Maybe good I didn't hit them with my contact. <coughs> you didn't what? I had nothing, but maybe it was good I hit nothing, basically. Correct. <laughs> so. Oh, Once again, his instincts on point. point. Very, very good. Should have pulled the slot. You said you had King Queen. Oh. So I'm saying maybe it was good that I didn't hit one of those cards. Ace King for Paul Newey. And a button raise. Now, Jazz, there's something you want to tell Nicholas? Uh, <coughs> mm hmm? I think uh, as a golden rule, maybe give that man as little information as possible. <laughs> Oh, big trouble for Song with the ace 10 suited. You're going to be thrilled to be dealt this hand facing a button open, no matter who the opponent is. And he's going to see how unlucky he has been so far. White bird, Griffin. The swan Song? Yeah. Might just be. It is a domination situation that favors Paul Newey. Song needs to get lucky to survive. Good start. Great oh, start. Oh, <laughs> we have a street flash board, a royal flush draw, and 42% equity for Song. Paul loves it. He loves it. It's not too bad. Trans mode was right <laughs> Way to be positive, Paul. Street flash. There's always coming seven, and that means Newey is a three to one favorite to eliminate Song. Or is this a case of too many outs? No help on the river. Yeah. Sung. And Daiwan Song is KO'd as we come towards the end of the first session of day two. <coughs> Ace King holds against Ace 10 despite that dramatic flop. The song he was singing was the Too Many Out song. Paul Newey playing 168k, more than 100 big blinds, although the blinds will go up when we return from the first break of the day. Five levels to play today. This is the first of those five. And we can expect to go hand for hand. We can expect to have bubble coverage during the final level of the day. Raise here from Wacom Haraldstad. Opens two, three thousand with ace four of spades. Pocket sevens for Jen Jahadi. She's in. Ace king for Alexander for Terran. What does Alex do with a legit hand? It's never been seen before. Not on the extremely large side. Harold's dad, I think, surely has to get away, but maybe an opportunity for Jennifer Shahade to, Shahad, pardon me, to, to call here in position. But it is going to be, you know. 10% of her stack. Do it, Jen. Get him. Yes. Yes. It is always coming seven. Yeah, I just never make it seven. <coughs> I don't hit a set. Okay, maybe this board. <laughs> yeah, all low cards. No ace on the desk. 
Look at it. Look at it. Just uh, nonchalant 10K into this pot. If it even players, as soon as your hand is over, you can enjoy a 20 minute break. 20 minute break on the EPT main. I'll take 20 minutes, but I'm not promising to enjoy it. Oh, ah. the wheel for Paterin on the turn, but Jen's going to know any ace is now ahead of her. Yeah. Yeah, Jen but. is. But. but. Yeah, well, no, not, not with a 20,000 chip bet coming out, unfortunately. You know, had a free card been afforded to her, uh, you know, Jen, I think certainly would have been pleased to see a river six, but given this situation, I mean, she's played this hand as perfectly as you can. Calling the three bet, calling when you're ahead on the flop. But the board's got a pattern, two, three, four. She folds the sevens, and Paterin shows her that he turned the wheel, and this first level of day two draws to a close, a reminder that we are going to be changing feature table during the break. New lineup coming to the main stage for the second level of the day. Two EPT champs, Anton Wig and Andrew Mateos, plus Papo MC, Alejandro Lococo. These are the stacks of the players we're sending back out into the field. This table will break. These players will get new seating assignments during the next 90 minutes of play. The Terran. Still the table chip leader, and Kerem Turexan, one of the players who bought in at the start of day two, is a short stack. He will be in the danger zone. Danger zone! At the start of the new blind level. Blind's going to 1K, 2K when we come back from break. Yes, we will return in 20 minutes' time. New feature table lineup as day two action continues from the Cypress leg of the PokerStars European Poker Tour. We'll see you inside of 20 minutes. Starting this hand about 42 big blinds effective. Peter Jorgna is the shorter of the two stacks. The layer raising was 7 6 offsuit. Seems pretty standard. Yep, lots of raising from position. Heads up, you're going to be very aggressive. Jorgna with a hand he can defend quite easily. 10 6 of hearts. And he does defend, calling for an extra 400k and we will see the first flop of this level. And that flop is 10 high, 10, 5, 3. So it's top pair for Jorgna. Belair does have a gut shot straight draw. Yeah, absolutely. These are boards you want to see bet very aggressively. You have gut shots, heads up, you're in position. You have absolute position against your opponent. So even though Jorgna does have a top pair, a C bet here will take it down a lot of the time when he hasn't connected. Also sets you up for bets on later streets as well, James, if you want to try and convince a five or a three to fold. So I do expect a continuation from Balea pretty much every time. Two million in the middle. And Balea does make a C bet of 600,000. And with top pair, just a call from Jordner? Yep, I think with a hand like 10-6, you just want to play it slow here. Oh, but wait. That is not a call. Jordner check raises with a pair of 10s. I mean, check raising top pair is never going to be a bad thing to do, James. It's just that it's probably more conventional when you check raise when you have a stronger kicker than a six, especially as the six gives you opportunities to turn in river, sorry, backdoor some straights in this particular situation. Okay, so the raise is to 1.5 million, 900,000 to call, and seems that Balea is planning to make that call. 
I really like this flow, James. With the six of spades in your hand in particular, you can actually represent much stronger hands on later streets if the spades start to fall. If your opponent slows down, they might just have pure bluffs that you can get to fold as well. Makes the call, and we go to the turn. I'm calling it, Nick. Action card, four diamonds. <laughs> that would be quite the action card. Oh, come on! <laughs> I got the right color. I didn't get the right suit, but I got the right color. The commentator's curse strikes again. James Hardigan is to blame. It is a turn straight for Balea. And as I said, Jorgnan now has the straight draw to go with his 10, so he's going to be of even course. more sticky in these situations. Of course. So 0%. He cannot win the pot outright. But, of course, a rivet 7 would chop it. I mean, a deuce would be disastrous for him. In fact, a 10 or a 6 would also be disastrous on the river. Yeah, I think the 10 more disastrous than the 6 because, of course, he might give Valea some straights if a 6 falls. But the trips are really hard to get away from without losing some more. So having check raised flop, Jordan, the barrel's turn for 2.6. Yeah, full 50% pot on the turn, and there's so much in the middle now. I mean, heads up, EPT main event, you just turn the nuts and you're getting led into. It feels feels pretty fantastic, James. And remember, this heads up battle is worth a huge amount of money. They both locked up 780K, but the winner gets 1.17 million. And before you ask, no deal, because deals aren't allowed under French gaming law. Alea not interested in a deal when he's got the nuts on the turn. <laughs> I'll take all of it. Thank you very much. You know what? Yep. I'm, I'm feeling another prediction. Okay. I think it's always coming seven. Oh, man. I think we're going to see a river seven. I think we're going to see another dramatic chop. That would be pretty wild. I mean, this is just, <laughs> this card is such such a such a strangely action-y card, actually. It's so, it's so weird how the four seemingly innocuous just creates so much more additional action. If he just flats, SPR is still above one, James, so it might be tricky to get the rest in on the river. But if we see Jorgna lead river after having a called the turn from Balea, it's going to easily go in. SPR way less than one. Looks like he's going to try and raise right here, right now, though. That's one way to do it. So Jordan leading for 2.6. Balea raising. And just going to verify the size of this raise. 5.6. Yeah, very small raise. 4.6, sorry. I think he was thinking along the lines that I was thinking on the turn here, James. He's going, how do I get the whole stack on the river? And if he doesn't raise right now, there's not always going to be SPR less than one, which is one of the easiest ways to guarantee an all-in less than pot. And he's made it a size that Jorgnik just can't fold. I mean, you have top pair and you have the straight draw. Yeah, and of course, he can't see that one of his straight draws is no good and the other would just chop the pot. So it's just, yeah, it's just too small for him to fold because he's thinking his opponent might have a strong hand here, but he's thinking his straight's going to be alive a lot of the time if he can get there on the river. Time bank cards being played by both players. Remember, the shot clock continues. 30 seconds per decision. You need more thinking time. Play those time bank cards. Buy yourself an additional 30. Well, that is a call. This hand is going to the river. We have got 16.2 in the middle. Jorgna's got 9.3 behind. And I'm telling you, it's always coming seven. We are going to be singing. This is going to be a chop pot. That would be another very dramatic chop pot. The second of, of today, in fact, if we see that card fall. River card. Here's the four of clubs pairing the board. Okay, so my prediction of the turn was substantially better than my prediction of the river. But what is interesting here is action is on Jordan. Can he make some kind of blocker bet here? This is so weird. SPR is so low now, guys. He's got 9.3 million behind. There's already 16 in the middle. I mean, I think Jorgna just wants to try to get to showdown as often as possible. I mean, all the, like, so many spade draws have bricked. Some of the hands Balea might semi-bluff raise the turn have bricked as well. You know, what if he had like a six of spades or something like that? I don't know. Maybe that's a hard card he might just... I'm not even sure if he'd play it like that. But in any case, Jorgna obviously has a hand that can win at showdown quite easily. I I'm assuming he's going to just check here. 
He moves all in. What? And Balea cannot fold this, surely. This is an HTC situation. This is has to call. I know the board's paired, but his hand's too strong. That was so unexpected from Jorgna. He has so much showdown. Is he kind of turning his hand into a, pl a bluff, James? Balea asked for a count. I don't see how he can possibly... I don't think I can fold this one. He doesn't think he can fold. I don't think he can fold. HTC plays here. And if That's slash clear. when Balea makes this call, we will have our winner. Makes the call, and it's over. Year of Romania. We have our first ever Romanian winner on the PokerStars European Poker Tour. Razvan Balea takes down the first ever EPT Paris main event. Peter Jordan is the runner-up for 780 grand. Razvan Balea, who qualified for $530 will cash out for 1.17 million. Wow, what a result. Year of Romania. Congratulated by his wife, Andrea, and his friends, other members of the Romanian poker community on the rail. Wow, what a final hand, James. What a final hand here in Paris. My dog wants to say hi as well. <gasps> the first ever EPT winner from Romania. Razvan Balea, welcome to Poker in the Ears. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Thank you for being here. The year of Romania is real. And uh, yeah. I, I just got to know, look, I know we talked a little bit right after the event. You're on stage, obviously. We did a quick interview there. We might retread some of the same ground. But look, I don't admit to this often, but I've been saying it's the year of Romania for a long time. And you're the guy that did it. You did it, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's got to feel great. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, actually, I just uh, thought about it. But yeah, it's, it's like a dream now. <laughs> and uh, it's a dream come true. And uh, now I just want to take it a bit easy because a lot of stuff are are coming to me now, you know, like get media attention and uh, friends and all over. Yeah, so well, I'm really happy that I managed to do this. I mean, I was going to say enjoy the attention, but I also completely understand where you're coming from about wanting to take it easy because you are someone who works really hard at this game. You are a grinder. You put in a lot of hours as a player. You study the game. You put in a lot of hours learning about poker, and you're a poker coach as well. How do you have time to do anything else? Not much time. <laughs> I don't have much time to do anything else, but now I hope uh, I will have some time as well, more time than before, because yeah. now I achieved uh, something great, and uh, now I have some money as well, and I can do more stuff with my life as well. Yeah, it's pretty hard to be a poker player these days, but it's yeah. amazing. It's amazing when you achieve great things. And uh, now my dog wants to say hi as well. <gasps> oh, wow. Look at that pooch. This is this is Ace. This, this is, is my Ace, Ace the dog. All right. Ace, yeah. of course. <laughs> Yes. This is my yeah. my my ace for my you know my for my hand. Oh, <laughs> ace up your when sleeve. I, when I need an ace on the river, I call him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> fantastic! <laughs> Very cute. So I know that I'm sure part of your approach and part of your coaching would be to teach players to uh, keep their emotions in check, right? It's something that all poker players have to do. Um, Obviously, keeping the bad emotions in check is what's most important. While, while you were having that sun run, were you allowing yourself to feel the good, positive emotions, or is it still no emotions? Yeah, I think, I think you need to accept every emotion that, that is coming to you, right? So I learned during these years, and especially last two years, that uh, I had a lot of emotions while, I, while playing, while studying. So... I, I learned to how to accept them, and this is the the most important thing I think not only in poker. So, 
if an emotion comes to you just stay with it a bit because you can't avoid it you can't do uh, uh, I had times that I was playing some games after a bad session, for example, just to forget what was going on. But I learned that you need to accept it first, and uh, then it will go away, and uh, you need to be prepared for what is coming, right? Yeah. Overall, looking back at it, are you happy with how you play? Do you look back and say, wow, I made a lot of mistakes and I was just very fortunate, or do you actually think this was one of the best tournaments I've ever played from a theoretical point of view? Yeah, I think this one uh, was the best tournaments I ever played for sure. Excellent. And, yeah, the, and the best focus I ever had in a tournament. Yeah. For sure. And of course, we have to talk about the final hand. Um, and I always find it much more interesting when the final hand does play through the streets. You know, often it's a coin flip, it's an all-in pre, and yes, it's dramatic, yes, it's suspenseful, but when it comes down to that river decision, it just makes it all the more meaningful. And I just want to know what went through your head at the moment when you made that call on the river and without showing his cards, Peter just said, congratulations. That was, uh, even now, it's an amazing feeling uh, when I think about it, uh, when he said congratulations. Uh, yeah, it was uh, like a fully relief and in the same time a big joy that I knew that time that I'm a champion, I'm an APT champion. So, yeah, um, I, I never thought to fall that hand for sure, but I wanted to take my time because it was a call for the, for the title, right? So, in general, uh, I take pretty fast decisions because I play a lot online, so I need to take decisions more fast. I like to play fast, but uh, that time I, I thought that I should properly take my time and uh, and adjust the ranges properly and yeah, I never thought to fall for sure. <laughs> So Guillem, back up to around 120,000. As a new player arrives at our feature table, we may have lost Benjamin Spees and Kent Lundmark, <clears throat> but at least we've got Florian Kostler. Action is on, Florian. Sunglasses and all. Classic. Holds the king six under the gun. Daniel Guillem is out. Pocket fours for Jorma Newton. And he raises, makes it 2,400. Pocket queens for Jake Cody. Expect to see a free bet. 5-8. If this were Jeopardy, I would answer, what is Daniel Negreanu's listed height? So a re-raise to 5,800. Not much of a hand for Juan Luke. She folds. Mahonen's out. As is Ruskia Constantine. So back on Newtonen. See if Newtonen wants to dig out his miner's helmet and his pickaxe, go searching for a four. Hi ho, it's off to the flop we go. Not yet. Oh, sorry. Nice try, pal. He's gonna have to dig pretty deep considering Xuan Lu already folded a four. Well, that four's not gonna help him anymore. Queen, queen, seven, quads for Cody. Huh. Newton and checks. Five, five. What is Daniel Negreanu's actual height? Jay Cody bets 5,500. It's likely Newton will call at least one time and hope Jake's got many of the unpaired hands in his range, even though we know he's more dead than Mel Gibson's career. He calls. We go to the turn. Five of clubs. Bad card for Newton since it doesn't look all that scary. Not as bad as a four would have been, though. Jake bets again. Jake Cody, no fool. He's going to try to get paid on every street here. You can easily see Newton calling again, thinking Jake's just barreling. He does call. 10500 apiece to the river we go. Jake's probably already trying to calculate the cost of Newton's river ride to Value Town. It's the case four on the river! Oh, the price of that ticket just went up to everything you've got. What a horrible spot for the Finn. The one card he thought he wanted to see is the one card he so did not want to see. 
This is going to be a shame. 17.5. Cody bets for value, 17,500. Not sure if Newton is Hollywooding, but he better enjoy the camera time while he can. I'm all in. He shoves. You've got quads, Jay. I've got. This is happening way too slowly for a guy with quads. Come on, Jake. Oh, wow. Nice river. I'm surprised he thinks it was a nice river because it actually it caused him to lose. Oh, I see what he did. Yeah. Jake Cody gets the double up. Jake made a really small bet there, hoping he'd get a crying call, but in classic Jake Cody fashion, he flops quads and still somehow hits the river. He's now up to more than 151,000. Welcome back to the PokerStars European Poker Tour in the first ever EPT Cyprus. We're at the Merit Royal Diamond Hotel Casino and Spa on day two of the main event. Coming back from the first break of the day, just shy of 350 players in a starting field of 1,320. Just before the break, the payouts were confirmed. We've also been able to tally who the chip leaders are coming back from break. Two and Mulder remaining a top five stack. As day two continues. Yeah, prize pool of 6.4 million, more than a million up top, 199 players getting paid, and we expect to hit the money during the fifth and final level of the day. It's James Hartigan alongside Nick Walsh. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for having me. Nick, welcome to Cyprus. I am so excited to be here. The premises are stunning, uh, and the field looks uh, juicy. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and this new feature table looks fun. Headlined by Papo MC and a couple of former EPT champs. Alejandro Lococo is the big stack <laughs> with nearly a quarter of a million chips, more than 120 big so players. <laughs> Anton Wick <laughs> is a former <laughs> EPT <laughs> Copenhagen <laughs> champion. <laughs> Adrian Mateos <laughs> is a former <laughs> EPT <laughs> Monte Carlo <laughs> champion. <laughs> Blinds are going up to 1K, 2K with a 2K big blind ante. Couple of shorties. Mateos, 16 big blinds, but <laughs> we've seen players bounce back <laughs> some worse. <laughs> So yes, confirmation of the prize pool, $6.4 million, this event being played in USD. Min cash is worth around 8.5K. These are the payouts of the top finishers. Six-figure scores for the top eight, with the exception of the winner who gets a seven-figure score, one million and $42,000. Final table will play down to a champion on Sunday. We're, of course, streaming every day from here on out. So if you join us on Sunday, you'll be able to watch that FT and you'll be able to watch us crown a champion who will receive that huge first prize. Yeah, what a turnout this year. Absolutely beautiful prize pool. Very, very excited about our first ever Cyprus. Yeah, we kind of thought that it would track along the same lines as an EPT Prague. Maybe we'd see between 1,100, 1,200 players, 1,320, 1,320 total entries in this event. So a very impressive field size, a very impressive turnout. Yeah, I've only been here for a few days, but the, the vibe on the street from the individuals I've spoken to, both regular EPT players and individuals that I've met along the way, have been saying they're loving the action, they're loving the facilities. So I wouldn't be surprised to see that number increase, and maybe we might even get closer to a Barcelona number in the future. Mateos in his seat, 33,500, 16 big blinds. player who's had a fair few results in the last couple of years. Alejandro Lococo, Papo MC from Team Pro, table chip leader right now. Confirmation that we have 343 players remaining as we kick off level 12 of the main event. Blinds are 1,000, 2,000 with a 2K big blind ante. 90 minutes on the clock before we take our next 20-minute break. Good luck, guys. Good luck. Good luck, too, but look alive, you know? <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, previous table was a little bit on the quieter side. Maybe we'll see a little bit more table talk. I mean, it is still only this day two, James. You know, our parents always thought that we were these slackers. We didn't amount to nothing. And I mean, we it's not about TV. It's players. Thank you for your patience. We are going to restart. Blinds 1,000, 2,000. How many times have you been to the feature table? Dinos, you can restart again. I don't know. Infinite. Uh, not infinite, but I... Not the thing to keep track of. Ask Mateos how many times he's played on a feature table. <laughs> Good point. His answer? Always. Always. Never misses an opportunity, and we certainly don't help him in that field. He's I mean, I one to watch, we always. So obviously we'll introduce ourselves to many of the players at this table as we check out the first few hands of the level. It has been folded. So Rashid el -Yakubi on the button, he passes. And Paul Goel with jack four in the small. Yeah, lots of sunglasses at this table. Individuals trying to cover their eyes, cover some tells. Blindy blind, jack four of the offsuit variety. Honestly, is fine just to fold. Looks like he's gonna complete in the small. Teos with 9-5 in the big. We'll check his option. We have a jack 5-3 flop. All hearts. This board does give Goel the advantage, but Mateos will not dismiss it with second pair and a flush draw. Only Mateos could have 9-5 off and still have 46% equity with the worst hand on the flop. Bet Nicole, 3K each. Turn card is the seven of clubs. Goel now, seven to three favorite. Yeah, really interesting spot now. Don't know if you want to continue bloating the pot with such a weak jack with the very weak four kicker. And of course, no hearts, no opportunity to improve into that flesh. I think two barrels is totally reasonable, but some players might choose to, uh, to slow the action down here in lieu of bloating the pot and getting into trouble. I don't think Mateos is going to be going anywhere, though. Tough, though. You're looking at a third of your chips here, Nick. Yeah, you're right. Quite well spotted. I actually didn't see the size there. Chunkier than expected. Of course, that heart drop might be no good. I think I'm still calling, and so is Mateos. We'll be looking to improve on the river. Nines, fives, hearts working for him. Instead, it's the Jack of Diamonds, which pairs the board and gives Goel trips. So now, really interesting spot. Do you want to give the missed hearts an opportunity to bluff? Not to, not to say that Mateos always would here, but, you know, do you want to give the fives an opportunity to check behind? He's all in. spot here for Mateos. Obviously can have the best hand here. Plenty. Lots of missed flush draws that might have that flop, that turn. Potentially some ace of hearts, king of hearts, trap pre. But if anyone knows what to do, it's Adrian Mateos. knows it's pretty close. Looking for some live tells there. A little glance to his opponent directly to his right. Does not make the hero call with a five. Waits for a better opportunity. Will be left with just nine big blinds, though. There are other two relatively short stacks at the table. Two players with sub-20 big blind stacks. Goel is playing nearly 60 bigs. He's around average. Average stack right now being 116,000 with 340 players remaining. Yep, nearly half of his stack there. So now getting pretty close to the push fold zone. Being sub 10 effective. Now eight big blinds once he's put in his small, big, small blind, excuse me.
Papo folding this one. This is one of the shortest stacks of the table. Stefan Lena. 4,000. And he's going to raise with King Jack. Sergei Lisi folds the Queen 6. Clemens Reuter, Jack 10. Round to Goel on the button. Pocket sevens. Ooh, interesting one now, James. Bearing in mind also, of course, we have Mateos behind. He's on the shorter side as well. Big blind Anton Wieg with 220K. So I was going to say this might be a spot where you can just raise them all in. Um, but of course, you don't want to uh, put yourself in a tricky spot against that big blind who's got you covered necessarily. So I think flatting is pretty reasonable here. What does the big blind have? Here he is, ace five of hearts. It is the official sourdough suited. And he's just gonna flat here as well, recognizing that shorter stack open from laner. So we're going three ways to the flop. We are indeed. Which is king, 10, deuce, so top pair for the pre-flop aggressor. So check from the sourdough suited. I think Laner at this point knows the idea is just to get as many chips in the pot as possible with that top pair. Tom Wig has a couple of backdoor draws here. Ace high is not a weak hand. Yeah, I think he's just debating whether or not this ultra small continue with the backdoor hearts, backdoor straight draw is enough just to peel again, potentially even turn his hand into, into a bluff against, you know, a continuation from pocket fours, pocket fives. Again, maybe those smaller pairs not going to be near as often off of that lower stack, but instead opting for the raise and not gonna like the response here. I think Laner pretty much knows he's gotta go busto here. Did not enter this pot to fold top pair with the jack kicker. Sub 20 effectives to start the hand. So the question is, King 10 deuce, no flush draw available. Do you just call and allow your opponent to continue blasting? I think that's my line. Yeah, but this guy again on the short side, just 15 bigs behind. Just thinking, you know, your opponent might do this with a hand like Queen Jack. That's a hand that can outdraw you, but you do have the Jack in your hand as well. So you got a blocker situation going on there if you're in the laner's shoes. Does just call. Yeah, I dig it. And we are going heads up to the turn. And you'll notice now 33K in the pot, 26K behind, less than pot. Ten of spades pairs the board, and it means Lena is now a 92% favorite. Less than pot behind for Stefan Lena here. I might be tempted to check again, James. I mean, you kind of don't ever want to give free cards at this stage with so many, so much dead money in there. So maybe just a really small bet here is preferred. Um, obviously, ten do suited might still be check trapping you here. King ten suited might still be check trapping you here. Those are combos that you might have just called within the big blind. But I think I prefer the check and just maybe give him a little bit of an opportunity to fire again on the river as a bluff or potentially improve in a way that will, will get you get, get you paid uh, with a river bet. Well, that's the card that Anton Wig wanted to see on the turn. It would have given him all of the draws in the world. Instead, it's too little too late. 
He is left with just ace high. And checks a second time. And third now, time, actually. Yeah, third time. And now it's value. It's value town for, uh, for Laner. Don't think he's going to be able to get paid, though, by the ace high. I think it was just a one-and-done situation for Wig, which I appreciate with the backdoor hard draw, backdoor flush draw against that very small continue. Come on, Stefan. You're not a panther, you're a tiger! Grr. <laughs> wow, checks it wow. back. Wow, that was unexpected. I mean, you know, it's not impossible for Week to have a trap here, but I, I feel like at some point they're probably going to want to put in a value bet on that river, but uh, doesn't want to get any, any extra there. So it takes the check, takes it down. Now playing just shy of 30 big blinds. We have 336 players remaining. Average stack closing in on 120K. Just thinking King Queen probably doesn't mind squeezing there a little bit. Obviously, Ace King probably squeezes there pre flop every single time. You're running out of combos that outkick you. And you're probably not running into a boat that often, so yeah. yeah, I don't know, possibly possibly a miss bet there, but wants to play it safe and potentially feature table situation, just slowing it down as well. Doesn't want to make any mistakes on camera, which I can totally sympathize with. Uh, Rakadasa watching on YouTube says, bring in the clock. Of course, from the start of day three, we will have the shot clock in play. The main reason why it's not used from the start of the tournament is it's not needed. Generally speaking, during the early levels, levels that some people consider to be pretty inconsequential. You don't see a lot of egregious tanking. Hands tend to play quite quickly, and people don't tend to spend a huge amount of time over their decisions at this stage before they're in the money. Granted, when you get close to the bubble, sometimes you see a little bit of stalling, but that's what you have hand for hand. That, well, that eliminates that problem. Yeah, at this point, we're pretty good at handling that kind of stuff. Tournament staff, very good for that. Mr. Lococo. Going to defend the big here. Obviously, pretty bad shape pre-flop equity-wise, but yeah. very cheap board to see. And it is a ace-nine tray, so middle pair for Lococo. This could cost him a few chippies. I expect probably a continue from laner quite frequently here. Plenty of hands to get value from, nice and small. Okay, went actually chunkier than expected. 4,500. I think at this lower stack depth, I would have expected to see closer to a quarter pot, but wants to put in closer to half. Just 3% equity for Papo MC here. And he's going to need to find a nine on the riv. Laner slows it down, so opting for a larger size on the flop to slow down turn, which I think makes a lot of sense too. Check, check, and pocket 10 is gonna take it down. Yeah, a couple nice pots here for Laner, though. So after those two exchanges, 35 big blinds for Stefan. <laughs> two in a row there. More than 30 bigs now for Stefan. Clements Reuter is now tied for the table chip leader with Alejandro Lococo. Anton Wig is also a big stack, playing more than 100 bigs. 
332 remaining. Average stack is 120k. 15 minutes into the 1k, 2k blind level. Action has been folded round to Apova Goel. 4-3 offsuit. He's out. Mateos has folded. So this is Anton Wig on the button. Looks like he's passed. Now we're blind v blind. It's Lococo versus Lena again. Yeah, an opportunity for a little bit of revenge here, blind v blind. Papo is going to be calling a small blind 8-6, the offsuit variety. Pair for Laner, 67% favorite now. We've got shot for La Coco. Seems pretty standard thus far. Cinco for Lococo would give him a really nice turn card to barrel again, but it's the King of Diamonds. Honestly, not the most ridiculous continue card for Lococo here either, though. Obviously, can still get some sevens to fold, some fours to fold, maybe some flush draws to fold. If he wants to barrel turn here at this stack depth, though, it probably needs to be quite chunky. And James, if I know, if I know Mr. Lococo here, if I know Papo, he just finds the barrel a lot of the time here. Very aggressive player, and I'd like to see close to full pot, maybe even slightly over. Aggressive to the point where sometimes you wonder if he's gotten a point. <laughs> okay, I called it. 13 in the middle. That's a full pot turn continuation, and I'm here for it all day long. Really like this style. Ooh, -hoo, strong call. Lots of chips in the middle now, guys. Barry Greenstein, ace on the river, does not change the outcome of this hand. All right, Papo, over bet, shove, river, easy game. Send him home. Coco is betting, and it is enough to put <laughs> Stefan Lena all in. And now we await an awesome hero call with just a pair of sevens. Now, guys, I don't want to say I called it, but I feel like at this point we've seen enough from Papo, and I know the way he is, and I absolutely love it. I mean, he knows his opponent probably doesn't have ace-jack, probably doesn't have ace-king, probably doesn't have king-jack, probably doesn't have pocket fours or sevens. Probably doesn't have pocket jacks, probably doesn't have pocket kings. There's just lots and lots of hands that they would have represented differently here pre-flop, blind v blind, and therefore a very cool opportunity to just blast off. I think maybe a hand like a7 might be the only one that really hero calls here that plays their way their hand that way pre-flop, and even that might have put in a raise versus limp. Mortz watching on Twitch says, tough call to make, but kudos if he does. Kudos indeed. And a full double up. Opium thinks that oh, Papo wow. looks nervous, not nervous enough to dissuade Lena from making this hero call. What a call. Puts the chips in with just a pair of sevens and gets a full double up. I mean, guys, hats off in chat. This is unbelievable stuff. What an epic hero call. So Stefan Lehner, who was in the danger zone a short while ago, is now playing close to 70 big blinds. 
And Papo has dropped down to third place on the leaderboard as far as this table is concerned. Still a, an above average stack neck, still oh, yeah. playing 82 big blinds, but not the force that he once was. Yeah, and I mean, look, you, you put in a really, really good bluff, very well timed. Your opponent finds the call. <laughs> But uh, how do you think he got those chips in the first place, Jat? I reckon if he does that 100 times, he's going to get more than a 50% fold there. That was some pretty good poker from both players. Uh, what a hero call, though. Really, really incredible stuff here um, from Stefan Lehner. I talked earlier on, Nick, about the fact that Papo has had some decent live scores in the last couple of years, including that final table in Vegas. But also, he did win the Eureka main event at the EPT Prague series in March last year. Correct. Interestingly, I don't know whether you saw, but the Eureka main event here in Cyprus was won by a guy who final tabled the Estrella's main event that we covered back at EPT Barcelona. Yes, it was Ankit Ahuja, am I correct? Indeed, a former PokerStars employee who I think had a fourth place finish in that Estrella's main event and then won the Eureka here in Cyprus for just over $360,000. A Hoosier score for our friend Ann Kit. Thank you. And uh, I'm here for it, absolutely love it. Yeah, of course, uh, one of the first times we ever saw Papo on the scene was when he, when he took that score down in uh, Eureka, as you said, in March of last year. That was like, oh cool, this guy seems like a lot of fun. Instantly wins his first yeah. tournament. Yeah, I think he'd already had that World Series final table appearance before then. He was already right. on our radar as, yep more than just a rapper at that point. Uh, this is Wig versus Lissy, and it is a domination situation, but it is the open-ended straight draw for Anton Wig on this 985 flop. A pretty solid piece of analysis from Olivier watching on YouTube. A very exploitative call if you know that Lococo is an over-aggressive player, but still needs balls. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Shout out to you, Swedish Kebab in the chat as well. Is Ratman playing? Absolutely. We've seen him in the field already. I don't know if you were watching during that segment when we did rehearsal yesterday, James, but... Um, he did come over to the table, and I insisted that he sing the song. Oh, me. how lovely for you. Yeah, it was fantastic. Continuing to cut through this field. Now 324 players remaining, 199 of them will get paid, and we can expect to burst the money bubble later on today. El Van Dam says, I'm here for Tonka, and he's not even on the TV table. He will be later. He said at the start of the day, going to try and showcase as many of the big names and follow as many of the red spades as we can. So we had Jen Shahadi on the feature table for the first level. Got Papo now. It'll be Tonka's time later on. He's got a lot of chips. As long as he doesn't do anything stupid, <laughs> there'll be plenty of time to check out that beautiful ginger beard. Yeah, I mean, that's a tall order for Tonka sometimes, got to tell you. Pocket sevens for Wig now, hijack. Okay, action stations. Coco wants a piece of this, the king-queen suiting. Very nice hand to call with in position, does so. ways guys 95 city decides to come along as well which i think is very cute flop is jack jack nine rainbow i think my defend looking pretty cool now obviously a little bit tricky to play out of position everyone checks though got to give you a lot more confidence with that nine you have the best hand probably want to start protecting it at this stage 
Still plenty of smaller pairs that will call a bet here. Still some overcards. Still some straight draws with overcards. So if you're in Reuters spot, I think you probably want to start leading here. 50%, 60% pot seems good to me. Okay, never mind. Wants to play it slow. Maybe Wieg is thinking the same thing himself. Yeah, he's going to fire instead. Really not too dissimilar from the nine in this situation, right, guys? A hand that wants some protection. As I just said, some other combinations you might still get value from. Popo, two over cards and a gut shot. Never one to shy away. Wonder if we might actually see some aggression here again. What if he puts in a little raise? That would be quite cheeky. Looks like just a call, though, instead. action though James yeah probably regretting not just firing the turn right here right now probably would have uh, done a little bit better than tr trying to make a decision uh, out of position multi-way with what is a, a little bit of a tricky one now and he finds the check raise instead wants to clean it up so raises to 15 very cheeky little maneuver here with the 9-5 Shot on two overs with one card to come. Nah. <laughs> Asolis121 says hello to the stream team. Hello to you, first time chatter. Well, interestingly, Papo has made the call, Nick. Look, he's got the low coconuts. He is not rewarded with a card on the river that helps him. Reuter now has a lock on this. Is the covering stack as well? I was going to say, though, at this point, he's putting... Yep, now the slowdown. Can Lo Coco now find Le Bluff? Does nope. not check, check. Yeah, no good for Le Coco once more. hand for Reuter now 130 big blinds and our table chip leader yeah Reuter playing more than 130 big blinds and still have an hour to run on this blind level pretty good little session here though James definitely seeing plenty of action from these guys no shortage of drama. This is just our second session of the uh, of the series so far, correct? Correct. Day two of the main event. We started streaming from the start of the day, and this is only the second level. Two of five. Five levels to be played today. Yep. I love when we get the chance to follow right from the start. So much fun to see these early stages. A lot of coverage just going in really late. Final two tables, final table action. You don't get to see these guys playing at these ultra deep stack depths, and I think this is where a lot of players could improve upon, myself included, of course. Raised to 4,500, flattered by the Grafton, 10 9 suited. And now Lissy with 7 6 suited. Calls as well. Reuter folds the small blind. Elia Kubi is in the big blind with. Uh, 
Queen nine. I was going to say this hand will have to be really bad from not to call. <laughs> yeah, Queen nine probably good enough. Still a hand that you might get in some trouble with four in a four way uh, four way coup. But off to the race as we go. Let's see a flop. Well, that flop is queen eight three, just the one diamond, and well, Yakubi flops top pair. Uh, I, I press reboot on the computer, and now I'm just like, install it once over. This is what I think. Yeah, I take a long break during the summer. Yeah, I've been, I've been doing some business, and going to the first round of that. So Gut Shot's going to take a shot here. Factor Diamonds as well. I think I like this a lot. Yakubi, 25K behind, 26K in the middle. Does he just ship it in? Does he just call? Wants to play it slow. I think that's totally fine. Like I said, multi-way can get into some trouble. And of course, the Coco still to acts. Never mind. Right? Okay. Assuming just folded the hijack instead. Yes. Of yeah, of course, that, that, that makes a lot more sense. I think I'm just going to probably expect to see a check a bunch here with the gut shot now. Yeah. Made an attempt on the flop, slows it down. No improvement. Kubi, top pair, nine kicker. Has a decision now. Does he try and extract some value? Or does he want to play it safe? I think maybe this might be a great spot for a little blocker bet. You can get called by a little bit worse. But of course, also slow down the action. Even if your opponent has a strong as hand, uh, hand as strong as queen 10, king queen, they're not going to risk going broke against an eight, so you can save a few chips rather than checking and allowing those stronger hands to actually find a chunky value bet. Fourteen players now. Eight of them on the main stage at our current feature table. Andrew Mateos under the gun, down to just eight big blinds, and of course he's about to go through the blinds, so makes his move now. All in with sevens. Yeah, time has come. <laughs> Ace five suited for Stefan Lehner. Uh, bold prediction here from Owen on YouTube. Grafton is going to be champ. Will be hard, seeing as he busted day one. <laughs> well, he uh, holds Jack nine on the button, so we've got the blinds to act now. Small blind out, big blind. Pull the go out. Ace 10. Yeah, this might be good enough. Mateos with less than 10. Close to nine bigs. I might find the call here, James. An opportunity to eliminate Mateos from a poker tournament? Have you ever seen such a thing? Wow. Wow, that was definitely on the tighter side. Obviously, plenty of dominated aces got to be all in there at this point for Mateos. Doesn't want to take the risk. I think he's happy to see the fold, too. Well, Mateos now has to play through the blinds. In fact, on his next hand, Nick, he has to post the big blind and the big blind ante. 
Yeah. Have like 20% of his stack in the middle already. <laughs> yes, I mean, he gets a free ride because he picks that hand up there. So maybe he did prefer the flip, but uh, no variance. Just folds. See if he can find an opportunity to get it in here now. Button raise from El Yacoubi with a seven of hearts. And Mateos calls with a dominated hand, jack seven of spades. Ten eight five on the flop. Yep, you'll notice 13k already in the middle. Mateos with 15 behind. Is this an opportunity for a check raise, James? I don't think El Yacoubi is going to have any issues getting the nut flush in, nut flush in on the flop anyway with the one over card and nut flush draw. Yeah, little stop and go. Snap called. Mateos in big trouble. Absolutely. El Yacoubi ahead right now with ace high. Has the heart draw as well. Mateos with four outs. The Jack of Diamonds, specifically. Many of those three nines. Yeah, Mateos just wanted to stop and go right here, right now, try and maximize folds on the flop, but 16%. Not looking good for our previous EPT champ. Well, that is the nut flush for El Yacoubi, and that is the elimination of Adrian Mateos. We say goodbye to a former EPT champ. The man who took down Monte Carlo in 2015 is KO'd here on day two of the first ever EPT Cyprus main event. And we are down to 309 players. Asian in general, right? That's why I said Asian in general. Yeah, but that's what you yeah. picture. Yeah. What are you doing in the best, best Indonesian? 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 Yeah. Indonesian? French? Sorry, yeah, shoot. Huh? Best uh, cookies, French. In France? Yeah. What's the. Okay. I don't think so. Sorry. We respect, we respect. <laughs> <laughs> My friend, please. No, no, with respect. Best gastronomy. What's your favorite dish in. What's your you went to Argentina? Like, like, don't get me wrong, I love the French kitchen. Like, there's nothing wrong with the French kitchen. Ah, but thank I'm, you. I'm saying, like, thank you. for me, I will look like a hot air balloon after uh, a year or two with the French kitchen. <laughs> 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 but I won't fly. Okay. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> if I gotta pick one that actually, like, gets the job done for me, I, I will be sad. That would be sad for a lot of kids. Okay, you got fun. Yeah. I don't know. Aces. He has aces. I said already, right? Oh, yeah, you did. <laughs> so Papo is open with Queen Jack Everybody under the gun, and it's a three bet from, let's see, with the aces. Uh, I think I changed my mind just here on this pitch because uh -huh. the buffet was just so, like, it just has everything. So I changed from. I was between Japanese and oh Japanese, dear. and you stepped ping pong back and forth. Mm -hmm. uh, and then coming here, I'm like, oh, you know, Turkish Mediterranean probably like would be the one that I'm, I'm going to be happy every single day. Like okay. very high quality. I can mix my diet as I want. Uh, there's nothing missing. Yeah. Anton Wick, fan idea. of the buffet at the Merit. <laughs> I'm also a fan of the buffet here at the Merit. I do, I do. 
And yes, important to highlight that we've got the sickest and classicest of coolers unfolding at the feature table because Rashid El Yakubi has picked up Kings. Papo's looking at this like, how can I out aggress aggression this spot? Like he's he's just desperately searching at all times for a way to find a way to be more aggressive than his opponents. But I think he knows he just needs to get out of the way here. So the all in, the fold from Lakoko, the snap call from Lissy, and El Yakubi's going to need a lot of luck here to survive. Right, the buffet here is like pretty good. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I, I didn't know Turkish covers like so many, like, you know, variety and all that stuff. Yeah. And like so many healthy options. Japanese is my personal favorite. Yeah. So. Yeah, from India, it's a, it's a good pick. Doesn't get Japanese sicker than this, James. Yeah, Just the yeah, setup that no one ever yeah. seems to avoid. I love Indian as well. Pokeballs and like, they have a lot of healthy options as well. They do. Yeah. It's like all the street food as well. Mm. Oh, that is going to take some coming back from. Do you live in India? Yeah. Ace high flop. El Yakubi down to 1%. <laughs> Only running kings will do. Potentially the back door straight as well. Drawing dead on the turn. So we just saw Rashid El Yakubi eliminate Adrian Mateos, and on the very next hand, he himself is eliminated, running kings into aces. And we are now down to 301 players in the main event. Two kings, two aces we have seen. Yep. Yeah. I was a little bit surprised both times. <laughs> we see now with more than a hundred big blinds, second and chips at this table. Halfway through the level, the average stack is around 131k. What's your, what's your kitchen? What's cooking? I think Italian. Italian? Yeah, I'm loving this conversation, by the way, James. That's also gonna what is like cooking gonna in Martika's kitchen? The I oven is hot. <laughs> I think this should be a regular thing on the podcast. Uh, you know, okay, poker aside, what's cooking in your kitchen? Let him cook. Yeah, I have to uh, echo that, though. The food here has been a pretty stellar. Lots of really good options, and I think everyone's been very pleased with uh, what we have here at the Merit. Wait a news flash. He's raised here with Ace Jack. And Lakoko defending his big blind with a dominated hand, Queen Jack. Queen Jack just not doing anything for Lakoko at the moment. No improvement on the flop either. I go to. I would rather pick French for the food and Italy for the coffee because. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what's happened in France with the with the coffee culture, but it's. Different. Italy, yeah. Oh, nothing for either player to be too excited about here. Uh, the disgruntled vet asks, is the 1,320 total entries including rebuys or just unique entries? It does include re-entries because this plays as a single re-entry MTT. 896 unique players. 424 uh, yeah. re-entries. Do you recall how many re-entries we allowed in Barcelona? EPT main events are always the same. EPT main event used to be a freeze-out, which 
I'm not going to lie, is my preference for a championship yes. event. Yep. The compromise was to go to single re-entry, mm -hmm. which I can just about live with, and that's yeah. always been the case. No EPT has ever allowed more than a single re-entry. Gotcha. Side events, different kettle of fish. Three, four, five, six, eight. There's no straight on the board, but Lococo can bluff this all day long, and I think that's what he's going to try and do. Imagine catching Popo bluffing, unreal. Snap fold. And Queen Jack this time comes good for our friends. Lococo. One of those teams that always get beat with like five nothing in the first quarter yeah. qualifier. You are correct, Optimus Clang. The PCA allowed multiple re-entries, but the PCA is not, certainly this year, was not an EPT main event. It is now detached from this tour. Wow, we lost an EPT champion from that seat. But another former champion is taking it. It's Yuri Rocky Gilboa, who won EPT Sochi in 2019. Back in the mix, welcome to the table. And yes, he was wearing that T-shirt when he won his EPT title. Every time he comes to an EPT, he has to take it out of the frame that's in the wall, make sure it absolutely has never been washed, put it back on, return to the tables, place it back in the frame when done. And there's a, he has a fish on the Lucky T-shirt activated. There's a, there's a bear like, going for his fish. He, he wants to fish in the river. And, and, then, and then it says, the text says, that feeling before you do something incredibly stupid. <laughs> Waiter has the James and Joe, JHJS. Raises to four and a half K. Anton Wig has had a lot of fun discussing global cuisine. Folds the eight six on the button. Which EPT did you win? Which EPT did you win? Yeah, Sochi. Two nineteen. Sochi. Never been. How is Sochi? It's a place. It's very nice, nice place. Day. One yeah, nice location and very good, good cuisine. Yeah. Uh, casino. But because of the wall, it's good yeah, to uh, yeah. this top. Jimmy R asks, is the buy-in 5,000 euros? For most EPTs, yes. But interestingly, we are playing in US dollars here at the Merritt Royal Diamond Hotel and Casino and Spa. So it's 5,300 USD rather than 5,300 EUR. Bargain. Absolute bargain. I think the two currencies are still pretty close at the moment, aren't they? <laughs> We're joking. <laughs> When I first moved to the UK, I think it was $2 to the pound. Yes. I think this may be the first EPT played on European soil that's played in US dollars. There was a time when the PCA was part of the European Poker Tour, and that was a USD event, but I don't think we've had a European event that's not played in euros or pounds or any other European currency, as we see. The Coco with ace-queen... Gilboa has opened with kings. Yeah, this could get tricky. Uh, if we know Papo like we do, he's going to find a 3-bet here, and he's going to make it 14K, so that's even more than a 3X versus that initial 2X open. Gilboa here with 44 big blinds after putting in that race has just come to the table. A little welcome to the table. In your face, Papo. Gilboa responds with a four bet. Yeah, absolutely no messing around here. Hopefully. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that Papo is also very good at reading people, and I think Gilboa was telling him directly to his face there, I have an absolute monster. And he shows it. Ah, maybe just 55 bags for the former EPT champ. 
Yeah, just wondering if maybe he could have slowed it down just a tad there. I think everything about his body language was just saying, I got kings and I don't want to see a flop. He was slamming <laughs> that money in. Which is, you know, a good way to take down pots pre-flop. But if you want to win tournaments, sometimes you got to get in there and get a little bit sneaky. Try and entice a little bit more action from those big hands. So back in the mix now, Gilboa, pocket sixes, UTG. Just deciding what he wants to do with the tens here. Wants to three bet from that position. I think you could probably go both ways. I think flatting and three betting here is fine. Generally speaking, don't want to go multi-way with a hand like pocket tens. So hijack seems like a nice spot to have some three betting, of course. Lissy in the small blind with the king nine suited. Seen quite a lot of action from early position. Probably wants to get out of the way here. Boa's trying to flop a set, baby. Let's go. Oh. <laughs> Better than a set. Gilboa flops quads. Oh, and <laughs> it's undercards to Wig's pair. I apologize. I had it wrong. He was trying to flop quads, chat. Oh, wow. What an absolutely monster flop for Gilboa. I just don't ever see it. Stunning stuff here. Checks the action to Wig, who continues, has the pre-flop betting lead after three betting Gilboa pre. Now, to quote the t-shirt, it ain't over till it's over. Wig could catch running tens. <laughs> I'm glad to see him slow it down here, though, James, right? Like, you know, we saw him very aggressive with those Kings pre-flop, but now trying to appear a little bit more weak. And obviously, when you make quads, you're not really afraid of getting taking a beat, but... So Gilboa checks, does Wig bet again? No, checks it back. Barry Greenstein makes an appearance, and this board is now not looking so good for tens. All right, now watch the body language here, guys. Slaps it in. Yeah, this seems like a very confident bet. Didn't even hesitate, didn't even think. Grab a bit of blue, shove that in, get paid. Jobs are good. <laughs> That's definitely the body language I'm getting. How much you want to bet he shows? I would put a sizable amount of money on Anton Wig folding and Yuri snap <laughs> flashing those sixes. He couldn't help but show the kings. Do you think there's any You've chance? You've got to show quads. quads. You have to show quads. <laughs> yeah, the ace obviously going to be an interesting river to play around here because we concerned about the ace as well. There's the fold. Yeah. Show them. <laughs> show it. Is it the slow roll? You will not believe what. <laughs> That's I have. <laughs> I, I, I should show it. Hey, <laughs> you knew it. I would have bet my house on it. I bet my entire. You house. knew it. <laughs> I, wanted, I really wanted to board up. <laughs> I thought. I thought I wanted to board up. Kudos to Weeg there losing the minimum as well. Nice work, yeah. bud. Nice work. I've got two pair. Sixes and sixes. No. <laughs> I mean, we've all played against that guy. <laughs> no. okay. That's full sixes. I never have luck. I don't know, you good maths, Boise. I broke. Fewer than 300 players now, 293 remain. A 
a save for Reuter in the small blind. and take it and 35 minutes left on this blind level just over half an hour until the second break of the day Shortly, Nick. In India, it was six times. If you want to go, the best beach is Palolam. El Patanam. Palolam and Patanam, two nicest beaches. Do you agree? There are a lot of beaches in Goa. That's a politically correct answer. Okay. No, but Palolam and the Patanam. It's just beautiful. Palolam is nice. The other, very crowded, very. Yeah, you don't want that. Stefan Lehner has opened here with ace jack. It's round to Reuter on the button. Holds the 10 3. Goel and the small blind. Business or vacation? Vacation. When your business is vacation? No, my business, I'm a lawyer, a lawyer in my practice. So I cannot go to India for malpractice. What kind of law do you practice? Malpractice. Okay. Against hospitals. Interesting. Um, negligence. And where? In Israel. In Israel, okay. So another raise and take it situation. And the new player coming to the feature table is a guy who we saw in Monte Carlo earlier this year. It's Maduka Marigol, who was ninth place finisher in the Ipsi Monte Carlo main event. And of course, earlier on today, we had another player from that final table, Joachim Haraldstadt, on the main stage. Hashtag fun facts, he busted shortly after leaving the feature table. But Merigal's still in, and he's now here. Yeah, after all these years, got such a roster of faces returning to the Felts and duking it out here on the EPT stage. Well, with Queen Four of Hearts. Seven, four. It's legal? Limps. <laughs> and Yuri just asking, is he allowed to limp the button? I didn't think that was a thing anymore. So a call from the small blind wants to complete. He's got a little grin on his face. And Pocket Kings, big blind's going to try an ISO here. Here we go. Let's see. It was, he was not, it was like not speeding. He was going a little too slow. Since you asked if it was legal and you're a lawyer. Stockholm, Stockholm, uh, country boy. Um, I grew up on the countryside and then I moved into Stockholm and I was like 20 and I was like, ooh, city mm -hmm. life, nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love Stockholm. Uh, it's a beautiful city. Yeah. Really nice. It's so cold in winter. It's it's not about the cold. The cold I don't mind. It's, it's the darkness. Oh, okay. The darkness is what really gets you. Like, yeah, I guess so. You can have like two months and it's just like cloudy, like very cloudy, and the and the sun behind the clouds that is at 2 p.m. It's like. Five, 
Reuters raise with ace nine. Re-raised by Marigal, who's got ace ten. Yeah, it's quite a big portion of the stack, though, here, James. Only 15 bigs behind. And I think it's just going to work. Nice work there from our ambassador. Just reminding his friends to be careful how they're going <laughs> to expose their cards so no information is shared. What is Stapleton? Stapleton. Yeah. Stapleton. Who made the, the commentary? Yeah, who made the commentary? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? <coughs> right, that's it. For the first time ever, banned from an EPT. I will speak to tournament director Toby Stone and I will have Anton Wig removed from the field. Yep, thank you very much. Outrageous behavior. Four underway and under the gun, Lisi. Under the gun raise to four thousand. Goel in the hijack passes. Gilboa is in. Jack 10. Yeah, I think Jack 10 suited here makes a lot of sense. I don't know if Jack 10 off is a little bit too wide from this position, James. Going to be dominated quite often. Also, lots of aggressive players behind who can put on squeezes that will force you out of the pot very frequently. And the flop is 659 Rainbow. Yep, so ace high, still the best hand. It's difficult to play this one, though, guys. Ace-jack into that kind of a texture when your opponent's calling. Obviously, they'll have fives, they'll have sixes, they'll have sevens, they'll have eights, they'll have nines. Wouldn't be surprised to see a check here from Lee C. Yeah, I like it, too. It's just so difficult to find a way around a bet call on the flop unless you immediately improve. And, of course, you can always check and improve. Bad card for Gilboa. And now you really want to pile it in. You miss your flop bet. Let's make it like 10K to go. Just shy of full pot feels good to me. Going to really punish some of those jack tens, king jack combos, maybe some queen tens. Those all make sense as a calling position too, so why not? Oh, yeah, I like this. So 13,000 in the middle. And... Even before the bet size has been verified, 9.5K, Gilboa makes the call. Yep, I'm a fan. I like it. Let's go to a river. <coughs> Ace kicker is playing. Now you can really take him to the cleaners, James. I think at this point, you probably are going to get paid more by a made hand than there will be missed draws that will bluff because, of course, no flush draw on the turn. Queen 10, probably not that brave about bluffing once you put in a chunky bet on the turn. So I think you just try and get max value from maybe pocket apes, maybe pocket sevens, maybe a nine, maybe a jack. And I think you just go really big here. I think close to 30K would be really, really cute for me. Yeah, it goes for 25K. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And Gilboa has not snap call. He does tend to make decisions very quickly. Zedar predicts Gilboa's going to move all in and Lisi will fold. <laughs> does this look like a man who was beaten by Jax? Wow, very nice fold there. Not an easy one to make. Gilboa puts it all together. Uh, 
manages to get away from it on the river. Reference star, former feature table, and the fate of Joachim Haraldstad, another player from that feature table earlier today was Jen Shahadi. Sad news, Jen was eliminated a short while ago. Shelved ace jack into aces and did not improve. Yeah, GG's to Jen. Aces for Anton Wick. Had no shortage of big hands on this table so far during the session. And it doesn't look like he's going to get any action from Lococo. Obviously, Anton was talking on a earlier, Nick, about the uh, player buffet here at the Merit, which you yourself said offers an amazing array of foods. And I think the key reason why everyone loves this buffet and the reason why so many players have been enjoying themselves here at EPT Cyprus is because that buffet is free. It's all inclusive. Okay, it's all inclusive as far as the hotel is concerned. <laughs> You're right. But yes, also free buffet for players as well. <coughs> and just to be clear, that's a free buffet for players with no money coming out of the prize pool. As we see, Lisi decide what to do with Jack-3 here. Oh dear. Timing's a little bit off. I mean, I like this move. It's got moxie. It's got spirit. Alas, when your opponent has aces, it makes you look like a bit of a fool. Kids got moxie. So let's take a look now at Wiggs situation 174k behind very very deep indeed 87 big blinds after putting in that initial raise i think at this stack depth you just want a four bet so we're talking like 50k here something in that region <coughs> yep 48k and fold fold Next hand, move on. By the way, for those of you suffering FOMO, I cannot offer you free food at home, but I can offer you the mini EPT Cypress online series, which is running every day that we're streaming from this leg of the European Poker Tour. Three tournaments every day across the five days of this series, $60,000 in added value. Power path tickets added to the prize pool of every single MTT. And on Sunday, we're going to have the mini main events. There are two of them, a $5.50 mini main and a $55 mini main. Both those tournaments on Sunday will award a gold 45. power pass to the winner, which, as you know, Nick, could be redeemed for an EPT Prague package. It's worth $10,000. Yeah, very, very high value and lots of added value in those tournaments. So definitely give them a look, gang. Love to jump into some of those bad boys. And I did say on the most recent Poker in the Years podcast, when it comes to the mini EPT Prague online series, might, as Christmas will just be around the corner, might consider adding a couple of free rolls to the schedule. Because I know you guys love your free rolls. I think 60K in added value should be enough. But if you want free to play games as well, maybe we can make that happen next time we run an online series during an EPT live stream. Yeah, if you behave yourselves in the chat. Yes. Very good. Very, very good rule. <laughs> you play more hands with a shorter stick. I know. <laughs> the last like, three hands, I started the day with the 195. 
20 minutes left on the level, 20 minutes until the second break of the day. 285 players remaining, average stack to shy of 140k. Hand number 57, UTG plus one, Gilboa, ace, ace eight of clubs, excuse me. Wide big blind defend here from Marigal. Does flop best though. Oh, that was Masato Yokosawa. Masato. Wow, really quick action. Gonna try and get some value now on the Riv. Three pack. Gilboa made the call on the river there, paid off that value bet of 6,000 as we move on to the next hand. Tom Maddox watching on YouTube says, please, no chat pro Saturday. I'm begging. I can't handle it again. You can't handle it again. <laughs> okay, I'm a great believer in democracy. I want to do one of those things that Elon always does and just do a random poll and agree to abide by the results. <laughs> Guarantee, not guaranteed. <laughs> What would you prefer? A couple of free rolls during the mini EPT Prague series yeah. or Chat Pro Saturday? Oh, no. See, that's no, that's not right. You can't do that. Yes, I can. I just <laughs> did it. <laughs> I want this to be a democratic vote. Would you like A or would you like A? Those are your options. <laughs> and this will work on the honor system. Americans, you don't get a say. <laughs> don't answer that, chat. Anybody who actually answers that question, you're, you're part of the problem. Don't do it. Papo back in action here, opening with Queen Jack. Flatted by Lissy with ace jack, flatted by Goel with eight four of clubs, and we're going three way to the flop. And how many times has uh, Papo been dealt queen jack off in the last 20 minutes? Oh, there you go. That's an improver, though. Domination rotation on the flop. He wants to float with ace high, backdoor diamonds, backdoor straight draws. Yeah. If you break the law, sometimes, sometimes if they have a good enough attorney, you Papa's got to be concerned about trip nines here once in a while. I think we see a check here a bunch. We do.
Bit of a weird spot for Lissy here. He's like, do I turn my hand into a bluff when I've got such a significant showdown? Still has one card to come. Tough job. Yep, decides to check. I think that makes a lot of sense. His hand's somewhat underrepped here. Uh, but it's one of those runouts, James. Again, this could be a situation where if Lococo makes a value bet, Ace High pays it off. Instead, Lococo checks. Wow. Unless he checks behind. I mean, I was really surprised to see that, James. You know, backdoor clubs came in. He makes the boat, very well disguised hand, but yeah. also has that notorious um, sort of table image that yeah. should get him paid in those situations. Right? Yeah. He's got so many people who just believe he's a highly aggressive individual. Why not use that to your advantage, put in a chunky bet there and try and get paid? Oh, there's Masato Yokosawa again. Oh, I think he's been eliminated. I think he's been knocked out. Oh, he's sad. He's crying. So sad. <laughs> 280 players left. 199 in the money. Busted. Oh. Bye-bye, <laughs> Masato Yokosawa. Someone needs to tell Joe. He'll be so sad when he hears this news. He's such a big... Big Yokosawa fan. Yeah. Uh, have you read the books? Uh, no. I can recommend them. They're so much deeper. I've read them five times. Oh, okay. So... And I don't read that much. <laughs> that means a lot. This is pretty representative of most of the votes that were cast. Bino says, so you're telling me I can get free money or I can tell Lena 900 how to play poker. Guess I'm giving Lena some lessons. <laughs> there you go. That's what we want to see, chat. Call his bluff. The vast majority voted for Chat Pro Saturday. However, I did say guarantee, not guaranteed. I'm going to ignore the voice of the people, <laughs> which means you're going to get free rolls during Prague, but you're not going to get Chat Pro Saturday unless, <laughs> unless you're on your best behavior for the next three days. Yeah, keep it clean in the chat. And we'll see what we can do. Are you a Dune fan, James? I like the first movie. I was thinking that I'll need to rewatch it before the second one comes out. Right. I don't really remember that much of the story. Yeah, I, but I remember liking it. I had to watch it twice anyway, and I think I got a lot more of it the second time anyway. But I think you're right. Are you a Dune fan, just like the actual sci-fi? I've never read the book, okay. and I, when I was a kid, I saw the David Lynch movie and couldn't really get into it. Didn't do anything for you, uh, yeah. I, I, there are definitely some really, really funny special effects that they did back then. You watch Oppenheimer? Oh, sorry. Well, someone just killed the conversation at the table. Did you see Oppenheimer? Silence from everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Who didn't see Oppenheimer? Come on, guys. 
No one at this poker table, apparently. Apparently not. Queen Jack 10, it is. A straighty board, it is. Top pair and the straight draw for Lococo, but of course it is the made straight as things stand for Marigal. Eight, nine, ten, Jack, Queen. That's five in a row. And of course the flush draw for Anton Wig. I mean, look at the percentages. They're running pretty close yeah. right now. It's pretty nasty when you flop a straight and you're only 45%, but if you want action, this is one way to do it. Mr. Wieg with the flush draw. Just lets it go right here, right now. And Popo top pair blocking clubs, backdoor flush draw and the straight draw going absolutely nowhere. Eight and a half K each. And the Straight is holding. Marigal now better than a four to one favorite. Yeah, don't slow down now. Twenty-one thousand apiece, and Papo is going to need to improve on the river. Marigal with significantly less than pot behind. Board breaks out for Papo. He's checked already. Marigal insta all in. Wow! Just snaps it in. Yeah. <laughs> Just snaps it in there. So Marigal, bet flop, bet turn, shoves river. Yeah. You have top pair, but how comfortable are you feeling about that queen right now? Yeah, not good at all. I mean, the thing is, James, it's only about half pot on the river. And Lococo makes the call, pays it off. And over the course of this session, Nick, Alejandro Lococo has gone from being the table chip leader to the shortest stack at this table. Now, he's not a short stack, per se. He's got 40 big blinds. But when we started this session, he needed a quarter of a million chips. Yeah, definitely taking some significant beats here. A couple mistimed moments, a couple unfortunate calls. Getting a great price on the river to call there. Unfortunately, going to cost him, but... What a great spot to, what a great time to find the flop straight there for our Canadian friend, Maduka Marigal. Gigi says Lacoco, more like Lacoco calling station. I like it. Yeah, it's a stretch, but I'm into it. English isn't his native language. I like it. <laughs> That snap shove was a bit of a mistell, like he was trying to like look as desperate as possible. Jacks for Stefan Lena. Raises to four thousand. Round to the blinds, Anton Wick in the small blind. Queen, nine of clubs. Decides to three bet from the small. Gets a fold from Papo. I would say a frustrated fold. Yeah, definitely looking a little bit frustrated there. 
perhaps not happy with that call. And of course, this entire session, as you just said, some unfortunate pots taking Alejandro Lococo down to just 76,500 chips, about 38 bigs at this stage. Yeah, the blinds are going to go up in five minutes' time. That's when we hit the break. So Laner here, guys, 57 big blinds behind Anton Wieg, 92. I think at this stack tip, you just call a bunch. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think you want to overplay your jacks under, in, under these circumstances. Stack still very deep. Just see a flop and play that nice middling pair, higher pair in position. And that looks like top set. Oh, wow. But it's also the flush for Wig with a redraw to a street flash. This is some serious sickness. It doesn't get much more setup-y than this. Cold deck indeed. Thank you very much, Tom, in the chat. It says, you never see this stuff happen live. Yep, only on Joker Stars. Am I right, guys? Wig is checked. And Lena probably feels incredibly strong right now with that set. <sighs> but must be conscious of straight draw combos, single club hands drawing to the flush. Yeah, I think you can't slow play this, right? No, I think you're feeling good about betting top set here because you know there's always a way out. There's always a way to actually draw into a boat or quads. So you just bet here, and I think you definitely don't mind getting action, even if they do indeed have one of these very specific combos. Still plenty of ways to win, but also other hands you get value from at the same time as well that don't. So about a quarter pot, really like this sizing, especially in a three bet pot. And I wonder if Weeg's intention here is to check raise. Check and raise, as it was known back in the day. Check and then subsequently raise. Just a call from Anton. Three of diamonds doesn't change anything. Wig now a three to one favorite. So Laner there, 173K, but the effective stack guys, remember is, is Laner, sorry, excuse me, with 90.5, excuse me. Wig has 173K, so the effective stack here, 90.5, that's about 1.5 SPR. So just wants to size in a way where he can potentially go for all the chips on the river for less than pot. So even something like 20K here would be fine. Might want to go bigger anyway to try and protect his hand a little bit more. Maybe something closer to 35 or 40. Sized up on the turn into a pot of 62,000, makes it 35,000, more than Anton calls, going to the river, 132k in the middle. I was going to say Wig's got about pot behind. Lena's the effective stack there with 55k behind. Yep. Deuce of diamonds doesn't change anything. And now being out of position, having called two streets as a check call, Oof. what do you do now? I mean, checks it back over to Laner. Is he, is he letting him off cheap here, James? That's the thing, right? Is he uh, is he giving him too many checkbacks? We've seen Laner check back that King Jack earlier as well on the King 10-10 run out. Does he want to play it safe here again? Like the budgie, it's cheap. All 
ball in. And a call. And it all happened on the flop. Absolutely savage stuff. Stefan Lehner eliminated on the last hand of the level. Anton Wig gets a near double up. 325k is going to come back from break with. Because that was the last hand of this session. And we are going to stick with this feature table for the next level of the day. We'll check in on Tonka a bit later on as we get close to the bubble. But these players will be returning to the main stage in just under 20 minutes' time. Wig playing 130 bigs at the new blind level. The other former EPT champ, Uri Gilboa, playing 40 bigs. And Papa MC has some work to do, Nick. Just 30 bigs now. Yeah, absolutely. Hopefully, our fellow Team Pro and Ambassador will be able to spin it up and get back in the mix as he was at the start of the day. Blind will be 1,000, 2,500 with a 2.5K big blind ante. When we return from break, second break of the day. A bit later on, we'll check in on Tonka and we'll bring you our bubble coverage on day two of the EPT Cyprus main event. 17 minutes on this break and more live action. Cards up action from here in Cyprus. This is the Pokestars EPT. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much. How are you guys doing? We're doing Hi. well. And uh, congratulations once again to Steel Joe's Expression for your second place finish in EPT Paris. I know at the time there was probably an element of disappointment, but considering where you were a year ago, to come to this point, you must realize this is a huge achievement. Yeah, yeah, I really do. And I'm, I'm just super grateful, to be honest. Last I saw you, you were wrestling Nick Walsh and like three other people in the Hyatt Hotel lobby. Who won that wrestling match? <laughs> I think I finally came out on top. I mean, that... you were definitely, he was definitely wrestling two people at the same time, and it was not easy. I mean, it was not close, I mean. He, oh. They were getting their asses kicked. I, 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 I never would have doubted it in a million years. I'm guessing then that after that final table, some beverages were potentially consumed. Maybe there was a bit of celebration. A little bit, yeah. A little bit of celebration going on. <laughs> <laughs> it felt weird. I was honored to be a part of that. Thank you for uh, for accepting us and letting us hang out with you. I uh, know that was m my pleasure. Uh, likewise, it was gr a great a great evening. It seemed like you had a, like, look, I've we've been around a lot of winners and a lot of runners up, and it seemed like this was extra special for some reason. You were really sort of it was not just you celebrating, but your whole team everyone seemed really overjoyed with it i mean you you seem like a successful guy before this happened yeah tell us about that uh the before story <laughs> the origin story who is peter jorgner and where did he come from uh so i come from uh, stockholm sweden uh i started my first business in 1994 and wow. basically been self-employed ever since and mostly in uh, in some kind of tech industry, internet, IT, and then financial technology. Uh, married in the late 90s, got three uh, beautiful daughters. Um, and, you know, the last uh, venture I did, I, we sold that company in 2018. I worked for the buyer for uh, two odd years and quit in 2020. Uh, left Stockholm for Marbella, Spain uh, to uh, retire, but, it wasn't that much fun <laughs> for the for the first couple of months, but then uh, started investing my money in different ventures. Uh, and as you know, I picked up uh, poker uh, like a like a year ago, ten months ago, uh, and that's been a a, re a real blast, um, as you yeah might might imagine. I want to go back to 1994. Like you were what, like in your early 20s or at, at the oldest. I understand that you created some software, I think, is, is what your most recent thing was. But in 94, what was going on? Yeah, so uh, internet came. Uh, I, I meant to start a, a web agency that was going to 
create uh, internet presence for companies, but that was way early. Uh, but yeah. I worked uh, as a consultant and eventually that morphed into an internet agency in 96. And that kept on going uh, through the internet boom and internet crash. And I, I sold that company in 2007. So you were just, or you were just early on, just knew that the internet was going to be a thing, and you decided that you were going to figure out how co how to get companies online. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's incredible. What I'm intrigued to know, Peter, is when you say into your retirement that you discovered poker. I mean, yeah. are we literally talking about playing the game for the first time, or had it always been there in the background? No, it's been there in the background. Uh, I think I've been, uh, you know, playing online. But it's been like, you know, coming home from work, uh, 11 p.m. with a bottle of wine, uh, uh, winning for one hour, then losing for three. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then segueing into uh, some live poker, playing home games, and the local casino in Stockholm. Uh, yeah, but not a lot. Uh, it's been more of a hobby and a, and a losing, uh, losing one. Right. It sounds like all Peter did in Paris is win his money back yeah <laughs> <laughs> so when you kind of when the passion was truly ignited yeah. at what point did you say i'm actually going to take this seriously at what point did you put together team jorgner yeah it's actually team hightower that's my nickname okay uh, oh wow <laughs> that's a cool nickname <laughs> it was like like two years ago um I went heads up against uh, Peter Christhammer, who was my friend at the time, still is, of course. The, um, the good-looking Peter. Yeah, the good-looking, yeah, handsome Peter. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> handsome Peter, right. Yeah, and uh, I donked into him on the flop, and he uh, he busted me, uh, pulled me aside, and said uh, that I was disrespecting the beautiful game of poker by <laughs> not playing to my full potential, and so that kind of sparked the the initial discussion. So it. Uh, it's now known as my most profitable hand that I ever played. Uh, and 10 months ago, we kind of stipulated that in, into a contract uh, where they would coach me, I would stake them. And uh, yeah, we started with EPT Barcelona. Um, and yeah, with the goal with me, uh, my goal was, uh, you know, uh, reaching a final table in one of the bigger tournaments, EPT or WSOP. But not in a million years, we had actually thought that that was going to happen uh, this quick. So you say it started in Barcelona. Which events have you played since then? Uh, so I played Master Classics right. uh, and EPT Prague. Okay, so this is what, your fourth event, Paris? Yeah. Wow. So that's since incredibly Prague. quickly. Yeah. yeah. And this happened to be, as we said on the stream and just said again a few minutes ago, one of the biggest fields we've ever seen, 1,600 yeah. total entries. Um, what was it like navigating your way through the early days? Well, for the first time, I, I, I was actually quite comfortable because I, I was uh, over average, uh, like pretty much every day. Uh, I came out over average and played like 100 big blinds. And for the first time, uh, I... I I knew, I knew enough of the game that I started learning uh, by looking at these uh, really great players and how they acted at the table and the moves that they made. And I kind of picked up on what they were doing and a few levels later I could implement it. Uh, so that was the, I think the big difference uh, in Paris versus uh, other times when I was just outplayed and had no clue as to why I got outplayed. Uh, but now I, I realize it's, uh, you know, uh, with the with the ranges, positions, and uh, stack sizes, you know all the uh, all the bits and pieces that uh, go into it. What sort of you know? I know that you have your poker coaches. What sort of training did they put you through? What 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 was their approach? Yeah, so uh, basically uh, they put together a, a, a deck, uh, a PowerPoint deck, and basically the first slide was uh, demystifying poker. Uh, so they kind of broke it down into bits and pieces and then built it up again uh, ahead of Barcelona. I think we did five sessions before that uh, and then one session during Barcelona and we've done six sessions since. One today actually. And yeah, 
uh, and then they've been uh, you know during uh, the festivals uh, just coaching me in, during the breaks um, and yeah giving me a, a lot lot of uh, I kind of use the analogy with you know the boxing coaches you know you, you go into the corner you sit on your stool one is waving the towel and the other yeah. one whispering in your ear and you got this guy on seat one you got don't do this versus that guy do more of this less of that uh, especially now in Paris, day four, five, and six, they were instrumental in doing that, and they kind of put their own poker aside just to be with me and alongside me. Well, I was going to say because during the late stages, you spent a decent amount of time on the feature table, so I'm guessing your coaches had a lot of information to work from, and I'm guessing that the stream is useful to go back and look at key hands and key spots. Absolutely, yeah, very much so, and also it was an opportunity, uh, you know. To kind of set the other players up a little bit as well yeah by, by playing un unconventional in certain spots and knowing that they will watch this in half an hour and then the next time i get the same opportunity i'm just going to reverse uh, the play i did before because i knew i knew i couldn't beat them at their game that's actually one of my favorite things about watching a relative amateur a relative new person come to the game is is watching the you know the gto wizards not know how to fight against them and sort of get a little confused by them and that was certainly fun watching you i guess what my uh what sort of prep went in before the final table how late were you up the night before was it studying individual players or studying spots what did you guys get into before that not so much the uh, the previous night but in the morning because i just went to the hotel took a sleeping pill try to get get as much sleep as possible and then yeah. we met uh, a couple of hours before uh, having breakfast and then they had crunched the numbers during the night uh, and washed the hands and brought the data to me so i just got a summary on on each player each position stack size moves that they had made before uh, and you know the profile of each play basically and um, of course i had my my idea as well and we just uh, you know got to a, a conclusion on on where we were at now we were just saying that the final table actually played a lot quicker than we thought it was going to yeah. and there were a lot of chips still in play but of course when there is one player at the table who has all the chips it does change the dynamic you must have known that when you got three-handed when you got heads up that it was a big, big mountain to climb and potentially overcome. Razvan was just like, you know, clearly had a massive advantage. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was it was a, a bit tough. And also for me, not being used to, you know, playing six days straight, uh, 12 hours a day, uh, it was a bit, I wouldn't say fatigue, but yeah, that was the day before when I fell asleep at the table. But uh no, <laughs> but, but it was definitely uh, it's, an uphill battle. It's one of the highlights of the yeah. Paris live stream. You completely checked out for like a minute, and yeah. the dealer having to take a time bank card from you because <laughs> you didn't know the action was on you. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, that was interesting. <laughs> so you seem to me like a guy that's used to winning, right? Like you've been a winner for a long time, whatever it is, from that first business back in 1994 up and through, you know, early retirement. Yeah. How difficult was not winning for you? Are you able to look at this as a win also? Uh, this is definitely a win, a huge win. I also th think that the correct player won. He had been, uh, you know, consistent throughout uh, the, the final days. Um, I think I had the right approach. I spoke to him uh, during the breaks. A uh, really nice guy, newly married, uh, you know, and this is his thing. So at the time, I didn't feel uh, uh, sorry at all. I, I saw it as a win uh, for me, uh, definitely. Actually, a few days later, I started thinking, oh, oh I got really close. <laughs> but yeah. uh, but I, I wanted to win. Oh, don't get me wrong. Uh, I really wanted that trophy. Yeah, but Sousa made me a small one, if you saw the green. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I didn't realize how badly you just wanted some kind of memento of the experience, just to take yeah. something away that exactly. you could have to mark the occasion. But, yeah. you know, there are multiple events at every EPT stop, and there are other live poker events. I don't think it's going to be long before you have something genuine to put on your yeah. shelf.
Oh, I appreciate that. That would be uh, really nice. And on that note, what, what are the plans for this year, Peter? Where, where are you going next? Uh, so I'm going to uh, ESPT in Madrid. Cool. Uh, I think that's a week after next. And uh, after that, I'm planning for Cannes and Monte Carlo. Nice. And then WSOP, EPT Barcelona, EPT Cyprus and EPT Prague. Wow. Already mapped out the year. Well, in that case, we will see you in Monte Carlo and uh, look forward to catching up and seeing you wear one of how many rolex yacht master twos do you actually own <laughs> two just the two okay I uh, put this on today just just for you oh you very know. nice very yeah. nice gets the james haskins seal of approval peter it was great to meet you in paris congratulations once again on an amazing result and we look forward to seeing you again in a few weeks time thank you very much Folds flat high. Sailboats for Nicholas Ustet opening under the gun plus one to 125,000. Fabrice Bigot, ace three in the hijack. This feels like a big no. Bigot be folding this hand. Yeah, there's a lot of action behind. Ustet. Raising pretty early, a nay. Jack three for Jorgna. And what could he possibly be thinking about? I don't know, but my guess is his life's pretty good. He could be just reflecting. I mean, if he re-raises here with Jack three, Respect. I think he's just lost in the sauce right now, honestly. <laughs> this doesn't look like he's actually thinking about <laughs> anything. He does know it's his turn, right? I uh, think he's back now. <laughs> I told you. My live reads are dead on. Uh, oh, sorry. That's going to cost him a time bank card. Okay. <laughs> sorry, I'm just thinking about how great my life is. Get <laughs> the live reads. Nice work, Joe. At the secondary feature table, Eugene Kachalov has moved all in with Kings. Dania Zulka's re-raised in an attempt to isolate, but it's not going to work. Max Greenwood's got aces. Holy. Colin. The last time I saw a deck this cold, Kate Winslet and Leonardo DiCaprio were sliding off it into the ocean. Action back on Ulk. Hey, call. He calls. He puts two players at risk, but he is way behind. So Greenwood's tournament life is on the line, but he's got 85% equity. Kachalov is at risk. He's trying to one card. Everyone pretty much flopped dead. No one has a spade. That'll do it. A huge pot for Greenwood, and Kachalov is busto. Pretty nice spot to pick up aces. Meanwhile, Max Greenwood is about to double up through Sergei Chanchev. Kings against Jacks with just one card to come. And it's a Jack! Oh, boy. A brutal beat for Greenwood. Are kidding me? Oh. Maximum Greenwood, maximum tiltage. Don't worry, Sergey. He's not yelling about you. He'll see you at home. Once again, blockers are so, so very real. Welcome back to the Poker Stars European Poker Tour. EPT Cyprus from the Merit Royal Diamond Hotel Casino and Spa. Joe Stapleton, Griffin, Benger. There's a spa here? There is a spa here. It's right on this floor. 
chip leaders overall, including Eduard Norell, here of Romania, Milos Sparn Skrblich, Kenny Hallert, Parker Talbot, Renat Bodinov. The top five stacks in the room. Over 1,300 players began this event. We are down to 267. These are the chip stacks at our feature table, which include Anton Vig and Yuri Gilboa, two EPT champions, as well as Alejandro Lococo, otherwise known as Papo MC. I like our chip leader's name. It's like the European version of Roger Clemens. Yeah, right. Reuter Clemens. Sure, I'll take it. Absolutely. <laughs> Hopefully a nicer guy than Roger Clemens. Huh? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I hope he's not no performance enhancing drugs. No, oh boy. <laughs> uh, prize pool. $6.4 million total in the pool of prizes. Over a million dollars. That's right. We're playing for dollars here on the European Poker Tour. This one time only. 1.042 million 650,000 for the runner up. Make the official final table and you're guaranteed six figures. You know, maybe if it was in euros, it would just be under a million for first, and that would just be probably annoying. Yeah, it seems like it. So, we are coming to you live from Cyprus. Action is on a one hour delay today. Papo MC hooded and needs to zip up more apparently. Looks like we're waiting to get things underway. This is a $5,000 buy-in tournament. There it is, Anton Vig, EPT champion. Big level for Big Anton. Wigga Chad. Wigga Chad, nice. I like it. Wig and oh no, hold on, I didn't change the right word. W D E. Instead of B instead of B D E. Oh uh, yeah. Wig D E. Wig <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah yeah. Looks like we are just about ready. This is Simone Andrean in the big blind. New player <laughs> to this table. Buenos dias, Andrean. Buenos dias, Andrean. I'll take it. Did we hear that, everyone out there? Small blind 1,000, big blind 2,500, 2,500, big blind ante. 267 players remaining, which means we have lost over 1,000 players thus far. And it looks like 199 players will get paid, so we're not going to hit the bubble this level, that's for sure. Eleven Poker says, Simone, Joe, come on, where is that Italian sass? Here's some for you. You're a band. <laughs> huh? How is that? Huh? It's a you, Banio. <laughs> <laughs> Anton Vig starting with Pocket Queens. Good starting hand. One of the best. Top three. Yeah. IMO. I like to both start and finish with pocket queens. What do you mean start and finish? I just, you know, I'd like to play a full hand with that hand, you know? Oh, I see. You don't want to raise and take it. No. I mean, technically, you're still ending it there, but... I, I know. know what you mean, though. Yeah. I'm with you on this one. I think Yuri Gilboa may have one 
his EPT the last time I was the furthest east I had ever been on the European Poker Tour. Mm. EPT Saatchi. I didn't realize just how far east I was right meow until I looked it up on a map yesterday. Mm. Yuri Gilboa, also known as the Constrictor amongst his friends. Right. He's got the Rocky Balboa shirt. Anton with another queen, this time a queen and a jack. He's going to make it 55 hundo. And Papo MC. The sun run continues. Ace King suited. Bit of a rough level for Lococo. This is a well, good start getting back. Papo Lococo. Re raising three bets, seventeen thousand. Anton Folds. Delmar nine eight eight five says, totally forgot the even was live. Cool. Thank you for your comment. <coughs> this person who looks like DJ Paul AD looks familiar too. Ah, DJ Paul AD, that's who he looks like. Yeah. That's why he's familiar. No, I think we've done some commentary on this. No, we have, yeah. On this human before. Yeah. This is Maduka Marigal. Here to beat that beat. <laughs> if I sound a little distracted, it's because uh, my suitcase is in the room. Oh, that's exciting. I don't think we made a thing of this on the air, but I'm willing no. to confess it now. My, my, my bag didn't make it here to the Merritt Royal Diamond Hotel, Casino, and Spa. And I've been wearing the same clothes since Sunday morning, yeah, L.A. And, time. Yeah, and too proud to, uh, to borrow any clothes from me. Correct. Way too underwear. proud to wear other people's clothes. Maybe if there was someone here that had better fashion sense than me, where it felt like I was upgrading, maybe I would have traded up. Yeah. Like, who's really well-dressed? No one, right? No Just one, no uh, one in the poker I'm world. I'm looking at really a bunch well of bums. I mean, look at, look at Patrick over there. Everyone's just in freebie <laughs> t-shirts. Just yeah, 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 yeah. It's like not one <laughs> t-shirt here that would yeah, be bought in a store. Yeah, just like PCA 2017 shirt yeah. over there. No thanks. <laughs> I especially wasn't about to borrow underwear from people. I am commando today. I figured day five in the same underwear was time to. Yeah. Just go straight up the trail. Well, yeah, I mean, you can you can turn them around twice. You did a turnaround at some point, right? You I didn't do the out? turnaround. Sometimes really? I'll do the wash them out in the sink and dry them out. But I just, uh, not today. I was wondering what that smell was. <laughs> Goel with the 10-9 suited is going to let it go because of that 36 big blind stack, surely. And here's the constrictor. Gilboa raising it up with Jack Ten of Clubs. Maybe Faraz Jaka I would borrow clothes from. Yeah. He's a bit of a snazzy dresser. Mm hmm I'm willing to put this out there to YouTube and Twitch chat. Who do y'all think is a player worthy of borrowing clothes from? Looks like uh, Maduka Marigal, maybe. I had a really interesting thing actually that happened to me um, on Sunday night, leaving a party. Okay. That seems relevant to this conversation. All right, pair of I, fours uh, for Marigal, go ahead. On my way out, I uh, couldn't find my shoes and had to borrow someone's shoes, to, like like the, the host, the, the party hosts, you know, like a pair of flip flops. Okay, so uh, can I have a theorize about this already? Sure. Someone must have taken your shoes. So that's what I thought. And the funny part was, was that 
because it was a wedding. It was I wasn't really that sure which one uh, my shoes were, so I had to go up to my girlfriend and be like, "Hey, are these my shoes?" Sorry, was can I ask another follow-up question? Sure. <laughs> Did everyone take their shoes off at the wedding, or just you? No, was this, it a shoeless wedding? This was like wedding? a house. This was an after-house party. And they made you take your shoes off? Not made, but it was just like, yeah, it was like you know. Oof, I don't know. All right, are you like on. a shoes on party guy? <laughs> yes. Like. We, we, me and my girlfriend, we are homeowners, and we decided early on that we're not going to be one of those houses where we make people take their yeah, shoes off. Yeah. yeah. Because I have a better, much, much better clubs. <laughs> okay. Anyways, I got a text yesterday from the, the, the host saying we found your shoes. You found your shoes in my wife's <laughs> yeah. bed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> What, so what was the story? Why were you? I haven't. I haven't gotten the follow up on the story, but. Um, okay, I feel like that maybe the ending should have been in place before we went down this path. What that I? That I guess I, we'll have to follow up tomorrow. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Know what, where they went? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Marigal took down that last pot. Pair of fours. Good enough. Anton, under the gun, plus one with the king four suited. Oh, yeah. 330,000. A wiggity, it. wiggity, wiggity whack. Oh, gets, gets a better hand to fold. Gets a worse hand to fold. Gets Euro Tim Riley out of the way. Marigal in the small blind. 10 9. Ooh. Jack 10 suited for Goel. Apurva Goel. Another Goel, player. Goel, Goel. Look at this. Look at, what do we have here? Goel, son of Krypton. <laughs> And that looks like a re-raise. Uh, a big re-raise too, given Goel's stack. Yeah, this is this is gonna work, but it's good timing. I'm not crazy <laughs> about doing it with this combo. It's just a hand that flops so well. But uh, Goel deciding, you know what? I'm just gonna do that, and then he did, and it worked. Goel, Goel, Gadget, 3-bet? No. <clears throat> no. I will say, just just uh, circling back to your clothes dilemma, Yeah. that I, uh, it, it bears noting that the shirt that you have been stuck with in the last few days, yeah. it, just, it just seems like a kind of like a, out of like a, an episode of Friends or something. Like Joey would only, his only shirt would be this one where it's like. It's mildly, it's it, it's mildly inappropriate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was yeah, not it's, meant to be worn around. Yeah, like a. Uh, setting. You know, it's a b beautiful young woman and, her, you know, yeah. Her chest is covered up <laughs> yeah. by ping pong paddles. You can yeah. say it. It's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, wasn't my intent to wear it in the workplace. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's supposed to be your travel shirt. Now, I have to say too, though, I'm surprised that you check your bags. But I guess you're just used to it. I, I don't check what do you do? Griffin. What? Have we talked about this before? I'm here for like 11 nights. I guess and 11. I have to wear a suit. That's true. <laughs> like, what am I supposed to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Also, people who... Uh, we got an open here from Ace 10 suit. A call. Minim minimalists that cram all their stuff. Yeah, in the people on. who like make it... Oh, boy, we got a real hand shaping up here. Okay, I guess we can do the poker thing. So we got ace queen dominating both these two hands that have entered the pot already. And Anton looks like he's going to get attacked for early position opens two hands in a row. People who make it my problem because they refuse to check a bag, like they're always like cramming their thing in the overhead. Yeah. And yeah. Need to get okay, their, yeah. Everything like that. I'm like, get over yourself. Just check it. Just check a bag. Reuter. Um, I'm pretty sure it's pronounced uh, R-O-I, Tur. Oh, nice. Ace 
Ace 10 suited any shot you peel, even though you might, uh, you know, it seems pretty credible, this three bet, but you're suited. I think inherently the the hijack flat makes it just a bit more difficult to play. This was just heads up playing, you know, 115 big blinds effective. You're happily peeling a hand like this, but you're worried less you could be flooding pretty strong. You're, you're maybe going to be up against, you know, two hands that are better than yours. Yeah. But with the sizing, I think that Anton Wig will probably still call yes. because it's just no size to fold. Yes. R O I Tur. Mm -hmm. That would have been the two biggest stacks at the table, two of the biggest well, stacks in the tournament. I don't know about that. Gotta <laughs> let the wheel spin on my head and see where the. Where the ball lands, right? It's fast for that. It's green. I guess. <laughs> Three options. <Yeah. clears throat> uh, couple of tens. <laughs> Papa WMC going to kick things off here. 9 5 off suit. As they say in Argentina, adios. Holds around to your boy Roy. Attention leaders in the main event. Your tablets are now disabled. Later. Please call any seat open to the table holder. Once again, your tablets are and now disabled. And it's going to be Maduka Marigal first to enter this pot. Well, nine deuce off suit, pretty easy decision there. Gilboa in the small blind, adios, and I guess it's gonna be a raise in, nope, nope. I guess that's just his face, but he does seem like perplexed. No yeah. What's happening. There's also a sort of a, if he dies, he dies thing going on. Yeah. Nice fellow today, Anton Wig, but definitely intimidating. Yeah, but bit stern for my taste. And the flop is Jack 10 8, two clubs. So we've got an up and down draw and two overs for Marigal, but it is two pair for Vig. Marigal going to continue. Those glasses are probably real expensive, huh? Yeah. I mean, if they're real. Pradas? Love a good Prada. If you had to guess how expensive are those glasses? Like, they look more expensive than regular Prada glasses, so I'm going to go $900. Oh, yeah. I also don't know if, I, I feel like not a lot of people could pull them off. I'm not sure he is. <laughs> That's kind of what I was implying. He is pulling off this raise, though. <laughs> Makes it 18-5. Marigal, probably with, <coughs> do you just feel like you have a little too much equity here, even if you're behind? Oh, yeah. Can't fold. Yeah, you're drawn to the nuts. You would all worried about the dirty outs? You're not, I mean, you're just, you're just not betting to fold here, right? Like if, uh, then, then you would just want to check. You it's know, fine. you unblock everything, so you can face some check raises sometimes, and you got to be able to defend them. And listen, you're building a pot to when you do make the nuts, and that can be pretty sweet. And look, a card like that could slow down Wig if he doesn't hold a nine, which he does not. All right, I'm being told the uh, glasses are only only 200 euros. Seven of spades on the turn, misses everybody. And yeah. it looks, yeah, as though this is Anton's not, finding a bet. Doesn't look like a very big one, though. 16.5, smaller than the raise was on the flop. Yeah, does Anton Wig ever know where he's at in this hand? 
You know, it's not just the one combos of, of King Queen that are the straight draws that would be calling on the flop, but the Ace Queens are also a double gutter, as we call them. So that would have bet called the flop as well. So just kind of setting the price, getting some value from those kind of hands that will call again and not bloating the pot the times that your opponent does have better, like a nine in their hand. So brick, brick, miss, miss for Marigal, which I guess is better than hitting a king or a queen. Yeah, I, I, I don't expect Anton to get greedy here and try to get some value from a jack, but he, he might want to do that just to sort of block bet and set the price. But he could just check and then decide whether he can withstand a bet. It's going to reach for chips, but I wouldn't expect it to be very big. Something in that 20,000 range. And look. Less. Even less. Well, I don't think there's much of a chance Marigal calls. That feels weird. God, you're good at this. I'm 11 years in the game, pal. <laughs> 11 years in the... If you don't start... What am I talking about? It's not even right. <laughs> it's not, it can't it's not be even right. correct. If 14 years in commentary. <laughs> almost 20 years in poker. And look at this. Is he going for it? He's doing it. He is doing it, Peter. Now, you might be asking yourself, what does Marigal have here when it's a nine? Ace nine. Yep. Pocket nines. Nine, ten. Yeah, king nine. Suited. King nine raises the cutoff. King, certainly king nine of hearts will call the raise especially, but pretty much all your king nine combos, ace nine. Queen nine was made on the flop and would have just called. The only hands Anton Wigger beating are those king queen and ace queen combos. Hands like an ace five suited. Now I believe the consternation is real. And look, you know, Anton was just talking about the balls bouncing around his head and trying to figure out where they'll land. And this is a, another perfect example. When Anton bets this oh. small amount, and that is. That bluff has just been just snapped off. Wow. And quick muck from Marigal, and he's wearing it, isn't he? He feels a little bit owned, I think. Would probably I mean, feel even more owned had he seen the hand. Anton didn't even have to show, though, yeah. which is uh, which is a dangerous game to play, just mucking your hand when you get called like that. Isn't it, Griff? Can't you be angled occasionally? Um... What yeah, but King Queen can never be winning, like that particular hand, and he didn't really didn't want to give that information. So I'm I'm a little surprised. I would want to maybe see what like, what I got called with, but sure. That was uh listen, that was very impressive work from Anton Wig. That the way he played that hand was by design. That small bet bet on the river by design, thinking, okay, I'm, I'm betting this amount. If I get raised some of the time, I'm gonna have to call. I'll think about it. And um, I'll get the job done. I'll get her done. Anton did get the job done. He's now up to almost 400,000 in chips, nearly 160 big blinds. Pull up my bootstraps. Get her done. Purva Goel is going to start by limping in with 10-9 offsuit. Pocket Kings for Gilboa. Some great G names on this feature table, huh? Yeah, we got Goel, Gilboa. Marigal. And that's, and that's it. <laughs> Anton Wig with two Gs. Okay. We're Too much? Me. I mean, we've got uh, Andrian and uh, the D in Andrian is close to the letter G in the alphabet, it's just a few spots away. So, yeah, I see what you're saying. I did notice that. I 
did notice that. So Gilboa did put in a raise with the Kings, and Goel is going to come along for the ride with Anton Vig. Sixes versus Kings versus 10-9 offsuit. And it's top pair for Goel. A delicious spot for Yuri Gilboa. IJ SB, I'm going to get to your question after this hand. I'm going to let Griffin answer that one for you. Goel, Seabat to 11.5. Gilboa made it 35,000. Yeah, not wasting any time is Gilboa. It looks very, very strong. You know, isolating this limp, snap raising over the flop bet. My alarm bells would be go welling off if I were him, but frankly, the way he's played this hand, I don't know how he's going to be able to get away from it. I mean, if he's prepared to limp call raises with the 10 9 out of position on 40 big blinds, finding a full with top pair is possible. Show one. Just one. Show one? Yeah. Show two. <laughs> oh my god, he showed the king. Which one, though? That's a good one, too. All right, here's a question, Griff. Yeah. This is from IJSP. It says, beginner here, why do people fold this much? Why not wait till... Wait! Breaking action. Tonka involved in a hand. All in triangle in front of Tonka. Tonka shoved on Mikhailo Demyadenko. The one with the backwards hat in the foreground next to the dealer. And Demyadenko has made the call. And vacates his seat two pair for Demidenko, ace jack and tonka with a better two pair ace king and that puts tonka at 650,000 good enough for the overall tournament chip leader man oh man tonka he's just good at poker listen tonka's a beast but i have some observations from what i just watched Okay. You know, James was joking about how maybe he's a little worse for wear today, and yeah. I'm pretty sure <laughs> when that guy was on his way out, the, the gentleman who busted said, good luck, and Tonka said, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you might have rewind the tape, but... <laughs> he's saying good luck in life. I think that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> All right, back to this question before I lose it, even though there's a hand okay. of progress here. Why do people fold this much? Why not wait till at least the flop? Hmm. Um, so the answer to your question is that, um, well, the problem with playing poor hands is that if you see too many flops with them, you're going to find yourself in situations where, let's say, you just want to see a flop with the king five, and you get it, get, you get, put some chips in the middle, and you get it in with a guy who has king jack. Well, when it comes king high on the board, you're going to lose a lot of chips. You're putting yourself in a position where you're going to find yourself with the second best hand way more often. So that's why you gotta, you know, you gotta duck and jab and not just pl see every every flop. Can I can I add to that a little bit? Sure, yeah. You can tell me if this yeah. is correct or not. Mm -hmm. One is that it can get quite expensive yeah. to see a lot of flops. So you need to save your chips. Your chips are ammunition. Mm -hmm. And the more you have, the better you do. So you want to hold on to those for when you have good hands, first and foremost. Yeah. Secondly, it is much harder to connect with a flop than it looks like. Yes. I agree. And I, I, even even more of a follow-up, too, is that if you have a lot of chips and you have the kind of table that is that warrants it, you can definitely get more out of line and play more hands. I mean, there have been a lot of even feature tables at EPTs where I've been able to play an enormous amount of, of the hands because I have the kind of table um, that allows it to go well after making that excellent fold with the top pair gifted with a set on the turn.
So pocket three is drawing dead. Eight seven drawing dead. King Jack drawing quite thin and betting 7,500. Yeah, and you know, List the second really hasn't done anything wrong in this hand. I even like this sizing on the turn. It's just that Goel has hit that miracle six. A couple more hands like this, and we're going to need list part three. And Goel <coughs> does elect to put in a raise. Makes sense from a perspective of a fish like me. I see a lot of paint out there. I see a lot of reasons for my opponent to call. Generally, you'd hope there'd be a little stronger here than second pair, mm -hmm. and second pair does get away from it. And that puts Goel back up over 100K. <laughs> I could have hit something. You could have hit. <laughs> could have been. Could be pocket sixes. Fold, 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 fold. King 10 on the button for a Papo MC. Andrian. Ooh, I thought was going to fold in the small blind with Queen 8 offsuit. Well, Lococo limped. Well, that makes sense then, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Much cheaper. Uh, my bad. I just see chips going in on the button, and I assume it's going to be a raise, and I should not assume. Because when you assume, it makes a jerk out of both of us. Three ways to the flop. Unraised. Eight, four, deuce. Pair of eights for Andrian. Pair of deuces for Liss, part two. Do you remember what we call Queen Eight? The the Quate. No, the Equator. The Equator. Also, you you did a good one in the Mystery Cast Challenge with, with Queen Eight. What what did I do? You did the Yas Queen Eight thing for. <laughs> I think I texted it to you. You didn't understand it. <laughs> oh, Fa Fabian is yeah. Fabiano. It was yeah. Fabian. Yes, Queen, Queen eight. eight. Yeah, she's. <laughs> Coco is not the type to quit on pots. If we've learned anything. I mean, Coco is just gonna three bet you. With no pair, no draw. Yeah, and this is twenty-two thousand designed to the for the great deal of hands that Andrian can have that are sort of semi bluffs, check raises with some straight draws. If Lococo knew that Andrian had a hand as strong as Queen Eight, probably wouldn't be doing this with the King Ten. So it's really just attacking the portion of his range that might be prepared to fold. 
maybe even a deuce or a four that doesn't really like playing as a check call would probably fold to that third bet on the flop. And now Lococo's found himself in another unenviable situation with pot, just pot left. Such a tricky, levelly opponent. Two, three, four. Yeah, nothing really changing about this board. Eight still good. Yeah, Lococo played that crazy hand, right? It was in the, I think it was the World Series main. He's played a lot of crazy hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The World Series main is up there for sure. Buenos dias, Andrian. Seat three might look bored, but let me tell you, getting deep in an EPT main event is riveting stuff. Yeah, we're not quite deep yet. We are approaching the bubble. I think it's going to take all of this level, probably all of the next level, and then the final level of the day, the bubble should hit. I guess for the sake of the metaphor, it should be the bubble should burst. Sure. Yeah. Whatever. That's correct, Dr. Steal Your Face. This is where you can watch world-famous bubble coverage. We're just not going to be there for a few hours still, as we see. Anton Vig opened this pot. 9-8 suited. I am liking Board Guy's sweater. The... With the birds? Yeah. What is that, a heron? Yeah, I think those are herons. We'll just fold it anyway. Right. Raising tickets. I keep working on my psyche <coughs> magic. Uh, right on until I actually get someone to do it. <laughs> no. Pika on Twitch, first time chat says, This is so cool. I can't believe this is live. It's not what you just heard was a trick. I can't explain to you how it's done. But it involves a massive team working behind the scenes and mirrors. Felix99 on YouTube says the brand is called Heron Preston. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Seems a little too weird to be made up. Is it cool? Probably is if, if it's been worn at this table. Go well with King Jack. Comes in for the min raise. A7 suited for Marigal in the big blind. 9-6 deuce. Nobody connects in any way. That gold trophy they're playing for. First ever given away, DPT Cyprus. Just saw Tonka take the tournament chip lead moments ago. Other big names still in contention for this trophy include Kaihan Mockery, Carl Shaw, Tuan Mulder, Kenny Hallert. 
You know what I love about poker is that maybe a year ago, Carl Shaw wouldn't have been on our list of big names. Yeah, but now he's a guy. Now he's a guy. Now he's somebody that we pay attention to. He's been making some deep runs and making some noise. Also, we've invested some time into the, like, the Fast and the Furious bit. So the shaw yeah. yeah. You know, Kenny Hallard's probably someone that I've thought about more <laughs> than anyone else in this entire field. Why is that? Because was he at your final table? He was in the November 9th. Yeah. So I had three months to think about what Kenny was thinking, what he was going to do. Good luck with that. Unpredictable. King, six, deuce. Marigal versus Goel. Another board that completely misses everybody. Well, less missing now. Goel with the flush draw and the up and down draw. Still losing to ace high. You know, say what you want about the unconventional ways Goel has played his hand so far on this table. Um, been pretty interesting to watch. Always a lot of fun, yeah. Goel and Marigal both. Exotic Marigal Goel. <laughs> Kind of like, do you remember that episode of Masters of Horror where um, there was a guy driving and he, he liked killing hitchhikers and then he picked up a hitchhiker who liked killing drivers? No. That's these two. Oh, wow. I don't believe you. Believe that. Go well. Forced to open the eight high. <coughs> Just coughs into his hands and then instantly starts picking up the chips. These are mine now. I have claimed them with my saliva. <laughs> Zoomer Finn says, I love Masters of Horror. That was, the, that was a good episode. Pretty hit or miss show in general. Should have been better than it was, but some of the some of the episodes were fantastic. Yeah, stop sucking up your band. <laughs> Masters of Horror was this anthology show. They would get really famous horror directors to direct one hour mm. horror stories. I like the Don Coscarelli episode, Moonface. That one was really cool. The one with George Went was cool. I don't remember which who directed that one. When Murstyle says I'm more of a black mirror and American horror story guy, what you're really doing is saying is that you're a young person and you don't remember this show and all you remember is newer stuff, which is fine. But don't act like you see But you're bad, stuff. yeah. Yeah. Very banned. Big versus Gilboa, the classic matchup. Oh, the gun versus hey. the big blind top pair <coughs> for Gilboa. Bottom set for Big. Gilboa. Check back call. Yeah. Meeting his match here against Ivan Drago. But what Gilboa doesn't realize is that he's Apollo Greed in this one. <laughs> 
Throw in the damn towel! He is the champ, so... Oh no, they're both champs. He's like, is he like the Russian champ, Ivan Drago, I guess? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, probably, right? No, I just mean in this case, they're both EBT champions. Oh. I like how quick Gilboa plays. Like, he's just like, listen, we're on TV. Let's stop moving on. I think he's just gonna like, uh, in fairness, this is a tough decision. That's bluff. Oh, look, look at that. See how quick that was? Let's it go. Nice bluff. Was not a bluff. I like covering your bases, though, by saying nice bluff. Yeah. <coughs> if you can't win chips, you might as well win, have be the moral victor. I mean, I guess it really depends if you're a glass half full or half empty kind of person. Like, covering your bases, the way you say it, it's like you're, you're right in both ways, but you're also kind of wrong in both ways. But if you just don't say anything, you look like a genius. If you're right. I remember there was a guy who played in the big game named Troy Howard. He was just getting completely beat up by everybody, and he was super cocky. So he was a loose cannon. Yeah. He was super cocky. He was just getting completely owned by every pro in every single hand. And because he was so cocky, you didn't feel bad for him at all. Like, you really rooted for a lot of the loose cannons, and this guy, you yeah. did not root for him at all. And... He's up against Ike Haxton in a hand, and I think Ike raised him. And dude, st dude stares down at Ike, stares at him, stares at him. And Ike had pocket queens, and it had flopped a set of queens. Strong hand. And eventually, the guy looks at him, and he goes, you blinked your eyes, you got a set, and then folds. <laughs> and it was the only time all day he was right about anything. That's amazing. <laughs> but it looks super boss. And we never saw Ike Haxton on tour ever again. That's right. Never to be just, seen. His career or was just, again. yeah. Tail between his yeah. legs. I, heard, I actually heard he never blinked again. <laughs> he just plays with his eyes peeled open now like yeah. <laughs> clockwork orange. <coughs> All right, we've got the hijack versus the big blind here. And Tom probably not expecting to connect super hard. But decides not to fight for every last chip in this pot. Could have saved some money. <laughs> All right, kids, time to remind you about the miniature EPT. It's like a mini golf course. It's like regular golf, but smaller, cheaper, and more fun. 15 tournaments over the five days of our broadcast, three every single day. They start at 3.15, 6.15, and 8.15 Central European time. Buy-in starting at $1.10. It's just a fraction, just a fraction of what the real events are going for here in Cyprus. And there's power path tickets added to all the tournaments. And there's mini main events for $5.50 and $55 starting on Sunday at 6.15 and 8.15 Central European time, respectively. And the winner of each of those events is going to get a gold power pass, which is good for a whole package to an EPT event. Probably Prague would be my guess. But if it's a gold power pass, I think a gold you, package, you mean? A gold, a gold power pass, yeah. Okay. Uh, which means you can play basically any event, I believe, that's on any of our tours. You want to use it for NAPT? You want to use it for Prague? Prague. That's all we've got on the horizon at the moment. I'm not sure what we're allowed to announce for next year yet, but obviously there will be more stops next year as well. Find some like casino yeah. boat, one K in Mississippi, what? and it's like find all these tournaments. Advantage like Lococo, but going to be hard to hold on if Marigal finds a bet. But decides to check, doesn't want to find himself 
back getting back check back raised back on back the back flop back here. Back just going to check it down. Hoping for that jack. Marigo whiffs the king queen again. And I think Makoko is going to be happy to go for a little vol value here. Target those ace high river calls. We've seen Marigel call with ace high already once before. So I think Lacoco is going to try to extract a little value and is going to do so with about half pot bet at 7,500. Yeah. I mean, if you if you don't, which it's going to be tough, I think Marigel with just king queen high, maybe more inclined with ace high to call. But you know, it's, it's, it's almost just as strong, right? Either your opponent's bluffing or or they're value betting you. And does call, does call. Mm. Oh, not yet. Yeah, he does. Okay. He'll sleep well tonight. In the way between Vegas to LA. I'm kind of embarrassed that all these Europeans have been to Yellowstone and I haven't. Do you watch that show? I could. I, the show did not grab me. <laughs> anyways, anyways, it's 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 like I had the best time. If you like, whatever. If you go, let me know. I have some recommendations. Thanks, man. Yeah, no worries. Uh, yeah, we're definitely not going for Pogard's vacation. Yeah. The uh, on the flight over here, British Airways had a real uh, love affair with Taylor Sheridan, though, because not only did they have Yellowstone 1923 and 1871 all available to watch, but they also had Snow, <coughs> Snow Mountain, Snow River. What's that movie called? Wind River. Wind River. Another Taylor Sheridan. Oh, yeah? Piece. Mayor of Kingstown, another Taylor Sheridan. Oh, the King, Tulsa King, another Taylor Sheridan. They had all the Taylor I've been Sheridan. Hearing shows. about Tulsa King, actually. My friend wrote on Tulsa King. I heard it's pretty good. Did you know my brother was in Mayor of Kingstown? I did not know that. He had a scene with Jeremy Renner as like a That's SWAT fantastic. guy. Yeah, he had to put on a on like a on like a vest on Jeremy Renner. Oh, cool. Yeah. He's gonna be a star. <laughs> Reuter versus Andrian. Reuter raising from relatively early position and flopping pretty good. So I watched Wind River. I'd always wanted to see that movie because uh, a good friend of ours, me and my buddy back in LA from way back in the day, is in Wind River. He plays uh, the, ri the really bad, bad guy. Yeah, okay. But I enjoyed the movie, even though there wasn't much to it plot-wise. I thought that the uh, the performances were really great. Yeah, and I f feel like it's one of those movies that's more like a vibe than it is, mm. a, you know? Definite vibe. Remember the other movie that I watched on the flight I wanted to talk to you about? Asteroid City. Oh, yeah. Just not a Wes Anderson guy. No. Really? No, not really. I, I'm a, uh, maybe I'm basic, but I love Wes Anderson. It's very rare. It's every, every time I watch a Wes Anderson movie, I'm like, it takes me forever to do it. Like, I look at it like it's a chore. I'm like, oh, God, Asteroid City. All right, fine. And then I watch it. I'm like, man, why did I sleep on this for so long? It's so cute. He just I like the camp one a lot. Uh, I I saw that one rather recently. Moonrise also. Yeah, Kingdom. Moonrise I really Kingdom. like Moonrise Kingdom. I'm surprised they didn't get more flack for. Uh, he did Rushmore too, right? I really oh, yeah. like Rushmore. Yeah, 
a lot. That was a staple of my... Rushmore almost ended friendships for me. Oh, yeah. I dragged all my friends. We were in high school. I dragged all my friends to see Rushmore, and it wasn't like a traditional comedy, and they were all like, what is this movie? Because there's like four jokes. It's like a very subtle yeah. comedy. Well, like, what are the other Wes Anderson's? Yes, I, did, I didn't really get the... My favorite is Royal Tenenbaums. I think that's a masterpiece. Which one's that again? That's well, the... one Gene Hackman. Yeah. Um, I saw that one, I think, even recently. Steve Zissou is another I never Wes watched Anderson. That one. Uh, I thought that one was okay. I mean, the Grand Budapest Hotel is phenomenal. Yeah, I saw that, but I don't remember even whether I like Darjeeling Limited. I remember really liking Fantastic so Mr. Fox, but then re-watching it and not liking it. That one I haven't <laughs> seen, actually, Fantastic <laughs> Mr. Fox. <laughs> Should be named after him. <laughs> That's and on Vig Pocket and Nines. Up, up the and then the one that yeah, came right before uh, uh, this one I thought was excellent <laughs> also, the, uh, the black and white. It's like got a Battle of Algiers kind of vibe to it. The one where there's a uh, like Benicio del Toro, yeah, stuff. Benicio del Toro, and it's like, uh, yeah, I watched that one too. I think yeah, I fell asleep on that. That was one. fantastic, also. Mm. You know what's up. Have you watched his the three like uh, mini movies that he did for Netflix that just came out? No, I did not watch those. They just came out in like yeah. the last two weeks. Anton Vig with the nines gonna get a complete one customer from Reuter. Eight five deuce, no set of nines, but an over pair of the board is pretty, pretty, pretty <laughs> good. Nick Walsh likes the Netflix ones. L.C. Brand asks, how did Wiggs end up with 400,000 chips? He won a series of pots, some of which had showdown, others by getting his opponent to fold. Your question, we thank you for. We, and we thank you for your question. Just slams him with the pot. When was the last says, you, you know what? I unblock pairs here. He's going to call with a pair. Let's get our value here. Chicken pot, chicken pot, chicken pot pie. 35 minutes left on the level. Down to 233 players. <laughs> 199 is where you have to make it to to get paid. I do like me some link later. What's the what's the latest link later? So it just Link Later did what? Boy Boyhood? He did Boyhood. That was pretty solid. I like that. He did the before trilogy. Never seen any of those. Ooh, you gotta watch those, man. You would I think you would really like those, actually. They seem it's just isn't just people talking the whole time. Yeah, but it's like it's incredible. It's really, really good. I rec I well, watch it with the uh, Kel. Who? Um, your girlfriend. She's not good at talkies. No. Four, four dudes, two spades. <laughs> we got a little street flash draw for Marigal. <laughs> and there's the... Oh, street flash. The flush Now we're an open-ended straight flush draw. And Gilboa does have a bigger flush draw, quickly calls. River is the eight of clubs. Ah. Oh. Shows the king of spades, I believe. Straight and flush. Yeah, and flush. Yeah, but not a straight flush. Yeah. How disappointing. <laughs> Linklater's also doing another 
a uh, movie that is going to take like 20 years to film. He's doing another one. What's uh? You were like the baseball one, right? Everybody wants some. Yeah, was that, that him? was good. Yeah, he did that. Yeah. I didn't see that one. What about Dazed and Confused? The Wolfman chiming in yeah, about Dazed did, and Confused. He did Dazed and Confused. It was a, it was a surprising. We failed to mention that one. Dazed and Confused, which is funny, is that so I watched it when it came out, like whenever I was raving about it, and it did nothing for me. And then as an adult later, much later, I watched it and I did enjoy it <coughs> yeah. very much. I don't think I've seen much Link later, though, in general. You can always link it later. <laughs> All right. Okay. Latosi says, Poker Stars movie podcast when? James and I talk movies on the podcast just about every week. James yeah, Bond movies, but they are movies. We, we, talk about, we talk about James Bond movies for sure, but when there isn't one of those to talk about, we talk about just about everything else. Gilbo with pocket sevens. Reuter is going to three bet from the button with ace 10 offsuit. Gilboa, fast to act. Yeah, love it. Calls the re-raise and we're going to the flop which is jack eight deuce, ace 10 misses, sevens holding. Snap call. Nine on the turn. <coughs> Another overcard for the sevens, but does not hit Reuter. Not specifically, does give Reuter the open ender. Yeah, and I think this is going to be a tough card for Reuter to continue on unless he just plays it as a shove. Certainly, you're going to get a hand like pocket sevens to fold, but if you think Jack X is just going to call you, Five. If pocket nines are really a part of his range. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Jack is a straight for Gilboa. Just a pair now for Reuter. Low end straight is good. Ship it <laughs> to Yuri. <coughs> Big deal, O'Neill. Get your uh, round of applause ready, Griff. Big deal, O'Neill just binked the hot hyper 82. Nice. It's all going downhill from here, man. Congrats, <laughs> big deal, O'Neill. Next thing you know, we'll be no, as, as you. calling the action for big deal, O'Neill at NAPT Las Vegas next month. Keep guessing. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun winning those. Turbos on Poker Stars. I wouldn't know. Poker deals. You will see on TV. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to try to steal the blinds. That's all. <laughs> yes. I haven't it's seen much from Lisi for a I while. Pocket eights, the snowmen's. Nom nom. Boa defending with King Jack, and I think we can all relate to this flop. The old 655 flop with King Jack. None of your suits represented. It's going to call. You see one more, but still, there you go. King Jack. Bupkis. 
And the man I like to call least the second is love and life here with the two eights. You're not too worried about your opponent improving much on this turn. You know, you block those seven eight combos. So a lot of the time you're going to be up against hands like ace high, maybe a six X type <coughs> hand, a six seven and the like, which you're just crushing at this stage. Against this King Jack combo, I think Gilboa is going to beat him into the middle there with the fold. But that's the thing about, you know, emulating Rocky Balboa. It's not about how hard you hit or get hit. Something, something getting up again. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I've never seen any of the Rocky movies in their entirety, Stop. unless you count Creed. <laughs> it's, man, no, I, know, I know this. I know this. I saw Creed. It's not, about it's how not how hard, hard hit. you can hit. It's, it's about how hard, hard you can get, get hit, hit and keep going. There, I think that's it. I'm pretty sure. I'm more of a Cinderella man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm more of a hurricane, dude. Reuter with the best of it. Five calls. Just calls. Marigal out, Goel out, Gilboa, King Six, Nah, -ah. Anton in the Vig blind. <laughs> you raising my Vig blind? I'm about to wig out, man. You raising my wig blind? Three aces, ace 10, ace jack, ace eight, and it is a top pair, top kicker for Lacey. Domination, rotation. <coughs> Anton Wig, of course, known as Antis Vanties online. Tell me if this theory is too much for you. Oh, Joe. boy. Yeah. I can <laughs> yeah, already tell it is. <laughs> but. At least you bet 5,500. <laughs> mm, go on. Uh, you know, Anton Wig has not always been this, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's put on some, some muscle in the years. And do you think once we moved to Big Ante, he felt he had to become Big Ante's? Sure. <laughs> I'm sure that's what it was. Advantage Anton Wig here on the flop. 10 3 3. Huh? Pardon me. <laughs> Lissy has, has the advantage with the ace 10. <coughs> Reuter going to call, going to be ahead sometimes against the range of Lissy. Nine of hearts on the turn. Twenty nine five in the middle. Lazy decides to check top pair. Yeah, I like this check here from Lissy. Uh, Pot control? Well, I mean, I think some of the time you can certainly justify betting again, getting more value from your king tens and your queen tens. <coughs> but those hands are also going to probably bet for 
for value. You would hate to, you know, somehow be up against something like an ace three suited pocket nines that would have called the flop. Also, those hands that are floating, like, like your ace jacks, your king queens, king jack suited, hands of that nature will start betting this turn as a bluff. And that's exactly what we're seeing here from Reuter. This is a pretty significant wager. You want this, is what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, because now, because Reuter now with this ace jack is thinking, okay, what? How was Lissy going to react if he has two sevens oh. or two sixes? You know, hands like that would bet the flop, and then would be pretty scared of a bet here on the turn. So, and I tell you what, Joseph, Joseph B. Stapleton. Yep. This heart on the river. Listening. Yep. Going to give Reuter a lot of reasons to <coughs> get real big with that bet. Those backdoor cards have come in. We've talked about the kind of hands that might be floating this flop, the suited combos, something like a king jack of hearts, certainly in that range. Let's see. Let's see how in line Reuter and Benger are. Over under 75,000. I it think to that's me, a Joe. really good line. I'm going to take me, slightly Joe. under. Okay. I think it's going to be like 70,000. I like it. Wait, does zero count? Uh, yeah, you can, you can have zero. Oh, zero <coughs> counts as under? Yeah. Oh, that's really fair then. Yeah, I'll yeah, definitely yeah, take yeah. the under. No shot clocks in play till they reach the money. Uh huh. Damn. Did not pull the trigger. And Lisi is going to take down this pot with the pair of tens. You're a little hustler, you know that? You're like, does zero count? Oh, good for you. I'm proud of you. That was nice. Well, because if you had said no, I, I would have just gone with zero. A check. Okay. I had a feeling. I thought it was like 50-50. On the actual bet, yeah. Yeah. Oh, look at that slow dissolve. Like we're watching a soap opera. Yeah. Yeah, the production team here doesn't mess around. Flipsy on YouTube says, Poker has become so freaking boring with these slow playing guys. You know what else is boring? Comments like that. You banned. Thanks for weighing in. Yeah, and if you if you feel hurt by being banned, why don't you put on a band-aid? There you go. Pocket Queens under the gun. Buenos Diaz Andrean. Dex818 says, dude was just talking facts. Why don't you join him? There you go. You can talk facts together. You banned. Maybe you can start yeah. a little discord. <laughs> yeah, maybe you can start a band together. <laughs> uh. Coco defending 6-3 offsuit and luckily whiffs everything. If you're not going to hit 2 4 5, probably best for it to come king king jack insta fold on the flop. Matthew Nozick on YouTube. Oh. All right. Olivier's just let everyone know that 
<laughs> they will no longer be the featured table after the break. 18 minutes and 25 seconds. In 18 minutes, 25 seconds, there will be a break. 20 minutes after that, we will have a new feature table. And that feature table will include the one, the only, Ponka Tarker Nalbit. Tonka, Tonka Marker, Parker, Parker, Tarker, Parker Talbot, Tonka. Nice. It's, well, Tonka would be in the middle. Try again. Parker. Parker Tonka Talbot. Tar no, no, I'm, no, I'm doing it. And Juan Pardo. Malacca style. Super high roller champion in W Coop. Super high roller champion here in Cyprus. Zuka Zellini says, words are hard. Guess what? So is understanding bits. You're banned. Caxel asked, why was he banned from expressing his opinion? I don't know. Why don't you take some time to think about it? You're banned. Thanks for this, guys. I was getting a little bored myself this level. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else want to question my authority? Ace, King of Diamonds, whiffs entirely here. Five's good for now. Bottom pair for Gilboa. Sorry. Second pair on the flop for Gilboa. No good. No longer second pair either. Tarker, Ponka, Tal. Mm. Not a straight. I did it for you. Oh, thank you. Checks around on the river. Super happy to win this one with pocket fives. Yeah. Ship it. Or Talbot. Hardcore. Parker. It's too bad Parker never got into parkour. Because that'd be kind of like a. It's never too cool, late. A cool nickname, right? Could be a good rebirth. For parkour him. Talbot. Yeah, parkour Talbot. Yeah, that'd be good. You're singing some royalty free music. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, for a second there, I thought Andrian's shirt was also Rocky Balboa. <laughs> it does look a little bit like Sylvester <laughs> yeah. Stallone, yeah. So, you think I should watch Tulsa King? I've not seen it. I do not know. It, I got a very it, most hard people really like it. Yeah. I guess I could get down with him being, you know, getting out of prison after life sentences. He's like a former crapo kind of thing. Yeah. What's funny is that my friend who worked mm. on it didn't have high hopes for it. Mm. Then it came out, and everyone was like, ah, oh, it's really fun. It's a good show. Yeah. So. He wrote it, or he, he was a writer, or he was a... A writer on the show, yeah. Yeah. You know, th there's writing, writing teams. Mm. Because what happens is Yellowstone was such a big hit. And then I think the next one was like 1923 or whatever. And so when these shows are big hits, they just gave Taylor Sheridan carte blanche. They're like, just give us more ideas. So he's got like five or six TV shows on the air. And when that happens, it's really hard for the quality for that remain. person yeah. to, yeah, to really keep to maintain the voice. And this is the Wind River guy? Yeah. Huh. And and people like Yellowstone. This is the this is the 
Yellowstone's like the biggest drama hit in like the last, I don't know, three or four years. Costner, I right? say. Yeah. Many seasons? It's got five or six seasons, I think, yeah. Chat, tell me if, if, if I should watch Yellowstone. I don't think I will because I have a lot of other TV show to watch, but... I heard good things about the Continental. Not doing Continental because uh, I'm, not, I'm not doing Mel Gibson vehicles anymore. Mm. All right, so here we go. It, when you asked, is Yellowstone worth it? No, no, don't, no. Watch two seasons. Watch 1883 again. It's very good. Bad show. Don't bother. Yes. You do you, man. Yellow Hannah says, I have thoughts on Yellowstone. That's a good uh, range. I think I have a good idea. I'm going to throw it under the no pile. All right, we got a three bet from Lisi. Yeah. Back to the poker. Reuter having to think with the pocket sevens in the big blind. Does still have the original opener, which took all the way until the button to happen. Well, this is a very strong hand in the big blind when it's folded to the button, right? This isn't like your normal, there's been a raise and a re-raise and you have two sevens, just, you know, <coughs> side fold. This is a, okay, the button is probably raising with nothing, as we can see. Andre on with a three in his hand. Ooh. Let's see, three betting could just be three betting with, you know, the ace six suited. So I don't want to fold sevens here most of the time, but you know what? Let's just get out of trouble. And I can, I respect it. Can't really call four bet. Seems weird. Just over 10 minutes left on the level. Getting a new feature table when we get back. Once again with Parker Talbot, AKA Tonka. Juan Pardo, AKA Malacca style. Here's a question for you, Griff. Have you watched the new Rick and Morty yet? It uh, came out? Yeah. The new voices, right? Yeah. The new AI voices? Is it AI? I don't think so. I don't know. That's one of the theories. I mean, everyone does a Rick and Morty impression. It wouldn't be that hard to find a talented voice actor. That I don't know, Rick. <laughs> I keep telling my girlfriend we should go for Halloween as Rick and Morty. That's great. With idea. her as Morty. I think it would just be so funny <laughs> seeing her as a little boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So do you know the show uh, Arthur with, like, the aardvark, the cartoon? I do know Arthur, yes. So uh, one of my good buddies uh, from Montreal was the voice of Arthur. Oh, really? Yeah. But he's but he's a bit, like, coy about it. He doesn't always like, you know, people bugging about it or knowing, knowing about sure. it, you know? And... Uh, one of our one of our mutual one of his his best friends is gonna surprise him on Halloween dressed up as Arthur. Uh, <laughs> I can't wait. And uh, did he still I, do I the voice or did he outgrow it? He's definitely outgrown it. Yeah. Okay. No, no, no. It was like a once puberty was hit, they replaced yeah. something kind of thing. But he did like hundreds of episodes. But it's gonna be. I'm so excited to tell the thousands of people watching because I can't tell anyone else. It's a big surprise. Like it's, it's you know it's he's like don't tell anyone. Like within my friend group, right? This one time I was out in a bar in L.A. and a buddy of mine was visiting. And uh, he's kind of an emo kid. And he was wearing a SpongeBob wristband, uh -huh. like a sweatband. And I go, man, look, I'm going to tell you something. I probably shouldn't tell you this. Please don't make a thing out of it. But the guy who plays the voice of SpongeBob is right over there. <laughs> the words weren't even out of my mouth yet. And he was down Tom Kenny's throat. Just immediately sidled up and was like, hey, dude, and showed him the wristband. And guess what? Tom Kenny was so cool. We ended up hanging out with him for hours. Oh, that's great. But I was so embarrassed and yeah. regretted it super hard the yeah, second yeah, yeah. I told him. Cool. 
Buenos dias, Andrian raising ace jack. And these two just destined to clash. Andrian and Reuter. Reuter Clemens. The ace do suited. Small re rays coming in. that small but not that big either Andrean gonna be a bit too high up in his range here I think in these late position spots to be just folding to the three bet with ace jack I think the question just becomes do you want to turn this hand into effectively a bluff because you're not prepared to get all in preflop with this hand for this amount of chips? Or do you want to just call and keep those weaker hands in there? Andrian does elect to go with that re-raise pre-flop. And I'll tell you what, <coughs> we've talked about it a lot on this broadcast before, about how these badass, you know, live players, online players, don't like to fold the, the suited wheel aces and are prepared to do some crazy things with it. But does Reuter want to put in 165,000 chips at 2,500 big blind with ace two suited? Probably not. The shoving matches don't go as many rounds as they used to. No. These days. These players figured out that they were torching chips. Yeah. And that's why we do see the fold from Reuter. I think very reasonably played on both sides. And the best hand won. And, and that's what you love to see, isn't it? That's what I love to see, for sure. This is our new feature table. They won't be on their phones up on the main stage, that's for sure. They're getting it out of their system. <laughs> Mario Tratu. Bastion May, Egget Guven, Gerard Carbo. Did, did someone just mash the keyboard, right? Those are made right? up, those are, made up just, names. These, yeah, are Those yeah. are all real names. No, that was, that was from, that was from. Oleg Ustinovich and Harold Sammer. <laughs> it's like a Tim and Eric awesome show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bastion May, Egget Guven, Gerard Carbo. Gerard Carbo is definitely a Tim Robinson made up. Carmine Leguzio. <laughs> Anton opening from early position, a little out of line here. Jack eight suited, getting three bet by Andreon. So I actually saw um, a, a meme the other day. I forgot to send you. You know the the first ever. I think you should leave sketch with the the door that goes both ways. Yes. The place that they they shot it on location now has a sign beside it that says this door actually goes both ways. Fantastic. <laughs> I think I know that exact coffee shop, by the way. It's no the way. Fearless, right? I don't know. Yeah. It's in L.A.? I'm That's pretty awesome. sure I know the one. Oh, no. It, it does both. Quick take. I was down. here yesterday. It <laughs> does both. <laughs> oh, man. Another pot for Andreon. I just want to know if that shirt says White Lotus. I doubt it. Oh, it's tough because now you really want to sing it. <laughs> uh, I love you know I love that song. Yeah. Ooh. So Andrean is fourth in chips at this table, but has 79 big blinds. Pretty deep stack table, top half of the table. And then Gilboa is actually fifth with under 40 bigs. So the bottom half, not that many chips. Top half, lots of chips. Did I tell you I was at a dinner with uh, his with Mike White's assistant? He told me all the I, I don't think it's stuff. No. Yeah, I should tell you. I should. Uh, that's, that's a great story. I'll tell you that sometime. Actions folded around to Apurva Goel. I say he limps. 
Yikes. Evil, uh, mm, that's a limb. I win. One big chip. You lose. <laughs> At least I lose. I didn't, didn't really weigh in. It was just a, it was a key and peel reference in my head that no, no one would ever get from the um, flicker sketch. Not sure I remember that one. By the way, you have some. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> I need to show you. Jokes on you. You just touched a shirt that I've been wearing uh, for six days. <laughs> yeah. I need to show you the flicker sketch, and then you'll see the <laughs> very obscure reference I made, too. This is all great. We were planning for me to tell you a story. We're planning to watch an episode of Key and Peele. We still have to watch Joe uh, loves mo hanging out movie, with 40, me. movie 42. Joe loves hanging out with me after. You know what's weird is that I, I mean, I was really, really ill in Barcelona. Like, I was, I think it's the first time ever that I left commentary early mm. from not feeling well. That was a pretty hellish trip for me. It's okay, everyone. Don't worry. We still face times. Cool. Actions full it around to Clemens Reuter. Ace eight offsuit. Marigal five four suited, dying to play a hand. Marigo wants to see three. Let's be honest. Yeah, that's kind of his his whole his whole vibe. I want to see three cards. And I want to see if they match with my two. Lococo doesn't fold much no. from any position, let alone a king six suited from the big blind. And what do we say here, dealer Jack King King trips? For Lococo. Are sunglasses making a comeback, or are they they're this? In life or in poker? In poker. I think we're get, we have four plus on this table, and that feels like more than average. It could be because of the location. Like, it's a sunny, warm climate. Yeah. So people just have sunglasses with them and then aren't taking them off. Ten on the turn after action checks all the way around. Coco checking again. Has a small ish stack. Hoping someone will put some chips in that he can raise at some point. It's working. Marigal yeah. folds the five high. Not Back to Lococo yeah. facing the bet of 6,500. Not entirely convinced that Lococo is going to want to play this as a check raise. Um, you know, you do still have to worry about the ace queen. If you do check raise here, you're not probably not going to get action from the jack x <laughs> type hands, the ten x's. So better to call and make it look like you have something like queen ten or jack nine that might have to fold to big pressure on the river. Well, pretty clean run out. And Lococo is not going to leave it up to fate this time. Is going to value bet the river. This will be the last hand of the level, by the way. But look at the size, Joe. This is just awesome stuff. Lococo effectively checking, but also saying, like, I just want to get to showdown here with my, you know, queen 10. I'm going to bet the minimum. Let's see if you're willing to raise. But he's actually doing it with that king. <laughs> uh, the seven percent pot river bet just begging Reuter to find that raise to 20 thirty thousand and instead just call just the call well hey squeeze 2500 out of Reuter wow <laughs> looks a little tilted yeah like maybe his opponent had something like Ace Jack and would have been prepared to call a little more, but wasn't the case. Got the max. 
players are headed to break. These are the chip sacks they're taking back out into the field with the new blinds. So 129 big blinds is what Anton's taking out there. Clements Reuter, second in chips at this table at 91 bigs. Yuri Gilboa, the other EPT champ at the table, taking 34 bigs out there. And Andre Lococo will be departing with 28 bigs. New feature table when we get back, including Tonka and Malaka style. During the break, we've got some classic bubble moments from the EPT archives. More from Cyprus in 20 minutes time. Stop. We're gonna go table by table. I am with the two aces is our rolling player. Gail Bauman is the player at risk, but huge favorite with two aces against Daniel Gomez is 9-5. Let's see the four, please. The flop is 9-10-4 to Rainbow. Gomez has some equity, more than he did before the flop, actually. On the turn, please. The turn is a queen. Bauman has to fade nines and fives. On the final card, please. The bubble's not bursting. It's a king. Aces hold. So Bauman gets the double up. We have another all in. Remember, there are two more all in hands. This is insanity. Tournament director Toby Stone races across the room. Please tell me this is Martin Finger versus Finger Martin. Thankfully not, because that would be epically confusing. It's Martin Finger with pocket jacks against Jesse Martin's ace queen. We have a classic race on our hands. Like clean sheets versus warm towels. Which one has the slight mathematical edge? Martin Finger is the player at risk. He needs those jacks to hold. Okay, let's see the floor, please. Ace on the floor. This is king, ace, nine. Finger way behind now. The bubble's about to burst. Martin Finger finishes in 97th place. He is our bubble boy, but. We do have another hand. And remember, hand for hand play, these all happen at the same time. If we lose another player, if we lose Andrew Badaker here, they will actually chop the bubble. Badaker ahead, but at risk to the same guy who gave Maria Ho a speech for taking her time to make a decision, in case you're wondering who to root for. Come on. Yes. Oh, is King, seven, queen. Michael has hit both kings. Mikhail Petrov takes the lead. Badaker on the verge of elimination. He's trying the walkway maneuver, it's risky. So Andrew Badaker and Martin Finger will actually share 96th place prize money. Adam Levy, who went out in 98th place, is the true bubble. Thank you, thank you. As we lost two players from separate tables, My Michael and Martin are gonna split 96th place. He means Andrew and Martin. Can you share? Yeah, I'll Blinds 2,000, 4,000 with a 500 ante. Action at the feature table is on Seathful Hansen. Pretty hand. He raises with Queen Jack suited. From under the gun plus one, he makes it 10,500. Action folded around to Leo Fernandez. Ace Jack. Yes, I am Leo. I am contemplating what to do. He's in late position. And he's going to play aggressively from late position. Three betting to 23K. And this is actually kind of turning his hand into a bluff. 
Joseph Bacar in the small blind decides to fold as does Lucas Berglund in the big blind action back on Hansen pretty good hand to take a flop with well, those blue chips are worth 5,000 each the purples are 500 so that is a four bet to 46 and a half thousand is there anyone at this table who doesn't want to turn his hand into a bluff Leo folds the best hand. Hansen's play makes a little more sense than Leo's near the bubble, but it's risky. He did not have the stack to four bet fold. Hansen up to 156,000. 185 remain in the main event. We're two away from making the money, and we're hearing there's actually a player who didn't even show up this morning who's slowly being blinded out. Well, that's awkward. Mario Adnolfi had a deep run in this tournament in season eight. Facing a raise from Christoph de Mulder. What's he looking at? Picture of the Pope? Stall much. Play does tend to slow down around the bubble. Wonder why that is. Adonolfi folds. De Mulder wins the pot uncontested. Let's check on some of the short stacks, some of the players in the danger zone. Danger zone! Victor said he wasn't interested in a min cash. He may get his wish. Cedric Moreland has just over two big blinds. Alexandru Dilianu has just shy of three big blinds. I think he's fine. He's got like four chips. That's four times the required minimum for chip and a chair. On the chip side, he's only got one chair to my knowledge. Let's get across the room to table five. Simeon Nidanov has moved all in. Action on Danny Kavane. He calls. All in call on five. Andler gets out of the way. I am no body language expert, but I think Kovane's ahead. I'm the boy, yes. Nidanov is a four to one underdog. Bigger dog now. Needs a nine on the river. Doesn't get it. But he is not the bubble boy. He's the bubble bubble boy. We are down to 184. Stop the clock. We've reached the bubble. Okay, attention, main event. We have 184 players, and we're going to continue hand to hand. Dealers, if you have an all-in call, you must stop and call the floor, and the cards must stay face down. Let me take a photo first, okay? Hello Kitty, quo. Okay. Tag it Survivor. <laughs> Hashtag Survivor. So we're going to play one hand. We'll wait for play to conclude at every other table in the room before we start the next one. Berglund, raising from the cutoff with nine deuce of diamonds. Trying to go all thief here on the bubble. Seven five of diamonds for Passy Sormanen in the big blind. And this will be kind of a loose defend. He calls. And what a flop for Burglar. Nine nine deuce for a full house. Flops him deed. Sormanen checks. And folds before Burglar's had a chance to bet. <laughs> One trick. Luckily, no diamonds. I had seven, eight diamonds. So, three diamonds. Ooh. Seven, eight of diamonds, huh? <laughs> Lol. Remember, the next player to bust walks away with nothing. Yeah, I was thinking that this table would be the one who, who was like breaking the ball. Like, like, yeah, that's it. There's always next hand. Over to the secondary feature table. There's been an under-the-gun raise from Albert de Hare. Petra Herskova has called with ace ten of hearts. Thomas Buttshammer in the cutoff has deuces, and he is counting out a re-raise. He three bets to 27 and a half thousand. Bizarre choice of hand to three bet, but you know what I always say? When you want to burst the bubble, best to use a butts hammer. Action folded back around to Herskova. She calls. She's out of position, and she's got a hand that could be dominated to a three bet. Heads up to the flop, which is king eight six with two hearts. Nut flush draw for her Escova. Plus one over card to the board. She's actually a statistical favorite. Since it looks like Butts Hammer was turning his hand into a bluff no matter what, a bet here is expected. He continues for 24,500. She quickly calls. Certainly can't fold the nut flush draw. Turn card. 
is red, but it's a diamond, not a heart. Periscopa checks a second time. Maybe giving a little something away with that check, by the way. Lance Hammer not slowing down. He bets again 44,500. Now Petra's getting four to one, so again, she will not be folding. These are two big stacks going to battle on the bubble. A needlessly huge pot with two super deep stacks, thanks to the Butts Hammer 3-bet. Roscova calls again, 212,000 in the middle. The river is the king of spades, pairing the board. More like Petra Bricksova. She checks again. Butts Hammer checks behind. Who would have thought that deuces would be good here? She might literally blast out of her seat when she sees this. Ah, you got Butts Hammered. But to be honest, I kind of agree with her on the play. He's now up to 386,000. And we're just waiting for play to conclude at all of the outer tables. Essential players, as soon as the last lap is finished, I will close the book. We have three tables been over the call. Three? What happens if more than one person goes broke again? They will chop 183rd place prize money. Luka, let's see your cards first, please. Luka shows two nines for a pair of nines. Cedric shows queen seven for a pair of queens. You have to show it's not all in yet. And Nils shows ace five. Our all-in player has doubled up. We don't lose a player on table number 12. Look at them all congratulating him. We're all in this together. Not really, but still it's cool. Well, as Toby heads across the room, don't forget there is a player who didn't show up today and is now close to being blinded out. Yeah, but do the players know that? Jan has ace king, so Russell is our all-in player with a pair of jacks. Let's see the flop, please. We've got a race here. Classic race, made even more classicer by the bubble. There's a jack! The flop is jack, 10, 9, Russell is it top trips. There is a possibility of a middle pin for a straight. Next card is an 8, it's 8, 9, 10, jack. Russell is still ahead in the final card, please. Oh, and they can chop too. Final cards are 4, we do not lose a player on table number 21. Two all-ins, two survivals. We're going to go to our next table where we have an all-in call. It's Stevich's table. Can we go three for three? <laughs> Mihails is our all-in player, but there is no flop. Mihails has ace of spades, queen of clubs, and Alexander is our player with a pair of nines. Another race. The flop is two, three, king, and the turn. The turn is a jack. The final card, please. It's a ten. Gets there. Rivers are straight. He's the real champ. The real one. Oh, yeah. the wins this tournament. <laughs> Thanks, guys. This is the sweetest bubble ever. Three players were all in. No one busted. Hello? No. Ten on River. <laughs> There's the anti-railing you come to expect on a gigantic bubble. Alexandru Delianu now has just two and a half big blinds. Yeah, but what about that guy that's not here? Well, they've called the tournament director over because he's still absent and he's about to be put all in in the big blinds. He did not show up the entire day. Yeah, they, the whole day? Yeah. Okay. But he did not come. Okay. Easy money. Maybe it's just pocket change. Attention, main event players, we have a very unique situation over here. We have one player who hasn't showed up today and is going to be all in on the big blind. So he will be eliminated in this hand. If we lose two players from that table, the player with the biggest chips is going to take the highest finishing position. If we lose two or three or four players from different tables, the money will be split between you guys and the player on the big blind. Hope the guy's all right. I can only think of a few reasons I'd voluntarily miss day three of a tournament. All of them involve twins. Well, the absent player has been identified as Nuno de Camara from Portugal. He was due to start day three with a 21 big blind stack. No one has any idea where he is or why he's not here. So once again, just to be sure. If I bust out right now, this hand, share the money with the the, I share the money with the bubble. Okay. Well, that's 
Stop the clock in the main event, please. Stop the clock in the main event. We do have an all-in. Okay, we're over on table number five. Stefan is our all-in player. Let's see your cast, please, Stefan. Oh, Stefan two aces, ace that's of why. Diamonds, ace of clubs. And Christopher has three of hearts, six of clubs. Let's see the club, please. We're all rooting for the aces here, right? Club is two, eight, ten, two of hearts, eight of diamonds, ten of diamonds. Stefan is ahead with a pair of aces. Turn card, please. The turn's a queen and a final card, please. Aces double up. Okay, we do lose a player. You are all in the money. Congratulations. You've just cashed at EPT Barcelona. Weirdest bubble ever. We win. It's all ready now. We win, Friday. Congratulations, everyone. For the first time ever, literally everyone in the room is happy. <laughs> now that we got to the money, we can fight. <laughs> you got to fight for your right to min cash. A strange situation. We've no idea why Nuno didn't show up for day three, but he is our bubble boy, while Alex Stevich has cashed on his return to EPT Barcelona. Two of the players at our feature table, Neil Farrell and Kimo Koko, are still riding high. Let's get back to the action at our feature table where we are going to sweat with a Demulda. Christoph of that ilk. Action has been folded to Neil Farrell in the small blind. Oh man, blind on blind hands are tough. I'm rooting for a walk. Dang it. Not going to happen. Farrell raises to 17,000. What do we got? Demolder's hand is Ace Five. Yep, gotta call it this. No need for a three bet because we're usually either a little ahead or real far behind. He loves his TV time, this boy. He's been on TV since he was like six. He calls for an additional eleven thousand. We go to the flop. Which is ace high. That's top bear for us. Farrell sets continue. He bets 20,000. And we have to be expecting he's going to continue his entire range here, which is super wide, small or big. So, of course, we have to call this. There's the call. 81,000 in the pot. Another ace on the turn. Trips now for Demolda. I'm starting to like this more and more. Hmm, that was a weird little stutter step. Wonder what that means. Farrell bets again, 35k. Whatever, doesn't matter. We're not folding. It's kind of hard for us to be beat, but what makes me worried is it's also kind of hard for him to be bluffing. <coughs> Excuse me. Must be allergic to betting in the trips. <coughs> Demolda calls a second time. Nine of hearts on the river. This is not a good card for us. I am really hoping he doesn't bet again. There are now three hearts on the board. The flop flush draw got there. Where's your coughing now, Neil? Where's your coughing now? He empties the clip. He fires the third barrel. 78,000. Oh, with that heart on the river, I think we gotta fold our hand. Neil could certainly have hearts in his triple barrel range, and pretty much no worse hands would bet here for value. What do you have? You'd have to have pure air for us to call. Matthias knows what Kristoff has because they have creepy twin telepathy. Ooh. Full house? You have a full house? It's a good hand. <laughs> Wait a minute. Maybe that'll give Kristoff the info he was looking for. I don't think this is a bluff. Insane bluff. I agree. This bluff would be fairly insane. Are you gonna rub it in my face? Hey, I would never do that. I'm a gentleman. What? <laughs> Demolder faults. Neil Farrell also <laughs> had Ace Five the same ah, hand. Ah, that's terrible. My ball just dropped under the table. <laughs> <laughs> What did you fold? I, kinda, I thought I knew what you had, and then I wasn't sure. 
Might have been value betting the worst hand then. <laughs> That's probably not what you want to hear. <laughs> Welcome back to Cyprus and the 2023 PokerStars European Poker Tour. Day two of the main event continues here at the Merit Royal Diamond Hotel, Casino and Spa. Fourth level of the day, about to get underway, and a new lineup of players coming to our main feature table. As we come back from break, getting ever close to the money, let's look at the biggest stacks right now. We do have a member of Team Pro. Top of the table right now, Tonka. Parker Talbot is chip leader with 218 players remaining. World Series of Poker finalist Kenny Hallett also inside the top five. 218 players returning from break. 199 will get paid. That means the bubble is looming. It's James Hartigan alongside Nick Walsh. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for having me. There is a chance, Nick, that we get to the bubble during this level. We have got Parker on the main stage, finally going to get some Tonka time at the feature table. He has got a very tough opponent, Juan Pardo, a.k.a. Malacca style. Here is a guy who we saw a couple of weeks ago win the WCOOP Super High Roller. He comes here to Cyprus and he wins the EPT Super High Roller. This guy wins Super High Rollers for breakfast. Yeah, he is a legend. He's been a legend for many years. And sure enough, we're back and it uh, looks like Parker's looking pretty handsome up there 226 big blinds putting in the work can he battle with the best and make it all the way to that million bucks up top there he is a fine um, specimen of humanity say, it's not even it's not even me who will bust you it's someone else okay i think uh i think it will be this young man there is Juan Pardo, who plays online as a Malacca style. Blinds are 1,500, 3,000 with a 3K big blind ante. Level 14 of the main event is underway. Bubble on screen, 200 is when we go hand for hand. The bubble will burst when we get to 199, and we will be in the money. Price pool here at EPT Cyprus of $6.4 million, generated by the 1,320 total entries. I actually did tell my mom. Tell my relatives. I told my mom I was going on the feature table. She, she makes me tell her every time. Hello, Mrs. Tonka. I'm at the feature table with Parker Talbot, and she's like, oh my god. And then she freaked out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get an autograph. I said, sure. First hand of the level, first hand of the first session. Juan Pardo gets a walk. Yeah. That's what I said. You see what That's the kind of respect that he commands. <laughs> and for good reason. I'm so excited to get some Tonka time, though, guys. I know a lot of you out there were waiting for this moment. Let's see if he can do us proud. Teeth are gleaming. Sweater. He's what? His teeth are gleaming. Of course. Yeah. You're blinding me with your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was reading Wrighton and I thought like this doesn't make sense, like what kind of brand is this? Wrighton? Uh, yeah, yeah. We've got one online qualifier at the table, Gerard Carbo from Spain. Mm -hmm. Qualified on PokerStars ES for 250 euros. Doesn't actually play that much online. <laughs> He's been playing a decent amount of live events this year and has cashed a couple of EPT mains this year, made the money in Paris and in Barcelona, accruing 195k in live earnings. Tonka, who's opened here with Jack-10. And it's Eger Guven from Turkey, who's got Ace-8 of clubs. And that is a re-raise. A three bet to 18,000. Ace-Jack for the qualifier, Carbo. Faults. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Doesn't want to get tangled up here at three bet. Looking pretty strong. And Guven is like, you got to put me on the feature. I'm going to play. It's a given that he will win this pot with his little Thor card protector. That's a good looking Thor. It's a cameraman. Get the focus right. Oh, yeah, that's a rep. That looks like a, like a comic Thor. 
like a, like a comic book grade Thor, not not just the official Marvel Universe Thor. <laughs> At least like four as well. But there's the, I can't even see a screen though from here. I'm blind. So my prediction, Nick, and it's nothing more than a gut instinct, is that the action will slow during this level. I think it might take a while to get down from 218 to 200 before we go hand for hand. I would be surprised. It's not beyond the realms of possibility. I would be surprised to see the bubble burst this side of the dinner break. Yeah, that would make sense, I think, both in slowing down, but also that we would get there that quickly. We're going to have to see some pretty sick coolers to get there that quick, in my opinion. I tend to agree with you here. And of course, average, still pretty chunky. The average stack is in excess of 50 big blinds right now, 181,000 with 218 remaining from the starting field of 1,320. We've had a raise from Oleg Ustinovich. Juan Pardo thinking of doing something funky on the button with King Four of Spades. And he has decided to re-raise, three betting to 21,000. I think this is pretty much some straight GTO tings. Harold Sama in the small blind with pocket tens. All in. Then all in. Decides this is a spot to rejam for his last 89K. And this is likely to be met by folds from the other players. Whittling him down. Don't dislike Juan Pardo taking that spot there, though, Nick, and talking to Sam Grafton last night. And obviously, Sam was with us on stream for the super high roller that Juan won during WQ. He was at the table with Juan when he won the super high roller here in Barcelona. Said he is playing phenomenally well right now. Phenomenally well. Sure, absolutely. And of course, what a treat to get a little bit of uh, Sam Grafton in the booth. Guys out there really playing those stakes, and obviously, a great communicator here on stream, too. Shout out to our boy Sam. <laughs> fellow team pro, fellow ambassador. Um, but, you know, he's just a legend. He's got so much experience, and, you know, he's taught so many of the others to yeah. uh, to become the best. Uh, Pardo and his squad out there crushing all kinds of seriously high-stakes poker. Sam, I don't think we're going to be blessed by Sam's presence in the booth during this event. Uh, Sam had a couple of results in some high buying events, but did not progress beyond day one of the main events, so I believe is leaving Cyprus. I mean, he really should have just locked in and just done commentary for the whole for the whole stint. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, you know, no, no, no comment on work ethic yes. here. I believe there is a high stakes series about to kick off in Monte Carlo that Sam is uh, preparing for. As we see, Mr. Pardo open in the cast off with Jack 10. Round to Mario Tratu in the small blind. And now Bastian May in the big blind. Raise and take it. You really got to feel for the dealers on this extra large table, James. So much reaching involved. I know you probably, guys can't probably tell from there, but we were doing some uh, some testing on it the other the other day. Much larger than your average table and. The shorter dealers have to really stretch to go and collect the chips and uh, distribute the cards. Shout out to our fantastic EPT dealers here in Cyprus. Always sterling work. Best dealers in the business. All right, hand number 98 underway. Nice four for Ustinovich. That goes in the muck. Ace Jack suited for Juan Pardo. Back in action. Malacca style making it 7K. Tratu on the button <coughs> with King Six of Spades.
appreciate that Mario's got chips. 76 blinds at the start of this hand, but... Okay, I mean, I gave Juan Pardo credit for making a move with King 4 suited, so I guess I'll give Mario credit for trying the same from the button with King 6 of spades. Sure, absolutely. I think that this is a very reasonable combo to uh, apply some pressure to a known aggressive opponent. Look how unfazed he is. I absolutely love this from, uh, from Juan Pardo. I mean, this is relatively low stakes compared to what he's usually blasting, but uh, so interested to see how he's going to handle this. 46 big blinds behind after putting in the two, so 48 to start the hand. Um, I think probably I would be, see a lot of, I imagine we see a lot of flatting here. Yeah. I mean, because, you know, if your opponents are capable of bluffing, you're going to dominate some of those bluffs as well. Tratu thinks he wants spades. Trust me, he doesn't want spades. <laughs> There's one. There's two. Oh, no, he gets spades. Oh, now, wow. He has paired his six, but the nut flush draw for Juan Pardo. And Tratu just moves all in. <laughs> okay. Speaking of phased, even Juan is concerned. Wow. Is that all incorrect? Yeah. He announced all in. He shot for 209,000 into a pot of about 50,000. And wow. it's all into call for Pardo, who's got 125K behind. I. He's literally doing the math in his head right now. He's going, okay, what's my equity? What are the odds I'm getting? Because right now they're not great <coughs> pot odds, but he has an absolute monster draw. He does not realize that even though he is currently behind, losing to a pair of sixes, he is a statistical favorite here. I was not expecting this from Tratu. I mean, James, if he's up against, if he's up against Kings, I mean, he's just doing so well. I mean, against Ace Queen, a lot less so. Of course, not having the overcard. What monsters make this move, though? Uh, that's, well, that's exactly my point, but what I'm saying, the line is so unconventional that you have to start giving him some of those weird hands that he's not supposed to have, right? That is also not the face of a man who looks particularly comfortable. This is a very, very unconventional spot. Don't think I like the move from Chatu, but he's actually putting Pardo in a pretty weird situation. This is so far off GTO, James, that this is, you've got to really reach in. Someone's called time. Malacca style is going to be put on a clock. Oh, wow. I mean, I guess that the bubble's approaching, but if there's one person who's not going to be feeling the pressure of bubble, it's Juan Pardo. Makes a call? He does make the call. Oh, wow. It... And he's got 13 outs. Unreal stuff. Well, Juan Pardo is the at-risk player. He is currently behind, but is a statistical favorite. The only question is... Are 13 outs too many outs? Not when you run Malacca style. The turn card is an eight. 15 outs now for Juan <laughs> Pardo. <laughs> the nine ball's good now, too. Nines, jacks, kings, aces, spades. The river. Is a spade. Oh wow. Are you covers me? No, no, no. Oh. Huh? No, no, no. He has big one. Oh fuck. Tratu. <laughs> All the things he said. Never a day. I mean, it was always gonna be a cooler James, no matter how the hand played in Tratu's uh, defense, but definitely not the line I was expecting. And Juan Pardo managed to just get there. Six bucks. Huh? Six fucking bucks. Great. You've just given Juan Pardo a 100 big blind stack. The rest of the table thanks you. 
doesn't matter what what, what you do. Huh? It doesn't matter what you do, you make second laps against Nuff yeah. on River anyway. So. Yeah, exactly. So we've got it all in anyway. Yeah, 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 no matter what. Yeah, quite right. Exactly. You can question the play on the flop, but ultimately the money's boy. all going on on the river yeah. regardless. Yeah. <laughs> that was the only way I could play that. <laughs> Scary man to put all your chips in again. Only way to play it. If he's going to call. It almost came true. I almost. Almost. I almost wished you into the soft bubble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean. If he has, like, just the net flush draw without the gut shot, I mean, and without the royal, quote, like, his perceived royal draw, I mean, may maybe the, the over pot takes it down. I think, honestly, very reasonable um, <laughs> assumption, but uh, just too big of a draw to fold, I guess. But it also does raise a valid point. We were talking about trying to put bubble pressure on someone. Pick a better spot. Not Juan Pardo. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, try two now. 28 bigs. All in with fives against Ostinovich's ace-queen. Okay, just wants to bang in the full 28 from the cutoff. Again, I think I'd prefer to just see some small opens here, James. This seems, again, very unconventional. From Mario Repin, the, the Union Jack. I mean, I think we might actually see a flip here as well, gang. Ace-Queen seems like a very reasonable call, especially coming off a beat like that. Mario clearly a bit frustrated by the outcome there, as of course anyone would be. Uh, I certainly am not folding this hand in this spot. Just double-checking. Wow, big fold there from the ace queen. Okay, and Chatu just needs to take stock now. 32 bigs, perfectly playable. Obviously, I appreciate that hand against Pardo was a huge dent in his stack and a huge knock, a huge blow psychologically, but yep. steady the ship. Yeah, and I mean, you know, just remember that 28 big blinds is still a very significant number of chips when you play tournament poker, right? Yeah. Um, it feels bad to go from a big stack to a small stack, absolutely, but 28 big blinds just ripping in fives. I feel like you allow a lot of players to just play perfectly behind you, quote-unquote. I think that uh, hopefully <laughs> having chipped that up, we're going to see a little bit more post-flop, a little bit of small raising, and not putting so many big blinds at risk as we near the bubble. I mean, in terms of bubble play as well, James, let's not forget we are so close to that bubble. Imagine somebody waking up with kings behind you there when you could have already yeah. folded. 213 remain and 199 get paid. No real bubble pressure for Tonka right now, who we think is still chip leader. Not just the biggest stack at this table, biggest stack in the tournament overall. And Harold Zama opening here with ace queen, 6,500. Mega Govan in the small blind with the sailboats. Makes the call. Gerard Carbo in the big blind. Queen three of clubs calls as well. And we're going to go three way to the flop. Still ahead. And Given is going to lead for 5,500, gets two quick folds.
And that's the thing the other players are trying to say to Mario Tratu, which is, don't obsess over the flop. Don't obsess over how the hand played out. In fact, you got called there. By the river, it's all going in. Just accept that it was a cold deck situation. Just accept this stuff happens and move on. Easier said than done, granted. I mean, yeah, mental game of poker. Very, always very tricky, absolutely. And to be, to become better at poker, oh, so much of it is mental, and so much of it is to shake these moments off. Uh, let's not forget, though, Mario still got 32 bigs here. That is more than enough. Absolutely mounts. Do you know how many people would kill to have 32 big blinds at this stage in the tournament when we're just about four off the bubble? Um, 14, Nick. 14 off the bubble? I'm all for being kind of in the ballpark, but 14 and 4. My apologies. I glanced at just for just a moment. Zaba85 watching on Twitch asks, when do we stop playing? When there is only one player remaining. That's when the tournament finishes. <laughs> Thank you for your question. There are numerous breaks in between, including sleeping breaks for the players. Quick shout out to Adam McCullough in the chat. Fellow ambassador, how you doing, buddy? Adam was indeed also in this event. Unfortunately, no more. So Tonka's raised with 5-3, called by Govan on the button, called by Carbo in the small blind, and by Ostinovich in the big blind. Four-way to the flop. Ooh, hearts, which could cost Parker, because Carbo has the better flush draw. Right now, Govan is ahead with top pair. With the action check to the button, ace is bet, 8,000. I take it back, guys. Adam didn't play the main. Sorry about that, buddy. Well, I know that Adam is obviously still at the beginning of a long poker journey. Here is my sage advice. You've got to be in it to win it, <laughs> to buy a ticket. <laughs> no, that's right. He took part in the, in the 1K instead. <coughs> Uh-oh. That is a dangerous turn for Mr. Talbot. Well, Brick River, Ace is still good. <laughs> Does Tonka think he can push his opponent off a weak Ace? Definitely not outside the realms of possibility. Well, maybe he's not putting Given on an ace here because the problem is ace and nine's queen kicker. It doesn't really matter whether it's ace five, ace six, ace three, ace four. Yeah, this is getting called. Five, three of hearts, no good, funnily enough. Yeah, unfortunately for Mr. Talbot, no good. Kuvin's going to pick up this pot. Look at Tonka, giving him those extra chips there. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Skrrt, watching on YouTube. I won my first $1.10 tournament like a week ago and got second in a 220 a few days ago. Played horribly heads up, but playing the mini EPT now, and it's going pretty well. 
Of course, there are three mini EPC Cypress tournaments every day. Now, one thing I wanted to highlight when we talk about this series is it doesn't run in every market. So if you open your PokerStars app, look in the main lobby. If there is a tab that shows mini EPC Cypress, great news. It's available in your part of the world. If it's not there, chances are it isn't. But if you can play three tournaments every day, 60K in added value, power path tickets up for grabs, added to the prize pool of every single tournament, and gold power passes available in the two main events on Sunday. Yep, and if you want to try your hand winning some of those passes directly through the power pass system, it's the same thing. If you look in your client and it's at the top, it means it's available yeah. in your area. I would also add, though, that if you are in the UK, don't forget you have to opt in uh, in your challenges tab in order to get the full benefits and indeed unlock some of those free tickets you get when you play for real money. And he says the $5.50 starts in five minutes. Good luck everyone playing that event. King five suited in the small blinds. Starts the hand 68 big blinds deep here. I think that limping is cool. I think checking is also cool. So we go to a flop. King five suited, ace five. Domination situation in favor of Pardo. What do we think about these glasses, chat? I'm digging them. It's a look, and he's owning it. It's a look. It's strong, and I and I and I respect that. Okay. okay Queen of Hearts on the turn, and Ostinovich picks up the flush draw. Consequential deuce of diamonds on the river, and ace high is still the best hand. Which 11 poker says Anna Winter meets Harry Potter, which is a bit more original than all the people going, Oh, it's Harry Potter. <laughs> yep, bonus points to Ch 11. Well, if anyone is capable of making an ace-high hero call, it's Juan Pardo. Yeah, a bit of a weird line here. I mean, if you're checking the king five to this point, in most cases you're doing so because you think that there's a good chance you have showdown with the king high, right? And then you have the draw on the turn, you have king high with the draw. I don't really think I like the bluff here. I feel like you're just going to win a bunch. With the king high, in many cases, a lot of those ace combos that have you beat here with the ace high will have made a raise pre-flop or indeed possibly uh, taken a stab. But I don't think you get a deuce to fold. I don't think you get a four to fold. I don't think you get an eight to fold. But uh, in this case, does actually manage to find the ace that check back and takes it down. So nice little bet there. And well played, sir. I just prefer if they wouldn't use the F word on the table. You know what I mean? I guess so. I'm not sure. <laughs> no football. No football chat. That's uh, keep keep that in the stadiums. You know what I'm saying? Raising in the cutoff with King Three, Juan Pardo with a better King, King Jack in the small blind. Both players very deep, around the 100 big blind mark. Juan Pardo just sub 100, but the 
is just d debating whether or not to have a three bet here. And computer says yes. Adam McCola not happy with that policy, Nick, obviously. <laughs> Adam, primary job is to discuss what's happening with all the soccer squadrons. <laughs> I gave him the same feedback about the streamer showdown we held recently on the Twitch channel. F word, mate. No F word. How is the 2023 Premier Division looking, Adam? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Raksha in the chat as well. Absolutely blown him up. Roasted by Raksha. New game show. Pardo's three bet gets a fold from Zama in the big blind. And Carbo gives up his king three. Man, it's got to be so tough to be on these tables with such talented players. The pressure applied constantly. You know when you first started playing poker, James, and you're like, hey, we're all learning here. Should we all just call and take a flop and we'll go from there? That long, that's, it's not where we're at anymore. Do you remember the Borussia Dortmund Malaga? Didn't they score like two goals like in the very last minute? Yes, yeah. the, to, uh, with the bar, uh, of the line, the two goals. Oh yeah, I do remember that. <laughs> yeah, the same thing with Real Madrid. <laughs> Malaga seems to be open for like crazy games. Yeah. A very good team this year. <laughs> Ace nine for Guven. Raises to 6,000. Carbo, queen, 10 of clubs. An attractive hand. I don't think anyone ever misses the opportunity to three-bet queen, 10 suited James. Ever. 45-minute break after this level, is that right? Nailed it. And Parker is correct. There is a 45-minute dinner break at the end of this level. <laughs> he seems confused. What does it matter? Do you not want to eat? <laughs> Food, Tonka. Food. The stuff that you're meant to consume with liquid. I mean, Tonka and the lads raving it up last night. There's a chance he hasn't had a chance to eat anything yet, James. He needs to fuel up so he can take this tournament down. Yeah, that's never, there's never a dinner break. It's just always 20 minute levels until the end of the day. Five levels, 20 minutes. So. Not true, Parker. It's normally a 30 minute break, but we've extended it to 45 so that everyone can use the free buffet upstairs. Suited, taking it down very, very frequent three better <coughs> and successfully five. takes it down pre flop. It's better with the buffet. For what? <laughs> it's not for TV. Don't give them false information. Toby Stone requested the extended dinner break for the players. here for two levels or one level? He goes for it. Are we staying for two levels or one level? Okay, thank you. <coughs> All right, Tonka back in the mix. Love to see it. UTG opening ace queen straight into Guvin's queens. Back to 22. <clears throat> oh, wow. And May waking up with Jax in the big blinds.
looks like he's just going to bang it in, though. Really reaching for the all-in button with his 16 bigs. I mean, it feels really, really hard not to put it in here, and he does so. 16 big blinds, I think that's an easy fold and a quick snap from Queens, and that means May is going to be about 20% behind Guvin's 80. Holding. There's only two Jables left. Hey, I folded a queen if it makes you feel any better. <laughs> <laughs> Nine of hearts, no change. Still just the two jacks remaining going to the river. No improvements, and May exits the tournaments just shy of the min cash. Bastion, May depart. Thank you, sir. No, 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 that's good. Thank you, buddy. Feet open. Given there, 300, 364,500 chips now, 121 big blinds. Nice little setup. Pretty bad. I don't think they should do this. I don't think with 200 tables that there should be one one table that stays on two yeah, orbits in a row. Every, I think it should change every orbit. Yeah, I don't like it. I will complain. <laughs> the small print in your contract, pal. That's going to say, you, you got to give the people what they want. <laughs> the people want Tonka. Give the people Tonka. Big deal O'Neill in the chat saying it hurts to bust just before the break online. Is that magnified for these big live tournaments? The answer is yes, absolutely. Because you got to do the walk. You got to walk back to your hotel. You got to think about what if you just did it right. The fact that it's a larger tournament hurts because it was a bigger buy-in. It all adds up. It's all part of the mental game to shake those off. Try and get back in the game and play your best poker in another event. Try and make your trips to EPTs as profitable as possible. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're seeing this again on the button. Queen 10 off. 90,000 chips. That looks like 30 bigs. Tratu ripping 30 big blinds on the button when we're just 12 off the min cash. Tonka still playing 200 bigs. Tratu the shortest stack of the table, but a comfortable 32 big blinds. Now we are in San Division. Uh, third? The, yeah, the last, the last day are down. <laughs> it's the worst. Um, to go moment in the... To go broke or? Yeah, it's broke. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not so good. <laughs> Not so broke. <laughs> because take. Almost. 
we are second in the <laughs> All right, Ace Five suited this time. Looks like he's not going to reach for the all-in button. So blinds are 15 and 3K, 1500, 3K. There you go. That's more like it. Nice little reasonable raise from the cutoff. One big blind caller, Carbo. And the flop is Jack Jack 5. Trato flops best. 17K in the middle. You're going limping today? Hmm? You're going limp today? That's not me. <laughs> not seriously, it's not me. But I know who it is. Yeah, a little C bet and a pickup. Nice work. Oh, yeah. Hopefully, <laughs> see a little bit more of that from Trato. Less of the huge overbet jams. That really only, puts him at game. risk if a player wakes <laughs> up. It'd be such a shame to bust this close to the min cash. Are you actually, are you Spanish? Yeah. yeah. What's your team? Uh, Barcelona, but not, not too much fanatic. <laughs> okay. All right, we got a pot, guys. Pardo opens. Big blind defends. Pardo currently in front and managed to, to find the pair. Now 80% on the flop against the two over cards. Standard continue and going to take it down. And folded to Tonka, who's got ace five in the hijack. All right, Guven decides to call with the sevens in the cutoff. Mr. Pardo is out of the way, so we're going to the flop. Currently, Guven about a 70% favorite against the ace five. And board is eight, jack, queen. Quick check from the ace five off. Obviously, a board that's going to call in position there, going to hit that pretty regularly. So, Tonka down to 8% would require Barry Greenstein to win this part, unless he can push 
given off sevens at some stage. Gets checked to the river. Ace of hearts pairing the board. Yeah, it's just whether or not Parker wants to suddenly turn his hand into a bluff here. When your opponent is checking in position on two streets there, doesn't feel like they have a queen, doesn't feel like they have a jack, but often they'll turn up with pretty much exactly what you'd expect, and they're not going to find a fold given no aggression on the previous two streets. So sure enough, check, check, both players happy to take it to short now. We referenced a short while ago. And we've got the mini EPT Cypress series running online. A chance for you to play low buy-in tournaments while watching the live stream here in Cyprus. 60k in added value. Gold power pass is being given away on the final day. Welcome to the table. Of course, those gold power passes can be translated into live event buy-ins. Don't forget, we're going to be in Vegas next month as the North American Poker Tour returns. NAPT Las Vegas, running November 4th through 12th at Resorts World on the Strip, the week before the Vegas Formula One Grand Prix. Details of all of the tournaments on the schedule available in the PokerStars Live app. As we welcome the return of Mr. Joseph Stapleton. And the return of fresh underwear. Ah. The trauma of lost luggage. It happened to me when we went to the Bahamas a couple of times. It's the worst. Do you guys ever air tag? Are you big air taggers these days? I'm not big on any of the surveillance stuff. Like, I got a ring doorbell at home, but it's not hooked up to anything. Yeah. I just feel like it just makes everyone crazy, okay. tracking everything all the time. I, I, I get that, but, I mean, how many times have you lost your luggage in your lifetime, Joe? I think this might be the first time. Oh, really? The second. And oh, both so times it showed up. It's never been lost. Exactly. It it's not lost. Day. It just didn't make the flight. Okay. You know exactly where it is. Okay. And you know exactly what they need to do to get it to you. It just takes an eternity. <coughs> so I, I thought I was in the minority because I've literally never had that happen to me. I've always been very lucky in that sense. But I thought traveling more with you guys, I thought you guys would have experienced that a ton by now. And then I thought maybe there was a chance the air tags might be a good precautionary, you know, measure. So far, so good. I haven't needed air tags for anything. So, half the level still to play. 209 players remaining. That means we are 10 away from making the money in the first ever EPT Cyprus main event. All right, let's do this, my babies. I could have sworn these names were made up. <laughs> Looks like they're all real people. Holy glasses, what is going on? He Sorry, I should have prepared myself for that. We've, we've, we've already discussed it. Somebody said it was Anna Winter meets Harry Potter. That's pretty good. Which I dig, and I, I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. If, if you're watching this, I think that's a cool look. Those are two gymnast rings uh, connected with a piece of glass. 102. Ustinovich, the Razor with Jack 10. Sammer. Ace Jack suited. In. Just a call. Big blind. Mario Tratu. No thanks with the 8 2. We are going to the flop. Ace, king, queen. One heart, and that is a straight. Looks like Ustinovich. Looks like Broadway to me, baby. Flop the absolute Brazilians. And a great opportunity to get value when your opponent has a strong hand and almost no equita. You must respect my equita. <coughs> ben call. Turn card is the deuce of diamonds, so there goes zero equita now for Sammer. No chance. Excuse me, there is still chance of a, a chop here. 
You didn't know what I was about to say. I didn't have to say excuse me, but I knew in my head I was about to say something that was wrong. Samer checks. If you take the, the jack from his uh, hand, he's, it's Justinovich. This Justinovich. <laughs> The outcome would have been the same anyway. Yeah. Doesn't matter how it was played, the outcome would have been exactly the same. Sounds like he's still talking about that hand with the uh, with the flush draw. That was the only way. Yeah. The only way. I tried. Yeah. He folds. Lovely. He almost folded. Who is this here, Chad? Tratu? Yeah. So there was an encounter between Tratu and. Um, Juan Pardo, mm. he three bets pre and then like four X jams pot with uh, king high flush draw gets called by the ace high flush draw of Pardo. He, he basically flopped the royal flush draw. He also had a pair in fairness. It was king six on queen ten spades in a six. And uh, yeah, been discussing it ever since. A bit frustrated by it. I can tell. Justinovich has bet 22,000. And Samer lays it down. Wow, very disciplined. Lays down top pair, good kick, good draw to the draw to the straight to Broadway. All right, that surprised me as well. I really thought maybe we would have seen at least one more call there, but gets away from it and is correct. What the heck? Lucky River, right? Lucky River. Maybe those glasses are reflecting. The hold cards. Him calling time, did we it? We got a walk off here, it looks like. Papo MC, Busto MC. Shove King 10 into Queens. Didn't get there. Eliminated at the hands of Anton Vig at our previous feature table. Seems like he's the only person really still thinking about this hand and everyone else is being polite. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I love a chatty Brit. Love a chatty Brit. All right, Sam are in the mix. Giving you a wolf, but I would have given you a wolf. It wasn't a good one. Barton had to spoil it for us again. Raise and take it for Harold Sammer. What's up, Growler? Good to see you. Always a pleasure having you here on the Twitch streets. I don't want to say this is a guaranteed way to get name checked in Twitch chat or on YouTube chat. But if you <laughs> haul ass to one of my stand up shows multiple times in a year, despite living several hours away, it's a good way to get name checked. Oh, yeah. She was there uh, the last show where the guy said he was going to come back and kill everyone <laughs> and drink my blood. <laughs> I think the first time I met the Growler was uh, Lex Live. Luton Lex Live? The one that was in London, I believe. L London Lex Live at Luton? <laughs> DJ VS says, man, I'd be there if you were funny. <laughs> no, you're not there and you're not here either. You bet. Whoops. <laughs> Yeah, man. You're not even going to get to see people come to my defense and say that I am funny. King, Jack, a deuce, two spades. Pair of jacks. It's a goofin. What 
Mahoney888 wants us to know that Luton is not in London, gents. I understand that, but it is alliterative. Just like you're about to be banned. Bye bye. What's that tattoo? What's that tattoo? Win the poop. What's the history behind that? Huh? What's the history behind that? It was like my favorite show growing up. I had like a little bear that I fucking kept until I was like 11 years old. Yeah. I watched Winnie the Pooh like all day every what? day. What? Like, I did yeah, not know this about Parker. Years old or some shit. I was a big fan. There's. Yeah. What? Okay, so Tonka has a Winnie the Pooh tattoo, and apparently it wasn't from a lost bet. Uh, apparently it was just because he was a, it was a mass, he says he was a massive fan. I don't think you ever stopped being a massive fan of Winnie Pooh. Winnie the Pooh, if you're well, it's in the public domain now, at least Winnie the Pooh. So, yeah, because they got that Winnie the Pooh horror movie. <laughs> Today, did you, you ever actually the, give that a go? Uh, I did not. No, HDHS, neither did I. Probably. HDHS? Um, uh, tension deficit syndrome? Oh, ADHD. ADHD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Close. Yeah. Very close. Very close. <laughs> Hello, guys. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I'm not really sure the tournament you staff should be announcing it, but he seems <laughs> fine with it. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not that close. Just a normal iron. So we've officially doubled the number of qu online qualifiers at this table. Robert Kazan. You're from Romania. Describes himself as an amateur player, an IT guy who just loves watching and playing poker from time to time. Best ever live cash is 7,500 euros. 20K in live earnings. He's about to be a dad. So he's trying to win a little extra baby money. Hey, 2023, it sounds like he's having a great year. It does sound like a great year. Made it here from starting at $27. And is about to cash this poker tournament. We're officially in the red. We're five away from the stone bubble. Yeah, if he was looking to make some baby money, this is the first step. Although it looks like he's already going to be in the mix here, Joe. Ace king for Kazan. <sighs> Man, you just hate it. You just hate it right now, I think. I mean, sorry. I would hate it. <laughs> I was like, Joe, I feel like you're uh, I feel like you're somewhat biased. In it. Kazan <laughs> might love it. Kazan might be like, ace king, fist pump on the bubble. Let's go. Three bet. Makes it 20,000. Oh no, Joey! Joey, the commentator's I curse. Told the you, the commentator's curse. You did this to Kazan. Someone waking up with kings when you have ace king. It's a goovin. It's a goovin. Yikes! So goovin here, 118 big blinds. Got Kazan well covered, only 36 big blinds behind after that 3-bet to 20K. Pratu's just going to get out of the way here every time, but there's going to be a 4-bet. And the thing is, Nick, that, and again, look, we had the information that he's an online qualifier, but now everyone at the table knows that this is a first-time EPT player. He may read into that, oh, I'm being attacked now, right? I'm being attacked. Oh, everyone at the table knows that I'm, uh, ooh, Pratu. not discarding his hand right away. I mean, this close to the bubble, a misstep here, Joe, would be very, very unfortunate. And I think in a cold format pot, this has got to be a snap fold. It's just got to be a snap fold in a cold format pot. If he shoves here, I'll get a tattoo tattoo. Oh, booked. <laughs> Guarantee not guaranteed. There we go. We got rid of okay, it. Okay, nice work. Gets out of the way. Oh, Kazan. Oh, Robert. Oh, buddy. I told you. 
CJ, I, th I think I told you. I think you're right. The, the announcing thing is definitely a weird meta now. There's a weird meta game associated with the fact that he was announced as a, the first ever EPT he's played. Thing is, I think if Guven had a three, a cold four bat bluff here, it's probably a lot more likely to be in the big blind as opposed to the small blind. Because mm -hmm. you know that interesting. You're, you know, oh, okay. you, you know, you know that you're closing the action, right? So if he has Ace Five of Hearts in the big blind here. Probably a lot more likely to cold four bet bluff than if he's in the small blind with another player to act behind. But like how you you can't get away from you can't fold this. I'm, I I just I fold Ace King and then you're gonna call 45 and have like what a third pot left behind. I'm not I'm not suggesting that that you should fold Ace King here. You probably shouldn't. But it's uh, the cold four bet of course is one of the strongest moves you can make really. Yeah. Brief flop is you know in a in a conventional sense. And and therefore, you know, these these are these are the moments when you do have opportunities to fold some really really big hands. He's gonna lay it down. Oh <sighs> yes. <sighs> he's gonna he's gonna watch that back. He's gonna watch that oh, back. And he's gonna Robert. be very proud of that fold. Year of Romania. Year of Romania. That was a good one. Oh my goodness. Uh, you have the ladies. Who? Who does that? Who can? I mean, you're just getting run over if you make that fall. But by God, it was the right time. Now, if it was a raise and there was a three bet and you laid it down, I feel like that would be a sign of weakness. But given yeah. the nature of the cold four bet in this spot, I think that that was a very nice fold. And obviously, this close to the money, I, I, I applaud it. Nice work, sir. And I'd love to see our qualifiers going yes. deep and getting some cash too. Well, I'm gonna see anyway. Glow and bud. What a says what a hero slash coward. <laughs> what a fold. All right. Juan Pardo, aka Malacca style, under the gun, ace queen offsuit. I think so, but I also saw them say that there was yeah. some technical difficulties that they said that there is, so I don't know if it's uh, longer than that or something, but it should be half an hour now. It is one hour today. That's the first time I've ever seen Tonka <laughs> sort of not right about something. Why it's cold? He wasn't wrong either, but... Goovin. In with 9 8 suited, and now it's Gustinovich's turn with Ace King off suit. These guys are Omega deep here, Joe. Gustinovich, 76 bigs. Pardo, 101. Maybe not mega deep, but of course, super deep when you think about how shallow we tend to play uh, tournament poker on average. Obviously, a nice luxury blind level here. Nice slow levels here in Cyprus to go along with that main event title. So this was a raise under the gun, a call on the button, and here is the re-raise to 33,000. This is a re-raise that to me says, I have ace king, let's not see a flop. Well, yeah, given the nature of the under the gun open, and the fact there is a player behind. I don't think this is a super conventionally three bet squeezed bluff spot. Right. So I think you can make some tighter folds, and there you go. Just the man getting out of the way. He goes, This is probably just strong. Let's just play this face up. Yep. Yeah, just giving him a lot of credit there, and I think you probably should do. Now, if he opened from the cutoff and there was a call on the button, all of a sudden you're in Squeeze City, right? That happens a lot more. All of a sudden, Ace Queen goes up in value because there's a lot more combinations that can profitably three bet and does so against a wider opening range. Sam are under the gun with Ace Queen now. Can we get Ace Queen in another spot besides under the gun? <laughs> Years of trauma, Joey. Really showing on you, buddy. So ridiculous. <laughs> it's like, I know it's under the gun, but it's probably going to be the best hand. Just kidding. Ace-king again. Another ace-king late position. Ace-king in the small blind. Ace-king on the button. 
Yeah, new strat. Just just fold all the early positions. It doesn't matter what you have. Strat two thinking, the bubble, boss. The bubble. How's that for an old reference? Anyone out there old enough for that one? Strat two. Something Island, that's right, we GCV killer. Hervey Salaches, also close. <laughs> Not the love boat, but you're close. People closer than I thought they would be. Fantasy, no one's gotten it completely yet. Okay, Party Man on YouTube, first one to get the first. Fantasy Island. The person I was quoting was a James Bond Villain sidekick, yes. Abstract feel. Lost Island. <laughs> so many people. <sighs> so many people's getting a piece of it. Try two. There is, boss. There is. Strat 2 starts the hand with about 31 bigs. Hervé Villachez played a character named Tattoo, who had announced the arrival of the plane to Fantasy Island by exclaiming, De plane, boss. De plane. <laughs> it's very specific. Very specific. Strat 2. Yeah, I think. Um, just out of interest, guys, I do think that the Queen Jack open here is already a little bit on the wider side, even if we were early stages. Mm -hmm. But when you're this close to the bubble, I would argue this is probably just a mandatory fold every time. You're just putting yourself in a very awkward situation when you're relatively short stacked to the rest of the table, and we are just four from the money. <clears throat> Nick, if you're not opening two paint cards and 30 big blinds on the bubble, what are you even doing here? <laughs> Scared money don't make money. Don't you start, Jeff. Don't give him the keys to the Lambo. You can't be giving him the keys. No, I would agree with that statement. I always agree with the chat pros. That's not to say he can't win this pot. Wish him the best of luck, of course. I just think in terms of risk reward, you just don't want to be in there with a hand that already struggles to perform from this position when you're playing full ring poker. Where are you from, then, if you were so curious about Spanish football? Hmm? Where, were you, where are you from? Trap two with the queen high float against the cutoff call. The I, mean, I mean, why not? When the cutoff calls here, he's going to have a ton of king x. Um, Don't think this is a board where queen high is necessarily loving any action. Now, does Trap two want to try and turn his hand into a bluff? Actually, I studied English at university. You sound German, but not that. And Carbo probably knowing now he has a value bet opportunity. I'll take it as a compliment. Thank you very much. Try two with that quick check, not really indicating that he's going to have trips here. So the ace jack is probably going to be doing very well indeed. When you get home, I guess I need to get one. Yeah. Probably knows he can get some value from some weaker ace combos as well. And 33k in the middle decides to bet. 11,000. Wait, wait, what? That was a queen high call on the river? It appears to have been a queen high call on the river. What a hero. But the queen high call was for the chop, right? Kings and trades with an ace? Yeah. Sure. So calling it, for it a... It was not a chop. Calling for a chop on the river there takes him down to 22 big blinds. We're just... A few positions away from the money, you got to be concerned about sneaking in that bubble before you start making some hero calls like that. I think that's great advertisement for not being bluffed in the future. 204 players remain, by the way. Four from the exact bubble. Uh, so a water, please. Huh? No, 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 thank you. Yes. 
<laughs> Your man, Glowing Bud, just bagged a bounty in the mini EPT. Well done. Congrats. We just... I guess it's not a mystery bounty online, is it? Do they have those yet? On Poker Stars? Hashtag soon. Hashtag soon. I love it. 203 in the field now, Joey. Did you hear the bubble? Oh, 203. Indeed. Thank you. How come it's okay for Carbo to raise Queen Jack? Uh, I'm setting you up here. Go ahead. Because you got 115 big blinds, and you can apply pressure to the shorter stacks that are sweating the pay jump. And also, something about the HJ, I'm guessing. Oh, yeah, of course. Also, he was in the hijack as well, of course. Position much later does much better when everyone's folded. <laughs> okay. It'll scream there, Joe. Yeah, that cheers from the boot camp event. I guess they're heads up now. That's for a EPT prog package, so yep. big deal. Yeah, 10K package. That's the women's boot camp over there battling it out. You're on there with Mark, right? Poker power. Yeah, that's right. We're making jokes. We're making fun of him like that he like is quite emo back at that. Oh, my God. He was yeah. super emo back then. You should see some other pictures. I have a bunch. Yeah, fuck. That's a long time ago. That was like 12, 13 years ago or something. 12 years ago. That picture made today in the spam channel, you can't imagine. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Well, let's. <laughs> yeah, Mark's English is good, right? 202 uh, yeah, because in the field right me. now. Actually, really? Yeah. For two years when we were like 21. Yeah, back, back then, yeah. Yeah, and, and I like, he wanted me to teach him like, like correct five him all the time. Rate. Like every, every single mistake he made. So like, it was just like, yeah. 24-7 English lesson. Six, Here's a pretty hand, Joe. Well, I mean, while berating him. Like Maybe the prettiest king-queen suited. <laughs> Arguably. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> Can I change my answer? You are on it today, Joe. You keep calling these ones in. Samer's not going to get in trouble. What about the blinds? What say you? The dealers in the main event, please finish the hand your own. Stop oh. dealing. If you have an all-in call, keep the cards face down and freeze the action. Once again, dealers uh, in the main event. You know what this means. Finish hand your own. Stop dealing. If you have an all-in call, please freeze the action. Thank you. It's the hand-for-hand hand job. H for H. H for H. I beg your pardon. So, given here, guys, 125 bigs. Wow. Besides, he doesn't want to get mixed up, but, you know, look, wow. we are H for H, guys. There is a difference, a very significant difference between oh. a min cash and zero dollars. Huge difference. I've said it before and I'll say it again. There are very few players who do not care about the min cash, no matter how big of a baller you think they are. Uh, well, into into I won two ROI is ROI. Don't care how rich you are. 8,325 reasons to just chill for a minute and let the bubble burst before you start doing anything crazy. My wife is pregnant. I just got married. I'm playing the main event. I'm playing the. Life is good. Isn't? Yeah. Uh, right. Here's a target for my back. Right nah. <laughs> 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 What's that? Chase and Kuhn, right? Sorry. Chase and Kuhn during the WSOP, right? He was, his, his, uh, his, no, his, no, it was Sean D, wasn't it? It was Sean D. No. Oh, no. Both it might them. have been Kuhn, yeah. I think it was Chase and Kuhn, right? Well, she, she was, was getting her. She was getting her. Oh, yeah, well, he's got a file. And he's had like, yeah. Okay. I'm too rich, like, I don't. Makes sense, obviously, yeah. Hi, would you like to steal every single trip for me on the bubble? Thanks. Hey, look. I Joe, get it, by the way. I, 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 I think it's very it's wholesome, and I love it. And, you know, the joie de vivre, you know what I'm saying? 
When you're nervous, too, by the way, which I've been at the poker table many times, confessing like that makes you feel better. Yeah, yeah. Like, there, there's, it's like they call it labeling, right? Where you, where you kind of talk about specifically the anxiety and it seems to help. Correct. Under these certain, you go, oh, I'm not even that good of a player anyway, am I, guys? You know, so, you know, that kind of thing. I'm the fish, tee hee, and then you just kind of feel a little bit better yeah. confessing that. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm happy just to fold to the min cash, you know, in case he, he feels anxious about the fact he folded ace king there. It might have been incorrect, but actually was a super genius fold, as we could see. I get it. She's only 10, 11 weeks, something like this. But we are probably praying for the same, yeah. So, hand for hand has started. I want a little girl, to be honest with you. You want a girl? Yeah. I think it's easier to be raised. Yeah. Us. And also, like, this crucial moment coming up, like, she's, yeah. like, showing you, like, five possible <coughs> boyfriends, and you can, like, this yeah, mafia, yeah. like, guy, like, and, like... <laughs> okay, so, we are not on the stone bubble right now. Looks like we're gonna go hand so for hand, two boy, from the money. Like, so, we'll take two eliminations before the bubble bursts. Hello. <laughs> Stealing her heart. So, Joey, when you, when you were playing in Vegas this, uh, this last time, that yeah. Event, how was the how was the table service in terms of trying to you know get a drink? Because I hear mixed reviews about that. Some I think I was in a good section. Yeah, I think uh, that's what I've heard. Sometimes it's dry; you can't get a drink to save your life. I was in a good section, but also for once I was taking it seriously and I wasn't really drinking, and I was trying to like keep my my energy drinks low because I tend to get a little jittery, a little anxious, and a little anxiety. Yeah. I, I meant just like service and yeah, I meant soft drinks too, not necessarily. Oh, you mean dealers also? Sure. Well, yeah, just, just no, not like de dealers, but also like just going, I really need some water right now. And there was somebody there to actually help you out and like, you know, grab you, grab you. Uh, it was all pretty decent where I was considering the size and the scope of the main event. Yeah, I was in a good section. One thing I can't complain about. I just wanted to give a shout out to the wait staff here in Cyprus as well. Everyone's been really, really happy with the service from table to table. And in general, in the Good casino, they seem very, 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 very supportive. Thank you. Looks like we're going to get the next hand going. Okay, players, we're two or one remaining. We're going to continue hand for hand. One, nine, nine is the money. So once again, two or one remaining. We are going to continue hand for hand. Just going to remind you about some rules during the hand for hand process. We need you to stay in your seats, players. We really do need you to stay in your seats. I will be announcing the action, so you won't miss anything. So once again, stay in your seats, please. If you have an all-in call, you must keep your cards face down. Please don't turn them over. Um, dealers, obviously, you have to wait for me to announce next time. If we lose two players from the same table, the player who entered the hand with the most chips will take the highest finishing position. If we lose two players from separate tables, any prize money will be split. Okay, so two or one remaining. Good luck, everybody. Dealers, one hand, please. All right, you heard the man. You heard how it all works. And we are dealing. I, will, I was going to say, Nick, that I am particularly impressed with the staff here uh, for one reason alone which is that this is an all-inclusive resort. And I know that Europe isn't huge on tipping in general, yeah. but in a place where no one is carrying any cash, really, they yeah. are kind of just hustling yeah. because it's their job. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Not just in the, 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 the room here, but also in the, in the resort in general. Yeah. Uh, this is quickly becoming probably one of my favorite stops. I have major guilt. Um, I'm a person that will tip You're on a big every tipper. drink, whatever, yeah. yeah. And so just to be like, thanks, and walk away from the bar without leaving anything feels odd to me. Yeah, no, I'm with you. And like you said, they're hustling so hard, it actually makes me want to try and figure out how to get some cash out of the wall, even though I kind of didn't really plan on doing it at all. Um, you know, just paying everything with card is so normal these days. Yeah. All right, Yustinovich is going to get a little... Add a line here on the bubble. I guess we're going to figure out who the, the bubble aggressors are going to be. But he is going to end up tangling with the biggest stack at the table, Parker Talbot, who not only is a threat now, but is a threat when he has way fewer chips than this. Both players flop a flush draw. Parker is going to be in big, big trouble should that club appear. Oh man, this is unless it's the eight of clubs, which yeah. uh, would be pretty awesome. 
the Ada clubs would be pretty sick, but we've seen a couple of these spots, guys. We've had no shortage of hands on the feature table so far today and all the sessions we've covered. Parker's going to go absolutely nowhere with the gut shot here. Uh, gut shot straight flush draw, the street flash. <coughs> That is a pretty boring turn card, luckily, for Tonka. Yeah, I mean, of course, don't forget, he can just hit the Ocho that's not the club as well. That would work, too. Right. But in terms of clubs, yeah, that's the only one that's going to help him here. I mean, jacks and nines are good at this point as well. I think I would really dig a second barrel here, and I'd like to go quite chunky as well. You can probably make it, like, close to 30K, maybe even more. Really maximize folds from 7x, 10x, maybe some straight draws like 8, 9, maybe some straight draws like straight draws like Queen Jack. Seven, eight, All right, so not quite as big, but close to pot. I'm digging that. I think that's uh, still a good size to really put pressure on those combos I described. And uh, well, Parker is in a bit of a weird one now because he has so much equity on average here. For the most part, if he hits a club or he hits the 8, he's going to be good against tons of Ustinovich's range. <laughs> All right, we're going to the river. And that river is six of hearts. So King High will be good at showdown, should we get to showdown. Now, the only thing that I think Parker can do here, and I'm not, I don't think he will, is try and represent that 8-9 straight that he's blocking with the 9 of clubs. Oh, sure. I think for the most part, it's just a check and a give up, though. It's a very tall tale to sell at this stage. King High is going to take it down. <laughs> it's a good, maybe a at right around a hundred big blinds now. Who do we have out here? Kenny Haller. Looks like he's about to cash. I see some production team lined up over there. Yeah, of me all. Looks like a player who's already got a trophy this week is on the verge of cashing here in the main event. And Kit Ahuja. Who's your daddy? You see, uh, who's your daddy? Took down the Eureka main event here. Yep. Huge field. Also final tabled the Estrellas event that we just covered in Barcelona this year. Huge field. How do you do it? How do you do that? Back to back massive fields. <laughs> This hand is Johan Schultz and Michael Molinar. Molinar has bet 30,000. Johan, with the decision, the board is queen, is king, queen, seven, six, deuce. At least a couple of clubs. I 
remember seeing Johan in an uncomfortable position like this before. That face is very familiar. But I feel like we haven't seen him for a while. Who is Lord Bari in real life? Is the person in Twitch chat all the time actually in this event? It's me, yes. That's him, Joe. He's in the hand. Which one? Molinar? Thank you. That's Lord Bari. Look at that. Huh. I apologize in advance for when I don't remember that. So I'm guessing Lord Bari in chat knows what happens here, but don't say it. You're not above getting banned, let me tell you. Now the stare down. Now to look away. I'd be so afraid to, oh, hmm, to make any sort of movement, fearing that I'd get my opponent to do the other thing. Second bow. And Johan folds his hand. Nice little pick up there for Lord Barry. Cool to see everybody on Twitch cheering along, a regular viewer. Must have some hands still in action or we would be dealing again everywhere. Aha! I think you. Shinigami on YouTube asks, where's the graphic teams? There are no graphics for anything but the main feature table. The only table playing with RFID. Anything else we catch is just from what any other viewer would catch. Any other rail bird. Yep, any onlooker observer. Carbo getting a little freaky under the gun with the Sam Grafton, 10-9 suited. No way, it's the Sam Grafton. You got to play in all positions, 355.5K as well. He's got 118 bigs. Come on, Joe. Eh, it's still, I don't think, mandatory on the bubble. I mean, <laughs> try to. Now you're Montenegro? Now in Montenegro. In Budva. All in it for you. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's insane how, uh, how empty it is when there are no tourists. Yeah, it's insane. It's nine. Ah. Actually, But you I think I win. Right, because uh, when I learn, I could have been I the bubble show. I learned Dutch. Yeah. Quick hand at the feature table. Let's not paint that car, guys. Back out to the field now. Don't, don't call for it. Yeah. He was, he was distracting me because he was like laughing, like strangely, and I didn't like get what it was about. So it would, it would have been like super funny if you were German, for instance, and like say Eastern Europe. I wanted to rap first. Or if you were Spanish or so. But he felt like was far off. Let's see, we do have an all-in on table four. Tournament life was at risk there. Pedro Marques. All-in, but no call yet. 
That kind of looks like a Markish from the back with the triangle. See Nicholas Schwede at this table. EPT champion. That is a Markish. What's the other Markish? There's Pedro, and there's the PT Fisherman, who is Andre, Andre Markish. Andre Markish. Okay, so that didn't get called. <laughs> I thought it was Andre. I was reaching for it, wanted to double check, but not to be confused with Andres Namath. No. Pro beers. Correct. in the sky. <laughs> Trying to figure out what else is happening out there. So the tables on the other side of the walkway there, those are also main event tables. And our jib arm is long, but it's not that long. You know what I'm talking about. Long, but not freakishly long. It's not Guinness World Record long. It's, it's like above average. Above but, average. It's like above yeah. average, but like you know, gets the job done. But I mean, come on. It's nothing to be embarrassed of. It doesn't need to go all the way across the room. That would be kind of unpleasant, really. I think. If it did, just be dangerous, really. Yeah. In this kind of a setting. Cumbersome. That's right, Dr. Wink and Peen. And it is quite cold in there. Yeah, you're right, Sabla. Ooh, hold on. All right. What's happening? Yep, I see some action way over there. Oh, and we're on it. Table 13, board is Jack 10, 4, 5. Seat 2 is Hubert Osinski. Against seat 5, Tom Kunza. Looks like. Well, we know that Osinski is the player in position, and it looks like is the player with the decision. Bet. And bets probably all in with a stack that amount gets the quick fold. Yeah. Hubert gets. The fold from Kunza. We move on. What else you got, eye in the sky? <laughs> Nothing going on there. Something going on here. We've got a showdown. Just in time, I see a table tap coming from Pascal Voss in C5. But I think, yep, this pot is getting shipped to Omar Lakdari in seat one. It's like a mild warning for Omar. The rules are a little bit different on the bubble as far as when to expose your right. hand, when to show it showdown. Now, yeah. they were the last table in play, and I think that was just a quick little, hey, you happen to be the last table in play, but if you weren't, we want you to hold off on the showdowns. Yeah. Yeah, you got to be careful here because, of course, that information can 
drastically alter the way that others might decide to play at this stage of, uh, of a very large field tournament and a very critical stage of this tournament indeed. Poor Kazan. Ooh, is going to open Queen 10. Regardless if we are on the bubble or not. So, Kazan did get everyone the speech. I think they would expect him to be opening a little tighter than this, given the speech he gave. And luckily, Carbo has a hand he could maybe. Chips, maybe not. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, again, uh, positioning here is slightly different from the criticism we're hearing about the Queen Jack being under the gun. Of course. But I'm, I'm with you, Joe. I still think that it's actually not the most ridiculous. Just let's play it safe. Let's find that main cash, especially as a qualifier. Your return on investment is so much greater than somebody that's bought directly into this tournament, right? Winning 8K as a qualifier is a huge difference between winning 8K when you've invested 5K to enter the tournament. And this is worst case scenario here. Not a flat call with King Deuce, not a fold with King Deuce, but a three bet. Like two tables be here for 40% of the day. Like it's with this many people left, there should be something. But it's a good opportunity for practice the mindfulness. For to practice your what? That mindfulness. Your focus. Yeah, focus. <laughs> Not me, I'm just tilting and losing. Oh, with the guys, normal people. <laughs> I just don't see what you could possibly do here if you're Kazan, except for stop opening Queen 10. This is where that confession, I think, comes back to bite you a little bit. Players are going to know how to discern that information. Discern? No. Process? No. Utilize. Utilize that information you gave them. Yep. And uh, this is exactly the kind of spot you just want to try and avoid. So much additional pressure. What a great play from Carbo, though. Really, really shows awareness of the circumstances in the situation. Yep. Turning that king blocker into Le Bluff. Feels pretty fantastic. So Kazan now 31 big blinds. The only player shorter, Mar Mar uh, Mario, excuse me, trot two as we go back to the field. Try and catch as much of this action as we can. And it looks like we do have a hand in progress. Table one, we're going to check in on right here, seat three, the player just put chips in. That is Mikan Yusupov playing against seat six, which is Thomas Santerna. The board is five, ten, seven, nine, Jack. Santerna shoves. Yusupov lets out an immediate groan. So we do have a four to the straight board. An eight makes a straight. Too many cameras. I don't like it. King Queen also makes a straight. I think what he's trying to say is that he's got two pair. I somehow don't believe you. He's trying to figure out if his opponent might overplay an overpair where he's still got him beat in a spot where he should kind of only have two pair plus, perhaps. I 
I beat Ace King. Yeah, well, a, a lot beats Ace King. <laughs> No, he no. says. All right, makes the fold. Folds. And Centurn shows an eight. Did have the straight. I already on the turn. I should have shot the flop. I made a mistake. <laughs> I was thinking about it. Oh, we got some cheers from the boot camp greedy. event. I wanted to make more money. I was like, oh, I'll replay so Boot camp is being played there far right, right by our clock. Sorry, by our field counter, excuse me. You can see a couple uh, cameras over there. That I don't want to get into. Because normally in merit, it's not allowed, normally. But EPT, I think it's fine. That's the reason I didn't want to say anything. In merit tournament, it's that thing. They should call it the Butte Camp event because that prize is a Butte. No, no, I'm just saying now you get 250. This one we have there. Yeah, yeah. You're top for the Please. Get your 500, guys. Players running back to their seats. <laughs> Sam around the gun plus one folds King Trey suited. Let's fold it around to Tratu. Nine eight time. He's, he's moving. He's moving the stack. He's he's a, that was a stressful moment for me, too. <laughs> All right. Okay. Right. The folds. Folds to the blinds. What say you, Gerard Carbo? 6 4 off suit. <clears throat> 12,000? Oh, and he's raising into the snowmen's. Both players quite deep here, though. I think calling is pretty reasonable here at this stack dev. Especially at this stage in the tournament. Does decide just to call. Especially when you're covered. Yeah, I mean, just generally speaking, so Carbo's got 117, Ustinovich got 93 bigs. It's hard to do that many big ones in a pot at this stage. <coughs> just got a little grin on his face, like, you'd be surprised how easy it is for me. It <laughs> no, 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 no. I do, I do not disagree with you. I don't want to be the guy that's like, well, but. Um, <laughs> but every once in a while, we just see this completely unnecessary confrontation on the bubble. <laughs> no, no, no. I think you're thinking about online, Joe. You never see that stuff live. Never see it live. Yeah. You stand it with an easy call on this <coughs> continuation bet. And this board gets more and more gross for pocket eights. I do feel like the king is kind of a natural continue, though. I don't think uh, it really is. You could probably roll a dice and decide, but like. With six high? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the, you can continue repping the ace. <laughs> Obviously, you're going to get some more tens to fold, some more fives to fold. <laughs> Depending on Ustinovich's sort of uh, pedigree and his experience. Against the right opponent, I think barreling the king is a completely reasonable way to, to proceed here as uh, just as a pure bluff. No equity bluff, but I think at this stage in the tournament, both players very willing just to slow it down and not take any unnecessary risks. <coughs> uh, eights do get to get to showdown. That's a nice <coughs> feeling. 
What is going on? Can someone get this dude a lozenge? Uh oh. This time we're at table Sweetie and Sweetie has cards. I see an all in triangle. There's a face we recognize. Now we do have an all-in and call on another table. Okay. I think. I don't know if Sweetie's in the tank or has already made the call. My, his, his, his body language says to me that he has made the call. So now we've got to wait to see what happens on all the other tables before they run this table. So this table's on pause. Zakharov versus Shweedy. <laughs> Guess we got some time to handle this question from Mer Style, who says, Stapes, are you performing in Vegas during the NEPT? It was briefly discussed. The live events team did ask me if I wanted to do something. The problem is we couldn't find any space at Resorts World, and uh, we discussed maybe doing one off-site, and the problem is we got too much going on in APT as it is, and uh, as much as I want to do it, it's hard for me to say to the hardworking live production team, hey, guys, I'm taking the night off to go do comedy, and uh, probably none of you can come. So... I think we're probably not doing it on this stop, but the live events team here at uh, Poker Stars has been real into it lately. Hopefully, we'll figure out a way to make it happen at a future stop on the EPT or the next NAPT. Maybe a private show, Joe? Private dancer? <laughs> dancer for money? I've done a private show a couple of times, and uh, <laughs> one of them went really well. One of them went really, really well. A guy named Dan Sparger, actually, who's a big uh, big guy in the community in Las Vegas, hired me to do his wife's birthday once, or maybe it was his anniversary. And it went really well. We did it in his room at the Aria. The only thing that went wrong was that security shut us down during my headline set <laughs> because I brought a speaker system into a uh, hotel room, which they weren't that happy about. I mean, you know, Joe, if, uh, if the people want a good laugh, maybe we'll just put you into a tournament. <laughs> am I right? <laughs> am I? He's, he's not wrong. He's, he's not wrong. I jest, I jest. <laughs> Thanks for the love, Pie Face. Sorry, user 1542. Yeah, it, it would make sense for me to do a show there, but it being our first NAPT in over a decade, I don't want to throw this at them as well. There's enough stuff to get off the ground and to make happen. I just don't want to add more pressure to everyone else. Yeah, it's going to be pretty action-packed as it is, right? We're getting, cramming a lot into those days, and I expect a pretty significant turnout for the old NAPT action, too. Let's hope so, yeah. we got to get the word out there about the NAPT, by the way. You yeah. know, this all kind of came together a little bit later than usual yeah. for you know one of our stops, especially one as big as we're hoping this will be. Absolutely right. So if you guys are in the area, check out the dates. Consider coming to join us. I will be in attendance as well, Joey. Very good. And, um, yeah, we'll be calling the action. Uh, might even get a chance to look at a cash table if you guys want to come and play some cards with me. That would be nice. Oh. Boot camp. Screams of jubilation. All right, so there is a hand developing on table 16. So we know we have an all-in and call on table four. The clock's been stopped.
Ken Miller asking Stapes, will there be ways to satellite into the NAPT from Pennsylvania? Yes, I believe there will. For, for all of the legal U.S. markets, there's going to be ways to satellite. And they might even be going right now. I don't know if you have access to the client. Yeah, just a couple of reminders there. Once again, etiquette at this stage, gang. Don't talk about what's going on. And don't discuss it in multi-way pods, as always. But also, for the most part, just don't talk about what you have, which would indicate the strength of your position under these circumstances. Got to try and keep all that under wraps so we have a nice fair bubble. All right, here we go. This is table 16, and it looks like we've got seat one and seat two. Two. Uh, many of our players, two or one remaining. We have two all in calls. So I'm going to go announce them table by table. Seat one is Axel Egan. Seat two is Raul Gallego. So at the moment, we're on table 16. We already have a full board. We have Axel and Raul. Axel is our all in player. Let's turn the cards over here. Sorry, wait a second. Yeah. All right. All right, once again, Axel has their own play. We're just going to turn the cards over and announce the winner. Let's see your cards, please, guys. Turn them over. Raul shows his hand first. Oh, it's a flush, flush, yeah. Raul. Okay, Axel has ace flush and wins the hand, so we are still two or one remaining. Raul's bluffing, We're missed the straight draw, ran into a flush. Four, where we have another rolling call. Okay, now we're, oh, look at the, the swath of people headed over to table four. This is Shweedy versus Zakharov. This is an all-in pre-flop. Zakharov, the blonde, Dimitri, filming his potential exit. Oh, it's the Nicholas sickest and six. classicest of races. Dimitri with two queens is our all-in player. Let's see the flop, please. Queens at risk. Flop is four king ace. Oh, four, four king ace. <laughs> Always a four king ace when you have pocket queens. Oh, four king ace. Turn card, please. Turn is a jack. Oh. You're not so upset about the four king ace if a 10 hits the river. Final card, please. River. Oh, I saw a lot of pips there, but not enough. We're 200 remaining. We're going to break a table. So we're going to break the table. And we're going to continue. So a little bit of rebalancing, Joey. So a table's going to break, but I think we're going on a break. Not immediately, but I think we're going to do one more hand and then have dinner break, right? Yep, seems like we're about that time. Two minutes, 56 on the clock. Yep. Right. Man, that's going to be quite a rush on the buffet. We'll probably end it with two hands because if one table finishes before the clock gets to zero, they have to play the hand at that level. There you go. There's probably going to be two hands. We'll probably go break. It'd be lovely if it's the last in the second. 
straight from Toby's mouth. Maybe two hands. Lots of players out there anticipating the opportunity to get the min cash. And then, of course, we have the ever-present post-bubble bust-out bonanza. Yeah, could I mean, the, uh, the bubble could still burst before the dinner break. Just need to lose one player. Yes, Primal D on YouTube. It says, so they use the money from the players as the prize. That is correct. That's where the prize pool comes from. Everyone paid $5,300 to enter. Some money is taken out for various fees. I mean, you got to pay the world's greatest dealers somehow. Correct. And what's left gets redistributed as prize money. Only 199 players will get a piece of that prize money. The further you go, the bigger the piece. By the way, Juan, you were uh, the fourth person to uh, talk to me about the nickname. <laughs> you are in the you can check out all your players in the right leash. You have eight players per table. What's the nickname? Yeah, I want to know more about that. Have you seen that um, Fancy B short? Fancy B short, YouTube short? Fancy B short, what do you say? Yeah, he was like... My English is short one. He was like hero calling with King Nine against Fancy B, who bluff shoved King Queen. Oh, long time ago. Man. No, it's <laughs> a couple of weeks ago. A couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago. Oh, I don't remember. Yeah, Fancy B was bluffing. Yeah. And the other guy called. All right, dealers. And Fancy B was winning. <laughs> Once again, players, 200 men, and this is the Guild of Honor. Or something, huh? What? Chick Oh, is 200 evenly know. divisible by 8? The guy checked behind flop. Fancy be bluff turn. Mm. Mm. Off board, 10. 8 times 10 is 80. 8 times another 10, 10 is 160. So. Yes, and then another 5 makes 40. 200. Right, so hand for hand, so I'm play pure bubble in case you guys didn't hear it directly from Toby Stone's mouth. The Stone Bubble with tournament director Toby Stone. Brought to you by Toby Stone. Six rows, seven thousand, five seven Carbo opening the button. Oh, yeah. this is one oh, part of. I don't think so. <laughs> I was just. He's I was trying just, to make a nest there now. I was just casually looking in that direction. You were like fighting against like. <laughs> That's right. The age would die. Is that Malacca style? The Lex villain. You got it. Heads up to the flop. Pardo out flops Woo! Carbo. Like cheer for us like that. It's the battle of the Dobo. The Bow Doe. Mr. Solo Dolo. Carbo continues. Base high. The gut shot to the nuts. Pardo. Not folding a 10. Five of spades on the turn. Pardo checks to the aggressor again. We see a little pot control here sometimes, a little check back, a little. In men of players, we will be playing one more hand, so please don't go away from your table. You will be playing one more hand. Okay, so this hand. Make sure all the hands finish, and then one more it's hand. Building. No paw control. I'm very tilted. Carbo <laughs> gonna try to get it done with the DB, the double barrel. The second bar. Like they just really want the bubble to burst, I guess. But, yeah. I don't know about fours. Eight 
They want the tables. They need the tables. I feel like that decision was made based purely on the fact that one hand was finished before the clock ran out, so they're going to run one more. Of course, having the bubble burst before the dinner break would be great, but I do not believe that's the reason why they decided to play one more hand, as yeah. we heard to Toby say. Yeah, I would agree. That's, that makes a lot of sense. Deuce of Diamonds on the river. Pardo is 10. Very, very good. I beg your pardo. We'll be finishing the day here. Well, we will be. <laughs> Harold Sammer, Robert Kazan, Mario Tretsu, that's Don Parker. I definitely trust you, and also you're going to make it. So. Former announcer for Saturday Night Live. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, check, check, and Malaka Styles takes down another pot. One more hand before the dinner break. Never forget you. I mean, I think we're going to have to start calling Juan Pardo the Don Pardo. From Don, Don Pardo, sure. Guy never loses. Your host, Danny Glover, and musical guest, The Spin Doctors. I want to hear more of your voice acting. Uh, yeah, you don't, you don't. I just did one in my room. <laughs> I just did one in my room for a teledoc company where I was playing a fever monster. Remind me when when we're when we have a little bit of time again to to ask you about Barry. You watched Barry, didn't you? The, the Love TV Barry. series. Yeah, Barry is fantastic. There was so much about Barry and the sort of uh, the vibes of LA that I wanted to I kind of with you. hate things that are about acting in LA. Like I think it's like not that clever, but it was still so good. Yeah. I I, I couldn't, despite my rule, my general rule that it's easy. Like, it's just easy to prey on people that are aspiring in that sort of situation. Yeah, it's also easy to write what you know, and if what you know is being an actor and a writer, it's just kind of a... I got you. Okay. So like all of the action is gathered on the other side of the aisle. And we will get some coverage of that if necessary, just not on the jib, not on this camera angle you're seeing. I do see the camera setting up there. A little more. A little. It's got more reach than I thought. It's a grower, not a shower, I guess. Yeah, something happening over there. We. We, we, okay, it sounds like there's at least an all in. Just waiting confirmation if it's all in and a call. Yeah, it is all in. All in and a call, I believe, and the stacks are super close, so they're counting them out ahead of time. He had five K more, I guess. I guess to determine who actually gets the triangle. I see it right now in front of Daniyar Abakarov. You covered by five. The player further away, the blonde player, Ivan Tukmachev. I 
heard someone say that the other player was covered by five. Barakov is the covering player. The player on the left in the white hoodie. Covers Chukmachev by 5K, by one blue chip. Unveiling these hands momentarily, it seems. Toby standing here. There must not be much else going on. Yeah, back off, buddy. Serious business happening here. This is an all-in and call pre-flop, by the way. Okay, maybe the ladies can watch. That's fine. Everyone else, back off. Toby's not looking at you. You do not want to be on the business end of a Toby Stone stare down. Not on the stone bubble. Do we know how much is for, Joe? Did you announce that already? You announced it, I believe, but it's worth repeating. That min cash, I believe you said it was around 8,300. No, sorry, I meant the uh, the chips, uh, the, the stacks that, they're, that he has to call here. Oh. So I, I know that they have very similar stacks. That's a good question. But I don't know if we know the, the actual value here, because obviously if we're going to sweat the moment, the best we have is basically just the stacks themselves. Not sure if we have that info just now. We have the delta. Got the delta? We got the difference? It doesn't look huge for either player. Right, because the stack of blue is 100K. Yeah. I and think a stack so. of yellow is 20K, right? I think so, yeah. So we might be looking at four, 480, nearly 500K. What? Oh, totally mean. Yeah. No, that can't be I'm right. I say less. No, that can't be right. Sorry. Looks like a hundred and like 150 and 150. Sorry. So Sorry. Yeah. Only around a 300K pot. Yeah, no, that was stupid. My math is off. Hey. We all make mistakes. I'm just glad that other people do it every once in a while so I can say we all make mistakes. That's still a very big chunk of, uh, of blinds, though. I mean, we got to be looking at another cooler. Samuel Check seems to think it is 250K versus 245K. Which is much bigger. Can we see your cards, please? Turn your cards over, please. Thank you. Let's so see them. Shows two eights. Pocket. Ivan, our at risk player, shows two black aces. <sighs> So once again, Ivan with two aces is our at risk player. Just like we thought, huge cooler. Let's see the ball, please. Massive cooler, aces versus eights. Right, top is 10 ace queen. Can I say it's looking good for aces? There's no way to jinx this, right? <laughs> it's looking good for aces. Turn card, please. Turn is in three. Looking pretty good for aces. It's looking pretty good. Oh, wait, hearts? Oh, no. Oh, no. Final card, please. Oh, no. Final card. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Aces hold. So that, we're going to play one more hand, but that's going to leave. A, bear, a backer off with one chip, a 5K chip, that's fewer than two big blinds. 
The big blind is 3K. Yeah. <laughs> and it was 250K versus 255K there. So Yeah, good shout, chat. A couple people spotting that eagle eyes. I thought I that's a ton of big ones, though. Had to be less that's a ton of big ones. On in pre -flop. Yeah, on the bubble. On the pure <laughs> bubble. Okay. Break time? Break time. He didn't get the fist pump, by the way, from the, his opponent in the hand. It was from someone else. He did go across his opponent, but... All right, folks are going to be departing the room as they fold these hands. Carbo, a seven suited. Pardo in the small blind. Are we going to have another Bodo Shodo? So far, we are. Oh, and Samer in the big blind with King Queen. How do you say nay to this? Samer, the effective stack by a considerable margin. Samer starts the hand with 37 bigs. Pardo, 113. Carbo, 100. Looks like he's trying to cut out a squeeze here, Joe. The squeeze, you can see his trepidation. The squeeze is going to be pretty committing. Yeah. And I assume he finds a fold if he gets shoved on, but that's a big chunk of his stack. Yeah, and as you said, Joe, like quite visible trepidation. Maybe he just kind of was double checking his math there halfway through, but generally speaking, you kind of want to make up your mind and then make the action right rather than stop and start unless the intention was to give off some sort of a false tell carbo here in position 100 big blinds after putting in that initial raise i mean not only does a trepidation feel a little nervous but the sizing here too <laughs> Just sort of screaming, please, no action. Yeah. Gonna be obliged by Carbo. Now it's to worry about Pardo, who Pardo does, is dominated, but man, I think we saw, who was it that we saw exerting max pressure moments ago? It wasn't Pardo, was it? It was against Kazan. Uh, I, I believe it was. Um I believe it was Carbo three betting with the King Deuce. Right. Yeah, yes. right, which would make sense in their positioning here. Yes, indeed. Yeah. So it was Carbo with the wider three bet, but Pardo ain't scared. Got a really nice hand to defend here. And a nice flop to go with it. Rev, just to clarify. It says 200 paid, 200 left. No. So 200 with the red on it means that the bubble, we're on the bubble. 199 is paid. It's always one off a number that's divisible by eight. So that you're playing the stone bubble with every table full. I think Samer probably could continue here, especially with the gut shot in hand. I think if you do continue, you probably want to be... Looking at like maybe 25K, maybe even that's a bit too big, maybe even smaller.
16,000 is announced by the dealer. Pardo obviously going absolutely nowhere yeah. with this particular flop. So you're dominating pre-flop, and now you're so dicey post-flop. Yeah, I mean, I think I like Sammer's uh, approach here. Obviously, on the bubble, probably expecting a lot more folds here, but then obviously you're up against the Don himself. That Nicole seems pretty standard here. Jack on the turn would be real tricky for Pardo, but Sammer's currently in front. Seven of spades. Desire's coming seven. I think the issue is that Sammer probably doesn't have a ton of second barrels on this particular texture, Joey. Mm -hmm. So if Pardo checks and Sammer checks, there's still a chance Pardo can take it away from him even if he doesn't improve on the river. It does feel like the small blind calling range is not going to necessarily have too big a piece of this board, but lots of things that you can't really fold. Right? You have like a lot of king jacks, a lot of queen jacks. I mean, could literally have 910 suited. Absolutely. Could have 910, sure. I mean, if he's got queen jack suited, 910 suited seems like a perfectly reasonable combo to have calling through that's here too. Fair amount of tens. Plenty of tens. So Pardo going for it right here. Just going to have a little lead 15k. I think for 15k, Samuel probably still has to call, but if you look at how much of a portion of a stack he is here, Joe, it just feels sickening. Lot. feels sickening. And that's why these guys are so good, right? They have these moves that people are just not even considering, right? Like, Pardo goes, you know, it'd be really cute is if I just made it like 15k lead on the turn, just totally confuse him. I mean, that's the power of having this stack. Is it's not really a big deal whatever Samer does. Samer could also just ship here. That would be pretty gross. That would be a cool move at this point. Well, believe it or not, this hand has outlasted every other table. So <laughs> everyone else is on dinner break right now. Which means that the player we just saw with one 5K chip left did not get it in. Wow, excellent work there from Pardo. Just such a poker genius. I mean, Malaka style. What are you gonna do? He's a super high roller winner twice in the last two weeks. Like, what? He, uh, sorry, guy. It's like he's got his own style. It's like he's got his own style, and that style Malaka is Malaka. <laughs> All right, gang, same feature table. When we come back, the bubble will continue. When we come back, Parker Talbot, still a massive chip leader at this table. Maybe still for the entire main event. We'll have that information when we get back. Harold Sammer, now the shortest stack at this table. Both he and Mario Tratu skirting on the danger zone. We know that we have one player left out in the field with just two big blinds. So we're gonna go on a 44 minute dinner break, but more from the bubble, world famous bubble coverage from EPT Cyprus when we return. Pocket eights for Ben Dinelli. And I don't think it's a spoiler to say that it really can't go beyond this level. <laughs> 30 big blinds playing 24 big blinds. It is almost impossible for them to get out of this level without the money going in. Yeah, Ben Dinelli here with eights. It should have ended in the last level mathematically. <laughs> The math is broken today, Stapes. <laughs> oh boy, we got a set of eights for Ben Dinelli. Oh no. Top pair for Guerrero. I said the money was gonna have to go in. These guys have played pretty conservatively and made some tight folds. So maybe it doesn't have to go in right now. But boy, does this feel like it.
Bendinelli firing 2.5 million or 250,000, whichever way you want to. <laughs> Thank you guys. Get out there. <laughs> and Guerrero just calls. The turn is a oh, jack. Wow. Oh, no. What a setup. Oh, such a cold deck. Cold deck city. Guerrero covered. I think the only light at the end of the tunnel is we've seen a lot of miracle rivers throughout the course of this tournament. Looking for the board to pair, except for an eight. Doesn't know that yet, probably thinks he's got the best of it. Trips versus a full house. Yeah, and Bendinelli very clearly trying to set up a sizing here on the turn that can make it an easy all in on the river wants to give Guerrero a good price to continue. Does it ever go in now? Guerrero has no idea what he's up against. Makes the call. So that's 23 million in the middle. Neither player the pot size bet behind. Jimmy really needs to hit this river. Oh the board my God. pairs, but it's the eight. No. It's quad no. eight for Bendinelli. Wow. This is unbelievable. This is the coldest of decks. It doesn't get any colder than this, Maria. I'm what? glad you got a sweatshirt for this hand, oh. Nick. Insane ending, I assume. Oh my goodness. To the most insane EPT I have ever been a part of. I could. A literal bad beat jackpot hand. <laughs> Jack's full, beaten by quad eights. Guerrero bets. Oh. Wow. Oh. And Guerrero leading. Oh my God. Put yourself. Put yourself in his shoes. He's got quads and you're getting led into on this river. <laughs> it's the absolute jackpot payday. How is Bendinelli's heart just not jumping out of his skin right now? Gosh. Bendinelli has been so patient, has folded winners. Had a chance to put this to bed. Announces all in. Guerrero hasn't snap called. There's just no way. There's the call from yeah. Guerrero. It's <laughs> over. <laughs> he hasn't even tabled his hand. Table oh your hand. Bendinelli shows the quad. <laughs> Bendinelli does it. Guerrero tables the loser. And Bendinelli <laughs> swarmed by his countrymen. Somebody get that boy his mama. <laughs> <laughs> Giuliano Bendinelli is the EPT Barcelona 2022 main event champion. Absolutely unreal finish to an incredible main event. And the chance will not stop. A nice kiss from Mama Benedelli. Bendinelli. It's just not even real life, you guys. That is not a real life way to win an EPT. This is, is this real life, people? Seriously, look at what just happened. This guy came back from one big blind to be here to River Quads. And it's the first time I said what I hear my, what I heard my father cry. So it was a pretty special moment. been celebrating oh yeah of course I have been celebrating in Barcelona my hometown now and yeah I'm gonna still you know, enjoy it uh, a bit more uh, just playing the, the, the series right now online too so I will be in Cyprus too okay so uh, I will really enjoy it uh, during the end of the series and uh, and before Cyprus but yeah it's 
it's coming uh, slowly. But uh, yeah, I, I just see every day when uh, PokerStars post a, a new YouTube uh, video on uh, the best five hands, epic call, or that kind of stuff, you know, it, it, it's still a lot of emotion. We still uh, watch it with a lot of, uh, lot of surprise and a lot of, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's actually something we noticed is that you watched the last hand back while on the set. I saw you and your pals had like a little tablet on the table watching that final hand moments after it happened. How many times have you watched it since then? Uh, I watch it in French. I watch it in English too. I wanted to see all the reaction of the commentators <laughs> on every uh, all the final table, of course, like a movie, you know. Yeah. So I think I watch it like twice uh, entirely. Uh, but the some part of it, you know, the best, the highlights of that kind of stuff. I, you know, every day a bit, a bit every day. So yeah, a lot. A lot, yeah. Having made a call like that, did that make the feeling afterward a- amplified? Uh, everything was gathered together to make a, a special moment, you know. If I didn't had ace queen against king queen ag- against Carl, when you make the king on the flop and an ace on turn, that's part of the magic too, you know. That's moment that uh, that that says it, that would stay in my in my in my uh, in, for, in my brain for forever. So obviously. Uh, the the error call, the crew, the pressure, everything in the same time. It's a, like a perfect ending, you know. It's like you want to write a pitch, and you said, uh, if I would have dreamed about it, with a camera taking my time to make a big error call, and uh, being right in this moment, and you can turn back to your crew, and you are like, it's it's all for you. You are a bit lost. That's that's precious. These moments are precious, really. So yeah, a lot of emotions and. Uh, yeah, everything at the same time. I, if I would have wrote the story, I could have, uh, I could have wrote a, a better one. So yeah. Yeah. In addition to watching you look back at the final hand on the set, we also saw you make a few phone calls immediately afterwards. Who did you call to tell about your win? So it was uh, to my father and my mother. Uh, they couldn't yeah. be here, but um, if they don't know anything about poker. They were always a bit reluctant about uh, about this. Even if they know that I had good years in poker, it's something mysterious, you know, when you play online and you said you spend 10 hours behind your screen and uh, they don't understand it. And now they see the, the, the atmosphere with where, yeah. where everybody, even the family, even some friends, even some the, at the marketplace uh, everywhere is talking about it. So it feels the emotion comes to, to their... Um, um, in their heart, you can say, and it's the first time I said that I hear my, that I heard my father cry. So it was a pretty special moment. So it it felt really really special to me. Like in this whole atmosphere, someone gave me the phone, and uh, having them on the phone, I, I couldn't say anything. But I won, I won, I won. Like so, yeah, it was a really special moment to me. I I, I so what you're saying is, it's the kind of the cliched parents who like you know. Our son's a football player. Our son's an engineer. Our son's a poker player. Yeah, really, yeah. That's yeah. It, it, you you say you said it all. Like uh, I, I was, they were really proud about the, so the, the football part. And when because they were happy to, they encouraged me to continue, even if I was, I, I would have less study. They were happy about it. But I said no. I, I'm pretty good at math. I I, I will be disturbed to know to not have a, car- a big career. I was thinking, uh, you, you have 18, you don't know anything about life. You think engineer, or it's big career, or something like that. And finally, I went to engineer, and then I stopped for poker, and they were really upset. It was really hard at the beginning, you know. Uh, they even wrote me a letter to say it's. They were like, please. "Can you can you please go back to being a soccer player?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> do do whatever you want, but please, uh, come on. You you make all this study, all of this for nothing. So it's not for nothing because obviously everything in football, everything in engineer, uh, uh, in mathematics, uh, study or whatever, helped me to be uh, that good, to be uh, rational, pragmatic, take fast decisions, uh, being responsible, have no fear, blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, uh, all this way long was finally to say, okay, now you know that it was worth it. You know that it was uh, not a stupid game and I hope they will learn some uh, the, the rule of poker one day to follow my uh, my uh, my stories in uh, if I go to the different again.
Phoenix hands. Queen 10 of the offsuit variety. Good side and speaker. Raised to 1.1. Vitsiak with six, five of clubs. Uh, this is not an unreasonable three betting hand, James. I would, I, I definitely wouldn't mind a little raisy daisy here. A raisy daisy. Yeah, six five suited, eight seven suited. Definitely some frequency with three bet there at the stack depth. Vitsiak has played one time bank card so far. And you're right, Nick. He has decided to three bet with this hand. And I guess with a hand like Queen 10, with position, size and strength, you can legitimately call this re race to 4 million? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it just plays nicely in position. I don't expect to see a four bet here. That seems a bit over the top. But uh, this is a very very good situation to try and take it post flop against an aggressive opponent indeed has the best hand and that's an important part of deciding whether or not you're going to call how frequently does my opponent actually have a bluff here nine five deuce so a pair of fives for Vitsiak. Simon Stricker with two overs to the board and a backdoor straight draw Vitsiak has the pre-flop betting lead and continues into this pot of 8.4 million. Yeah, there's quite a few nice turns here for Vitsiak, as well as just having the pair right here right now. But that small continuation um, in relation to the pot means he's going to float with queen 10 here. Queen or a 10 would be very dangerous for Vitsiak. So it was 3 million the bet on the flop, called by Seidenstrecker. Vitsiak now slows down, checking this turn card. He is an 86% favorite, but it is Seidenstrecker who's going to take over the betting. Yeah, James, I don't think he's intending on check folding this turn, especially not having picked up a straight draw, right? Even if he's got it completely wrong and he is losing, he still has additional equity with that four on the turn, although it's not a ton. I anticipate a check call on this turn loads a player at Vitsiak's, le Vitsiak's level will understand that his opponent will have floats here with two of our cards, for example, like exactly like Queen 10. 3.5 million apiece. And nine of hearts on the river pairing the board. 21.4 in the million. Seidenstricker has less than pot behind. Action's been checked to him for a second time. James, I, I really think that if he pulls the trigger, he could get looked up here. The nine is actually a really, really good card to see. If you have 6-5. Counting his stack in relation to the pot. He shoves. He bluff shoves with just queen high. And Vitsiak has the best hand with a pair of fives. Wow, he can definitely call here. This is a spot that's going to be bluffed a ton given the action. If he calls, it's over. If he calls, he's an EPT champion. How much? He wow. asked for a count. I mean... It's most of Vitsiak's stack. It would be a huge mistake to make. You call here and you're wrong. It's over for you. Yeah, I've got to say, I think the nine is actually really good because the nine kind of is what you think Side Streaker might have when he when he limp calls here. This run out means there's fewer combinations of nine remaining, and I think that means he's going to have more bluffs. I really think he might make the call here. It's a huge moment. Imagine making this hero call and claiming victory here in Barcelona. The former professional footballer, the former engineer, a guy who has been mentored and coached by Antoine Saoud with a decision that if he makes the right call, will earn him an EPT title. You can do it, mate. I believe in you. I love hero calls. Playing a time bank card, thinking about this. He's trying to get a live read now, James. Seems to be looking at his opponent a ton here, trying to get some live tells. This would be a huge call. And it would be a tournament winning call. Look 
see this from the rail. Plays another time bank card. He's made the call. Oh, wow. We have a result here in oh! Barcelona. It is Simon Vitziak from France who takes the title and trophy. The additional 100,000 euros in prize money and crushes the hopes and dreams of the Brazilians. Wow, what a call. Absolutely fantastic poker. He's dominated this tournament and what a dominant call to take the trophy. He has been chip leader for so much of the late stages of this 5K main event. He closes it out. He takes it down. He'll lift the trophy. He'll claim the single biggest slice of the 10 million euro prize pool. While Zhao Seidenstricker is the runner up. And action is on Olashemi, and he is raising under the gun with Jack-10 off. Round to Patrick Antonius on the button. He folds. Sadri Seller is in the small blind. He's got King-9. And I think yesterday, towards the end of the day, we saw Shemian getting a bit liberal with his opens from early position, and... Not everybody would open from under the gun with Jack-10 off suit. And Lenini, he's got a good spot for aces. It's fun to get aces in the big blinds. It's fun to get aces in the... Any seat you're in, any position. Yes, you too. You have a six behind her. I don't mind that he's three betting right now because you usually assume that people's under the gun open range is quite strong and that you will get more value this way. But Shemion is a bit weak, but he has position. He's like, no, 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 I'm gonna see the flop. I'm gonna outplay you or or just crack out your you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh Shemion oh. flops <laughs> trips. <laughs> I hold like this check by Lenini. Hold my hair back, Maria. Not on my shoe, no. Joe. I'm, I'm gonna. Hey, there's a turn in river still. I'd like to see Lenini check call. Shemian, that's a hundred and thirty thousand. If you check call here with aces, you just keep all the worst hands in, and you also give someone like Shemian the option of barreling on later streets. Is that an ace? <laughs> Close, but no. Shemian now a 95% favorite. Lanini check called the flop for 130,000, and suddenly he elects to lead turn. Yeah, this this lead doesn't make much sense to me. I think that if you check call the flop, then you just open it up for Ole to do so many things on the <laughs> turn. The worst thing, you have nothing to protect from. Either Ole has a jack right. or eights full, or he's going to barrel off with no real equity against your hand so uh, and you're also just letting ole off the hook you're like really hoping in this spot you're really hoping he has kings very wishful thinking and based on the pre-flop action that's highly unlikely right so this is roughly half pot 250,000. And realize that Shemian has more jacks in his range than Lenini does. Because Lenini is not likely to be three betting ace jack from the big blind against Shemian's under the gun open. He's not going to three bet, you know, queen jack suited, king jack suited. He's probably just going to call those. When Ole, Ole. 
stares at yeah Lenini there. He's not actually trying to figure out if Lenini has him beat, right? No, he's just trying to figure out if he moves all in, if Lenini will call him. Indeed. Well, Lenini had 500k behind, so when Shemian shelves on him, it's a snap call from Lenini, and he's now drawing to two outs. He will need Barry Greenstein. He will need Ace on the river, or Ola Shemian will claim his scalp. Just a 5% chance of survival. Is Shemian going to get Greensteined? The river is a nine. And Ola Shemian eliminates Davor Lalini in 14th place, taking us down to 13 players. And Shemian is now closing in on the chip lead. He has got 3.7 million, close to a 150 big blind stack, while Lanini walks away with 35,500 euros. Oma Shemian, second in chips, 94 big blind stack, opens with Queen Jack from under the gun, plus three, makes it 90k, pocket fives. For Sadri Sala. That's a call. And the crinkling is getting really tilting. Oh, my bad. I was going to say, did you pass your bag of potato chips along <laughs> to somebody at the feature? I gave one to everyone. Zonas has Jack-8 in the big blind. It's a combination of the crinkling and the shuffling, actually, that bothers me. <laughs> it's, that's, it's approaching nails on a chalkboard status. Zonas calls as well, three way to the flop. And that flop <laughs> is 10, 9, 7. Zonas flops it. And Shemian has a gut shot to a better straight. do here Maria play and float yeah I mean I think the reason why it looks like your Zonis is going to lead into the pre-flop razor is because he feels like this is the kind of board that's going to get checked around a lot and leading can actually look a little bit weaker than obviously what he has it looks more like you know protecting top pairs or a pair in a straight draw doesn't really look like you flopped a joint. 150k from Yuzonis, called by Shemian. Salah gets out of the way and it's heads up to the turn. Let's see how good Shemian is running today. <laughs> He's got the swag factor. It brings a five on the turn, which would have been a set for Salah. He saved himself by not getting involved post post. Uh, Post flop. Unfortunately, he doesn't know that just yet. He's probably a little tilted at the moment. I was actually a little disappointed that uh, Honglin folded 8 6, which would be in really big trouble right now, too. Although he would have a straight plus draw. Zonas fires again 375,000 into 630,000. And this is the part where, you know, Shemian's also thinking maybe. My overcard could be good. 
based on the way the hand was played. I don't think he would often call with just a straight draw if that's all he thought his outs were. But it's the <laughs> eight that comes on the river. There's our answer to how good Shemian's running today. Shemian swag factor, eight out of 10. What in the world? Well, this is going to result in a change at the top of the leaderboard. This is just so unlucky. Twitch Don't chat's kicking fight. off. As Yazonis bets 725,000. And Shemian's sitting there with the nuts, right? Yes, and he has, you know, 3.18 million in chips total. And he's just thinking about a sizing that is going to get paid off. I don't think all in is that sizing. And Yozonas' hand looks pretty strong here. To think that Yozonas is betting three streets after this kind of run out, Shemian has to believe he has a straight. So why is all in not to not to because move? he blocks the nut straight is the problem i mean yes yozonas could have the same hand in this spot but a lot of times he could have a hand like jack 10. well how much is that two million 2.5 million You threw up earlier, Joe. I don't know why you're not throwing up now. I got nothing left in my guts, that's why. Well, of course, every decision has that 30 second timer running. are you supposed to get away from this? I mean, there's one hand that beats you. I didn't say it was, uh, if it was something he's gonna get away from, but. It's a very tough spot for Shemion to bluff, given what I said about how strong Yozonis' hand looks with the action having been what it was, but. I mean, can Shemian do this with just a jack? Just to be clear, he doesn't have to play those time bank cards. They will be deducted from him at the end of the hand. Every 30 seconds that passes, the dealer resets the clock and starts it again. He will be warned when he's on his last time bank card though, because if the clock hits zero, his hand will be dead. <laughs> Look what he was doing. Oh. It's a fold. Wow. Well, Shemian. Wow. Takes the chip lead. So Thatcherin, having just lost that hand to Paul Newey, is back in the action. Nines under the gun. Raises to 3,000. Ace King for Pedro Neves who is the effective stack here with fewer than 20 big blinds. Something tells me, uh, based on the sample size of one, that the Terran is gonna be tough to get rid of with these two nines. Yeah, Neves, not the kind of stack you really have much room to three bet and deuce. And facing a shove, I think Thatterin will probably at least strongly consider calling. It is early position, it is 20 big blinds. You're not getting a lot of pocket eights and pocket sevens shoving here, so that doesn't make it a snap call, but. It's triangle time. Neves all in for 29,500. Queen Jack for Song in the big. That's a fold. Snap called by Batterin, and we are off to the races. You should check in on your players on the table. 
What only do you achieve? Like Riz versus Drip. One of these two things has a slight mathematical advantage. Nevers is the at-risk player and the player who is slightly behind right now. But there is a king on the flop and a nine! Top pair versus a set. And Nevers down to just 3%. I could have gone to the party. <laughs> <laughs> the six on the turn has Pedro Neves drawing dead, and the PCA 2023 runner up is eliminated in the first 10 minutes of day two of the EPT Cyprus main event. And Joachim Haraldstadt who came fourth in EPT Monte Carlo this year. That was the event that was won by Mike Watson. He plays on stars as Jokey Apart. And he's a very strong mixed games player. But is he a very strong ace jack player? Let's find out. Again, a relatively light open for Newey under the gun. Nine, eight of hearts. I like this side of him. This is what Waldo does in his free time. <laughs> we finally found him. Simmer over this. Yeah, you know, I like, oh. the, like the call here. You know, you put out 3,500, 7,000 more to call. You know, these, these are the kind of hands playing at this stack depth, 70, 80 big blinds. You know, you want to be able to defend hands like this, you make a lot of nut hands, disguised hands. And even though Nui has been out flopped and Harold Stad continues to lead, has some ways to win this hand with some heart luck. Maybe uh, another eight on the turn. Perhaps a nine? Probably pretty aware of all the cards that are good for him, I would guess. You think? Yeah. But dink. Could get a free card here. Harold Stad. Probably not thrilled about betting this card, even though he's going to think his hand is, is good a decent amount of the time. You know, you're still losing to your ace queens. Flushes in there. You go. Ooh. Is a flush for Harold Stad. And it also gives Paul Newey two pair. Curious bluff. I'm a bit surprised by this bet. Um, you know, it's not a blocker bet. This is well over half pot. If your opponent does have a big diamond like an ace jack, I don't think you're going to get a fold. Tell you what, it does look strong. I mean, Harold Stats <laughs> really considering this. You know, it's 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 not just the third third nuts; it's the fourth, right? Um, you know, Nui can just have that Ace of Diamonds as well. Are you counting straight flushes too? Uh, I don't think we should have to. I'm not. I'm not saying. That. Yeah. L no, we'll let the. Th that's what that gives an opportunity for people in the chat to. Yeah, say okay, that cool. we're wrong, right? We, it makes them feel. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I like to give them a. I like to give them a little. Uh, Buzz Killington open. Oh. Harold Stad folds the flush. I'm 
Yui's reputation precedes him. He just he said, show eight, nine of hearts. <laughs> what? <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> wow. Yeah, an opportunity for a little bit of revenge here, blindy blinds. Papo is going to be calling a small blind 8-6 for the offsuit variety. Middle pair for Laner, 67% favorite now. We've got shot for La Coco. is going to come along. Seems pretty standard thus far. Cinco for Lococo would give him a really nice turn card to barrel again, but it's the King of Diamonds. Honestly, not the most ridiculous continue card for Lococo here either, though. Obviously, can still get some sevens to fold, some fours to fold, maybe some flush draws to fold. If he wants to barrel turn here at this stack depth, though, it probably needs to be quite chunky. And James, if I know, if I know Mr. Lococo here, if I know Papo, he just finds the barrel a lot of the time here, very aggressive player, and I'd like to see close to full pot, maybe even slightly over. Aggressive to the point where sometimes you wonder if he's gotten a point. <laughs> okay, I called it, 13 in the middle. That's a full pot turn continuation, and I'm here for it all day long. Really like this style. Ooh, -hoo, strong call, lots of chips in the middle now, guys. Barry Greenstein, ace on the river, does not change the outcome of this hand. All right, Papo, over bet, shove, river, easy game. Send him home. Coco is betting, and it is enough to put <laughs> Stefan Lena all in. <laughs> and now we await an awesome hero call with just a pair of sevens. Now, guys, I don't want to say I called it, but I feel like at this point we've seen enough from Papo, and I know the way he is, and I absolutely love it. I mean, he knows his opponent probably doesn't have ace-jack, probably doesn't have ace-king, probably doesn't have king-jack, probably doesn't have pocket fours or sevens. Probably doesn't have pocket jacks, probably doesn't have pocket kings. There's just lots and lots of hands that they would have represented differently here pre-flop, blind v blind, and therefore a very cool opportunity to just blast off. I think maybe a hand like A7 might be the only one that really hero calls here that plays their way their hand that way pre-flop, and even that might have put in a raise versus limp. Mort watching on Twitch says tough call to make, but kudos if he does. Kudos indeed. And a full double up. Opium thinks that oh, Papo wow. looks nervous, not nervous enough to dissuade Lena from making this hero call. What a call. Puts the chips in with just a pair of sevens and gets a full double up. I mean, guys, hats off in chat. This is unbelievable stuff. What an epic hero call. So Stefan Lena, who was in the danger zone a short while ago, is now playing close to 70 big blinds. Button raise from El Yakubi with a seven of hearts. And Mateos. Calls with a dominated hand, jack seven of spades. Ten, eight, five on the flop. Yep, you'll notice 13K already in the middle. Mateos with 15 behind. Is this an opportunity for a check raise, James? 
I don't think El Yakubi is going to have any issues getting the nut flush, on, nut flush in on the flop anyway with the one over card and nut flush draw. Yeah. Little stop and go. Snap called. Mateos in big trouble. Absolutely. El Yakubi ahead right now with ace high. Has the heart draw as well. Mateos with four outs. The Jack of Diamonds, specifically. Any of those three nines. Yep, Mateos just wanted to stop and go right here, right now, try and maximize folds on the flop, but 16%. Not looking good for our previous EPT champ. Well, that is the nut flush for El Yacoubi, and that is the elimination of Adrian Mateos. We say goodbye to a former EPT champ. The man who took down Monte Carlo in 2015 is KO'd here on day two of the first ever EPT Cyprus main event. That was then, this is now. Live coverage of day two of the PokerStars European Poker Tour from Cyprus continues. The Merit Royal Diamond Hotel, Casino and Spa is hosting this event. It is a $5,000 main event, and right now we are on the pure bubble. That's right, world famous bubble coverage continues with 200 players remaining, including the top five stacks in the tournament right now. Only 199 will cash. That means the next player out leaves with nothing. We had an extended period of hand-hand -hand play before the dinner break, Coming back from break, how long will it take before that bubble bursts? It's James Hartigan alongside Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. And Griffin Benja. Bubble, bubble, bubble. So we have got one of the chip leaders, Tonka, Parker Talbot, at the feature table, along with Juan Pardo, Malacca style, winner of a super high roller online in the last couple of weeks and a super high roller live here in Cyprus. Blinds going up to 2,000, 4,000 with a 4K right, big blind ante. 200 main, we're going to continue hand for hand. Dealers, next hand please. The blinds are 244, 244, thank you. You heard the man. The stone bubble with Toby Stone. I think Tonka's feeling happy now he's got some food in his tummy. <laughs> Maybe. So the bubble is red. And when we lose a player, that bubble will burst. And 199 players will share in the prize pool of $6.4 million. We have introduced a 25,000 chip. So once again, we have introduced a 25,000 chip into the tournament. You didn't let them take your chips, eh? You said no, don't take my chips. <laughs> For now? For now? So cute. First one, first hand winning. <coughs> Raise and take it for Kazan. Memorial on Twitch asks Is the guy who survived with one 5k chip left? Yes, he is. Dania Abarkarov left with just five thousand chips a single 5k chip after shoving eights into aces just before the break i wonder whether the legend of that hand has spread throughout the room whether the other short stacks are aware that there is someone like to be forced all in they have to be these, these players are so well informed. They know more than we do. Several hands still in progress. We are going to go over to table 13. When we checked on the tournament top five, we saw that Andre Vavilvonsky was the chip leader. He is in a hand against Toby Joyce. No, oh, Toby. My buddy Toby. Vavilonsky is in seat number one. Toby Joyce in seat six. Vavilonsky's raised to 38K. Action is on 
Toby Joyce. They're in the delightful multicolored baseball cap. So it looks like Joyce open Griffin and has been three back by Bab Babylonski out of the small blind. Yeah, and it looks like Toby Joyce is covered in this hand. So a lot of stone bubble pressure being put mm -hmm. on Toby right here. You know, what do you do with a hand like ace queen suited? And Toby reaching for chips doesn't look like he's in a folding mood. I wonder if he's. Oh. 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 The chips go back, looks back at his hand, and folds to the re race. <laughs> <clears throat> so play is concluded at table 13. We're going over to table five. The player in seat eight is all in. That is Daniel Colazar. Decision is on Nathan Tetart. And that doesn't look like a lot of chips. Looks to be about 31,000 if I'm reading it correctly. That's 2-4. It's just under eight bigs. Looks like a call. Yep, confirmation. Nathan Tatart in seat seven has called the all-in of Daniel Colazar in seat eight. So Colazar has the red triangle of death. He is the at-risk player here. Toby Stone will head over to the table. When all other hands in the room have completed, we will see the whole cards of both players, and we will run out the board, and we will see whether Daniel Colazar doubles up and survives or is eliminated on the stone bubble. The stone bubble. Smooth and controlled. <laughs> yeah, you know, speculating on what Colazar can have here. Not going to have a ton of equity, oh, which is under eight big blinds. So it should be pretty loaded here. Nathan and Daniel. Daniel is our at-risk player. Can we see a three guys? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Shows Queens Jack. versus Ace Jack. <laughs> Listen to Toby. Can we see the floor, please? Eight, five, seven. So far, so good for the at-risk player. Stand count, please. So there's a ten. Just has to fade. Barry Greenstein. Final card, please. Oh, or a nine for a straight. Final card is king. King is a safe right. card. Queen's hold, and that is going to be a double up for Daniel Colazar. We're just so buried in our phones. <laughs> Poker news, Hendon mob. <laughs> I know these websites better than I know my own grandmother. <laughs> Instagram, I wanted, I wanted X. Jack seven of hearts for Tonka opening under the gun. Now, if I was opening under the gun with a big old burly red beard. <laughs> <coughs> Few people asking about 5K chip guy, Dania Orbakarov. He is still in, he's still nursing that single 5K chip. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. This one or that one? That one. You want this one as well? Yes, please. Very nice. There is, boss. There is. Please feed me the information. Yes. No, the other one as well. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Slowly. They would have called me on a 10 9 or something. Oh, Sue. Don't worry, we have 90 minutes. So, a reminder we are hand for hand right now on the bubble, which means we will not deal another hand at the feature I table till all hands are played out at every other there, remaining you table. Know, once, yeah, you get, once you get through down, down there. <laughs> I thought I was winning the hand. On the bubble. 
Suffice to say, we have several hands still in progress. The floor keeping tabs on which tables are still going. Dre on YouTube asking, how have the blinds not taken him out? Because we're playing hand for hand, and if I believe it was a blind on blind confrontation that left him like that, yes. which means that it's going to be a long time till the blinds are back on him. He's got a whole orbit before he will be forced all in in the big blind slash big blind ante. And I'd say we're probably only four or five hands since that hand, so he's got a couple left still. Looks like we're tracking over towards table number nine, which is our former feature table, featuring a couple of former EPT champs, one of whom, Anton Wig, is involved in a pot. His hand has gone to the river. Goes check, check, showdown. Anton with queen five. Pair of queens is good. And there's the other EPT champ sat next to him. Uri Rocky Gilboa. You guys have heard of BDE. WDE. In the eighth seat over there. Wig Energy. Anton, the rig wig. There's another EPT champion at the front of our screen. Nicholas Schwiti from Lebanon sat next to Kenny Haller at that table. C4 engaged in convo. <laughs> and there is Eureka main event champion, Ankit Ahuja. Eureka. Still think it's an incredible accomplishment for Ankit to make the final table of that record-breaking Estrella's main event, that 1K in Barcelona, and then make the final table of the 1K here in Cyprus and win it. Well, who's your daddy? Guys found his Q zone. And... I think there might just be one more table left to play. In fact, I think we're good. Looks like all hands are finished. Looks like we're ready to go with the next hand. Oh, look at that. Look, look. Look, you were told, stay in your seat. What did you do? You went across the room. Now what are you having to do? Run back to your seat. Should have listened to Toby. Listen to Toby. Listen to Toby. I'm a kind of a no harm, no foul kind of person, but if you smash into some waiter or trip over a massage therapist while you're doing that and hurt somebody, in actuality, you think you're, not, you're banned. Not cool. <laughs> not cool. Do you think if, if we asked Toby, or speci more specifically, if I asked Toby to when the bubble burst, say, ladies and gentlemen, I hate to burst your bubble, but you're in the money. Think you'd do it? No. No? He wouldn't do it, would he? Malaga is my city. You'd do it for me. So Malaga is for my city. His name is Malaka style. And the style is for the sing song of Opaganga style. Yeah. So it's... <laughs> Do you know what Malaka is in Greek? How much? Back it's a stupid I think he knows. Yeah. Yeah. Gay. No, no, he's wanker. Malaka style wanker. actually came up in a conversation yeah. that I had yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Sam Grafton yeah. said, <laughs> It's coming up in this conversation, Griffin. <laughs> no, no, seriously. That's what yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fair play. In Spanish, it's pajero. Pajero, yeah. All right, you know, he's not pajero. <laughs> Domination rotation. <laughs> guys, guys, my mother is watching. <laughs> What's your language? 
Check, check. Tonka's still good. Okay, Griff, now what? No, it's just uh, Sam just said, you know, you play all these super high rollers and Malacca style is check raising you on every street. <laughs> <laughs> Very specifically called him out. <laughs> it's tough, tough, tough out there in the streets. Yeah, the silly name uh, does not match the playing style. <clears throat> More chips for Parker, who is chip leader at this particular table and a top five stack overall with 200 remaining on the pure bubble. A sloppy tower. Right there, you see that thing? Let's uh, clean it up. That's enough for a new tower, you know? That's like uh. the over there. <laughs> I still let it ride. <laughs> yeah, you would. I'm not. Well, what's someone going to say? Well, there he is. <laughs> Dania Obakarov still has 5K, five yellow chips. Still not forced all in yet. Still not in the big blind. The fact that we didn't cut the audio from that table made it sound like they're all laughing at his stack. <laughs> checking where there are still hands in progress in the room. <laughs> it looks like a crowd is building around table number eight. Do I see a triangle? Yes, I do. We have an all-in and a call at table number eight. The players in seats two and seven. It's seat two, Kim Wittendorf against seat seven, Andres Vasco. Vasco, the at-risk player. Toby Stone will make his way to the table as soon as players concluded everywhere else, and then the cards will be flipped over. All in pre flop. Toby's ready to go. Andres Vasco, the at risk player, the one with the triangle in front of him. That'd look like James Corden. Right corner. Players run table number eight. We have an all in call. Okay. Yeah. We have Kim and Not now. Andras. <laughs> Sorry, Andras geez. is our all in player. Can we see your cards, please? Kim. All in with Ace King. Shows two kings Against Andras, Kings. Our at risk player shows Ace King of Diamonds. So once again, two Kings and Ace King of Diamonds for our at risk player. So, uh, flop, please. Did someone really just say I had two aces? So you'll hear classic <laughs> bit. <laughs> flop is six, seven, seven. There's one diamond on the flop. Turn card, please. Turn diamond. Green. There's one more diamond. So there's two diamonds on the flop. Final card, please. Final card is a king. Full house right. and a KO and the bubble bursts. Everybody. You've just cashed in the EPT Cypher as well then, everybody. Congratulations. Mm. So it is Andres Vasco, who is the last player to be eliminated outside of the money. He walks away as 199 players are guaranteed a slice of the $6.4 million prize pool, including... Daniel Abakarov, who has just 5,000 chips. So this guy gets nothing. Zero. Zilch. Nada. Null. And what does James Corden get? The hatred of the internet. <laughs> Man, bubbling a tournament sucks. But being rude to Wade staff sucks more. Everyone cheering when you, when, when you leave the room, it's like uh, me at every party. Okay, so 
Time for the post-bubble bust out. Bonanza still have 80 minutes on the clock. Another one hour, 20 minutes to play today. <laughs> Seeing how many people are going to go all in now. <laughs> and uh, a lot of folks in chat mentioning a regular viewer cash in this event. Lord Barry in the money. Seven racing stars. He was raising King 5 on the bubble. I can't imagine what he has now. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of chat pros talking about uh, Ace Black. King being a drawing we'll hand. Move. Yeah. Need to fold it on the bubble. Oh, the bonanza. Yeah. Is beginning. We have the opening raise from Oleg Ustinovic, oh, and now the shove um, from Mario <laughs> Tratu. <laughs> Stenovich vaults. <laughs> Thought it was a clean. It's clear in that. She's going to definitely tell me what's now. <laughs> Second ace queen. Good vibes on this feature. Good vibes. Liar. Decent vibes. Liar. Some, okay, some banter, <laughs> as they say. No, no, ace shot. Ace shot. <laughs> I, I got to get a pair of these glasses. No, no. How, 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 yeah, where, where'd you get these? I don't know. It's my friend uh, gave me uh, on my birthday. It's like yeah. Jake Charmel from Yesterday. Seinfeld. Yes. Oh. Happy birthday. Congratulations. Thank you. Happy, happy late, late birthday, buddy. Birthday, yeah. Oh, happy Amazing. birthday, brother. Thank you very much. It's Oleg's birthday. <laughs> nice. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. We do not happy own the rights to this. Talk over this. Where's our cake? <laughs> I wonder for his birthday if he's going to be <laughs> cast in a Wes Anderson yeah. movie. See, Merritt brings like this huge like birthday cake, like with the yeah, cans, surely, with the cans lit surely on Merritt everything. has like ten cakes on standby. And then suddenly like ten boxes. Oh on my goodness! Beer. You don't have to go all in every hand. I know. <laughs> I know. It's not mandatory. I know. I know. Very large shove here from Tratow, maybe. Oleg. Not appreciating how many more now? chips he has <laughs> <No>. <laughs> after getting those shoves through. Over 25 big blinds in the middle <coughs> with two Five nines. The shove gets through. Given a lot of information, too. I know it seems like all fun and games, but he's really establishing to the table what his range is with some of these shoves. Showed the ace queen, said he had ace king that hand before, which he did and then showed the nines just there, so. I'm assuming, Joe, that uh, the viewers had something to say about yeah. Robert Kazan folding that ace-king pre-flop before the break. Yes, it was uh, mostly positive, but a few people saying that um, it was terrible. Well, let me just tell you Kazan's story. He is in for just $27. He is an online qualifier who is an amateur player. He describes himself as an IT guy. That's a shock. He just loves watching and playing poker from time to time. And his best ever cash was 7,500 euros in a Romanian event. Has just 20K in live earnings, waiting for his first child to be born, and would love a deep run so he could buy a bigger house for his family. So how do you feel now, all you people who said nasty things about Kazan? I mean, th they knew that. I, I, I did read that before. I don't know if it's going to make a difference to some of them. As some of them are just jerks. As long as he doesn't fold Ace King this time. This time, yeah. Of a loose call here with the ace nine on the button. Woo. Oh, is it? What do I know? You knew the nine was coming. It's a given. It's a given. Domination rotation. Well, the good news is he's going to be home in time for his son to be born or daughter.
How about a call and the jack of hearts on the turn, and then Kazan doesn't bust? Sign off? I like that. I mean, you could just call for a king. <laughs> yeah, that feels greedy, though. Like, the king's never going to come, right? <laughs> you were saying? <laughs> Domination restoration in favor of Kazan, the qualifier. Kazan! Dom Domination rotation revocation. You guys are all welcome, by the way. Kazan, says Jai Pai. <laughs> That's right, it is the year of Romania. Twenty thousand the bet from Given. Oliver's getting banned. Who says nine on the river, please? Co-band, you're out of here. <laughs> I, g I guess he could still fold. Could be up against the set. I think he's trying to work out how <laughs> to get it in, right? Do I move all in now, or do I wait till the river? Just makes it difficult being um, out of position. In position, it's it's it's, it's can be a pretty clear call, but there's Jack of Hearts. You called both cards, Griff. I know. Everyone's gonna think that I had spoilers, but I really didn't. Just I didn't think you had spoilers until so you just <laughs> brought it up. I believed you. <laughs> so you drew extra attention the to it. Now the, I wonder. The, the Jack of Hearts is a little suspicious. After the way I set up the king, <laughs> I mean, come on, it could have been Jack of Diamonds. Like. You were just too dumb to change the first <laughs> card you said. <laughs> I actually just forgot the order that it came in. <laughs> Twelve. You could have got it all. Wow. Man. Missed opportunity for a full double up there, but Kazan still wins the pot. Seems like Given isn't too Thor about it. No, I think he's pretty thrilled to have not given the other so no 50,000. Huh? No, one, yeah. no one? No, for now. Not for now. You have a friend? I have no friends at all. No <laughs> friends? No rich friends? Not even a poor friend. <laughs> I mean, certainly there's at least people that owe Tonka money. I need to win this. I'm probably more possibly. Yeah. <laughs> what? Much, much more chance. Yeah. Maybe five percent or something like that. <laughs> so already we've seen five, <coughs> four eliminations. Sorry, since the bubble burst. So four players have cashed out already. Expect that number to keep <laughs> dropping as the post bubble bust out Bonanza. Griffin, mm. gonna throw something out to you from Philippe on YouTube. That smooth call on the turn was horrible, TBH. Uh, agree or ban? <laughs> Both. Oh. <laughs> Classic Griffin. Give him a choice. He says both. <coughs> Well, this is the other qualifier at the table, Gerard Carbo, raising the button with 8-5 of hearts. The birthday boy's got trays. You ever hire plumbers to come over to your house, and instead of fixing your toilet, they just run over the place and yell, it's Carbo time. Ooh, I kind of like these three hands, you know? It's kind of an interesting uh, little... Uh... 
you know, standoff. It's a matchup. Pardo might get weird with it, though. No, don't get weird. Yeah, let's go. So three way to the flop. Nice complete there from Neil Brennan. <laughs> Jack Deuce Deuce. Boring. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. There's 31,000 in the pot and a lung. Do we think that Tratu is going to last the day? I'm not talking about him surviving in the tournament. I'm talking about him surviving. Yeah, uh, it's, it's going to be a close call. By the way, we can confirm... That Daniya Obakarov is still in, still more. nursing his care. last 5K. How far to the ladder? Ten? I think too many. Unless he gets a double up, triple up. Yeah, because he's going to be forced in. It's not even like he could fold for one chip and try to hang on another orbit. Ooh. I really don't like the way Astinovich played those threes there. I feel like this is a very clear turn bet against both of these ranges. And to find a fold to a, what, 20% pot bet? No, no, no. That is going to be a pot for Carbo. So we're at 195. The ladder is at 183, Joe. Mm. That's a long way to go, but if he's been taking Spraggy's course, I think he can do it. The Spraggy guide to securing a min plus cash. <laughs> I don't know how he crammed 700 pages out of that, but he did. How many min plus caches does Spraggy need to secure to offset his losses from that super high roller four years ago? Four pass. Now's your chance to redeem yourself in the eyes of Griffin Bender. <laughs> Justinovich. Uh, I've already forgiven him. Got to cut in some slack, Griffin. This is his birthday. Yeah, and with pythons like that. Oh. It's the spectacles of destiny. <laughs> How do we like this? <laughs> a three bet from the button with 7-6 seated, 24,000. Well, we like it better than a call, right? Yeah. Hey, look at this. Insta pass. Oof. <laughs> Yustinovich sounds like a made-up name from a Norm Macdonald joke. Like the uh, <laughs> moth joke. Yeah, the moth joke, yeah. His name was uh, Gregor Yustinovich. I give you credit. But you will lose. You have a skin? Somebody call you earlier. No. Water. Try again. Thank you. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty invested in this uh, house for my family narrative. That's some good lore you guys gave it's me. It's hard not to be. Yeah, that's, that was some good lore. 
Good motivation. He can build his new house right next to uh, Res Van Balea. Yeah. I just love the idea that all Romanian poker players live in the same street. At the same cul-de-sac, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Florian Duta. <laughs> uh, can you hear? I'm picking up Livia Igno's mail. He's on vacation. <laughs> Ooh, sorry. This one's addressed to Livia Igna. We're going to have to send it back. Qualifier v qualifier. Carbo's three bet flattered by Kazan. It's Carbo time. Oh no, Kazan is not called yet. Sorry. You are rich. You can invite me for the Triton. 200k. I was laughing because he was laughing. I was, uh, I was sitting next to next to a, a friend from from Norge, and he was like having a shirt on. I see him as a poor people. It was, it was like with, with oh, like uh -oh. with him on, uh, uh -oh. on the shirt like as well. Like, oh, like like, a four bet with ace jack off. What? So. We, we know what we're all thinking, right? What do you do now when Queen shove? You fold. So we, um, we went over the lore of Kazan, but one thing that I don't think that you and Griffin are privy to, James, is that when he came to the table, the floor person who walked him over announced it as his first ever EPT. So I was like, ooh. But then a few minutes later himself, he was like, Hey everyone, it's my first EBT, and I'm expecting a child very soon, and I really want to cash in this tournament. <laughs> and I was like, no, stop, don't do it. And then what do you know? He opens, he gets three bet. He opens, he gets three bet. He gets three bet by King Deuce offsuit. Yeah, I mean, I don't even think this is necessarily a bad four bet. It just happens to be, again, into the, you know, top of Carbo's range here. That guy's got Queens, Griffin. No, I know. <laughs> Listen, because of the information he gave as well, you know, I think if Carbo was looking down at Ace, Eight of Spades, might have done the same thing and folded to this four bet. The Dankage says, lol, he's folding. I mean, he, listen, he, he's almost certainly not folding, but I'm, it is also not out of the realm of possibility because of everything you just said. If you don't think that this particular <laughs> person has a four bet fold range and they only have aces and kings here, because even ace-king would probably just shove over the three bet, mm -hmm. not induce. <laughs> you, you know, your, your things do spin. I mean, he, he kind of looks scared, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> he does not. I mean, his money would be in already if he wasn't. Oh, my God. He's, he's actually going to... There's the all-in. Thank you. Finally. <laughs> and Kazan <laughs> faults. And let me punctuate this with a, with a little classic... Whoops. <laughs> oh, this is this is my favorite comment of the day. Hey, you guys. From Dave Dave Couch on uh yeah, on Twitch. Good one. Come on, shove. Three to one favorite. I mean, <laughs> what an idiot to even think about it being a three to one uh, favorite. Dude, you're three to one favorite. How can you not shove? All uh, you gotta do, uh, Carbo, uh, is look at the percentages on the screen <laughs> and use that information to your advantage. <laughs> One of these days. Here, all, all I would like out. to see if Dave Coot comment on other things. Fold. Fold. I'm not going to lie, the, 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 the patch that's kind of peeling off, but it kind of adds to his aesthetic of the, of the, the Parker Talbot, you know? Well, well you had it turned upside down, which a lot of times turning your stuff upside down is like an act of protest. So I don't know, maybe he's... Maybe he's mad about the length of dinner break or something. I think he was he's protesting the, the party being before day two. Yeah, right. <laughs> Number one, you don't have to go. Number two, you don't have to stay that late. Number three, you don't have to drink that much. Number one, that party was absolutely banging. Number two, <laughs> you would only go if you literally had no clothes. <laughs> and I forget what the third thing was. So <laughs> I skipped it. But I did tweet making it look like I went. I did see that, yeah. Yeah. 
Still a company man. Because I had a, <laughs> I did have a tiny bit of FOMO when I saw what a rave it was, but then also I was like, I probably would have ruined my life. Yeah. Like, here's, here's what happens to me at those parties. I'll walk around, have a bunch of drinks, spend five minutes trying to cheat on my girlfriend, and go, what am I doing? And then I go home, <laughs> mad at myself. <laughs> Cause I had the damage has been done. I'm too tired now. I don't feel like I'm going to go to I said the damage has been done. I'm too tired now. That bubble got me. Yeah, I could see you were falling asleep. One of these days I'm going to get you at one of those parties. <laughs> <laughs> I, had those, like, I just don't believe you could keep a secret. <laughs> Have we got this water yet? I, mean, I won't say no to some sweets or dessert from time to time, but I don't like, I don't have a sweet tooth yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. cappuccino? Sure. Yeah. Right. Pretty sure I can see some raspberry crumble in that beer. <laughs> 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 to be fair, it's from three weeks uh, ago. <laughs> things have blended in. <laughs> funny actually at, at dinner tonight I told myself I was I was just gonna eat, eat kind of light because I had a late lunch and uh, so I, I had a little bit of less dinner but then I went over to the desserts and I just I wanted to try everything but yeah. I didn't want to have a lot you know so I just I did bring like four or five desserts to my table from the buffet and um, that's why you gotta eat with people, people so you can justify people it were staring yeah so <laughs> You'll see that we've now ticked down to 190. Mm -hmm. Among the players recently eliminated, scoring them in cash, Ankit Ahuja, Eureka main event champion. Sure. Ahuja daddy. Nils Padel, Alexandra Villemur, not among the players eliminated, Dania Orbakirov. He's still in. And could justifiably ladder at this point. Stop. Sammer time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sammer all in. Tratu reshoves. The race, boss. The race. So Tratu not at risk here. It's Sama who's at risk and behind. If you want the ace to appear, you have to say the magic words. Tratu, Ferrata, Nikto. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I didn't say every single exact syllable, but basically <laughs> I said it, yeah. I watched that movie a few weeks ago. Did you really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know the, uh, let's see how this plays out. There's a jack, not an ace, but it does give on, Sama additional outs. Yeah, a girlfriend of mine hadn't seen the Evil Dead movie, so we did a whole marathon. It's great. Sammer. James is thinking of the original movie the line's from and not the one we're quoting. Uh. So excited. You're referencing Klaatu Barada Nikto from The Day the Earth Stood Still, right? No, we're referencing Klaatu Barada Nikto <laughs> from Army, Army of Earth Darkness, which is referencing The Day the Earth Stood Still. Okay. Oh, Barry Greenstein makes an appearance. The ace, boss. The ace. Tratu. All the things he said. <laughs> okay, there we go. There we go. Another tattoo reference. Do you know the Star Wars reference to that line, Griffin? Um, do you want to say it? And I'll see if I... Or I should I just know it? No, you need to know it. Um... I'll give you a clue. So oh, oh Jabba. 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 Jab, like Jabba's speaking and says stuff nope. like that? But there is a Jabba oh, connection. Guess, oh, Return of the Jedi. Yeah. Good, You're it's close the with Jabba. The guy with the worm head. <laughs> oh, the way he talks. Three yeah, of the Skiff favorite. guards uh, are Klaatu, Barada, and Nikto, which oh, is a George wow. Lucas reference to the day the Earth stood still. You know, it always astounds me how nerdy you truly are. 
Not nearly enough to have seen the Evil Dead trilogy, though. No, well, I have. I just think they're shit films. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you dropped the S bomb, too. <laughs> You know I guess you can't be a film nerd from like the 80s and 90s and not have seen those movies, even if you're not a horror fan. I am not a fan of Sam Raimi as a filmmaker. Never have been. I think he is phenomenal sometimes, but sometimes he is absolute dog. You know what the real twist of, of my marathon was? Was that she preferred Army of Darkness. Army of Darkness, I think, is, is the... I know Evil Dead 2 is everybody's favorite. I like Army of Darkness the best. It's just, so. once it leans into the, once he just... It's just so much more palatable than the other two. Like, yeah. The other two like, don't make sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. No, I'm inclined to agree, but it's uh, it's a bit blasphemous, I feel like, to some people. I've been debating forcing my significant other to watch the Evil Dead trilogy also. Just, just show her, just show I think you can just do Darkness. two in Army of Darkness. That's what we did. Okay, you skipped the first yeah. one? The first one's a tough watch. Yeah. Which James brings four of on every trip. <laughs> Whoa, okay. Ace, ace, ace. As the dealer in Casino Royale would say, trip aces. There was a minute where Sam Raimi was my favorite director. Yeah. When he did A Simple Plan, and I think it was The Gift also, right? Wasn't that him? I don't think I've seen either of those movies. Ace, ace, ace. 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 <laughs> did you have it? <laughs> and I really like the first two Spider-Mans. Yep. Meh. Speaking of two Spider-Man. Yeah, when does that come out? Uh, in, the, in the next few days, by the time. Really? Like the, oh, I'm not done with Starfield yet. Like you're ever going to be done with Starfield. When was the last time you played it? Are you invested? Are you like into it now? Uh, it's weird. I really enjoy playing it. You only say that Let's see if the sevens did. get called. <laughs> Mind reader. Oh, that sounds like King Queen. No, oh, no. no. Pocket Fours is the King Queen of low pocket pairs of twos through fours. <laughs> the new Iron Man was so underwhelming, but all my friends liked it. Did we miss a new Iron Man movie? I don't know what that, what that dude's talking about. Make a tight fold. Nah, he's coming in. Good luck, guys. Oh, oh I'm leading again. Hopefully, I'll hold up this time. <laughs> you deserve one, buddy. Yeah. I, thought, I thought they had two sevens on the flop. What? Tratu you guys. Oh, so yeah. likable. Everyone's rooting for him. Did you say you folded the seven? No. 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 Oh, 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 come on, yeah. man. Honestly, man. I thought you no. folded the seven. Because the Not only you dumped me on an ace jack, you're telling me you folded no, no, the seven. You put the seven right well. in the middle of, of, okay. the, um, of the table. You thought your hand was flop. part of the flop. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I was like, wow, two sevens already in the club. <laughs> James, were you just really on Google looking for if there was an Iron Man that we missed? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought there might be an animated movie or some nerd stuff like that. <laughs> I mean, I have been ignoring Marvel for their last seven projects. Maybe an Iron Man slipped in there. What the fuck? Come on, put a seven. Thank you. Put a five. Brick now. Joe. Sevens hold. <laughs> Tratu doubles up. That's what you're saying live on TV, but it's a reality. So I like Starfield a lot. 
Okay. But I'm still burning through most of the dialogue. I'm just like, next, 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 next. I'll read it very quickly in the subtitles. Next, 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 next. And there's so much of it that I am not at all interested in. Like mining for minerals and building relay stations on other plan on one of the other 1,200 planets in the game. No thanks. So I want to shoot stuff. Yeah. Sell my booty. Right. That's about it. So go keep doing that. You're selling your booty. Yeah, my swag. I actually saw a little TikTok or YouTube yeah. video uh, that that the last few days talking about how Starfield breaks yeah, the the number one like yeah, open world rule that, that guys. games started using where basically in sort of within 45 there. seconds of travel you need to be able like to interact with something and in Starfield you could literally traverse for like five minutes of game time without touching anything and there's a lot of like you should really use your fast travel in that game and just don't, like don't even don't think of it as a space exploration there's a ton of you get assigned a task you have to fly off to a planet to get it and then come back immediately to the other planet and it's like seven cutscenes yeah in between it no that thanks. that bit's a little annoying have you seen but the, the load first person stuff? shooter yeah. aspect of it is yeah. pretty fun you seen the load time stuff with the Remember, spider-man too it's just like instantaneous yeah. is it really yeah when oh, you switch wow. between spider-man it's just like it like zooms to them through the city it looks awesome down to 180 players now so we have had the first money jump $9,275 is now the min cash. So, did he sprag it or what? He did, right? We would have heard about it. Oh, you're both ace tonight. Yeah. I forgot that. I'm told that Obakarov did make the pay jump. Hell yeah. Spraggy just sat bolt upright in bed. Love to write, mentioning uh, being excited to see Killers of the Flower Moon, Flowers of the Killing Moon, which is it? Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. The Scorsese movie. I read something that Scorsese's original draft was over 200 pages long, and it took four hours to read it. Wow. Also, he hated the new Iron Man. <laughs> That's my favorite. Uh, that's my favorite number. Oh. And you said, "Oh, fours, is it?" Is it? And he said, "Fours." Is fours your favorite number? No. It's that's that's yeah. <laughs> that's what I said. I wasn't going for seven, seven, seven. I feel like 180 is a good number to stop for the night. <laughs> We've still got 45 minutes on the clock. Still got half this level to play. I'm still thinking about the sand. How should say? How long does it take? <laughs> what did you do to the poor boy? I won't tell. Hmm? What did you do to the poor boy? One time. <laughs> that sounds really funny. <laughs> <laughs> Give an opening here with nine at seven of diamonds. Raises to eight thousand. And just the big blind to get through. Harold Zama. <laughs> Defending his big blind with Queen Deuce of Hearts. Oh. Six deuce all diamonds. Ding 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 ding. Okay. 
You do a Cockney accent, don't you, Griffin? I'm going to give you a line. Okay. Flop the flush, governor. Flop the flush, governor. There you go. That was pretty good, Griff. Thanks. <laughs> and Sammer trying to hide that... Uh, Adam's apple. We got a little neck pulse. Got a little neck tail there. And, yeah, if you're going to call a hand like this for the big blind, sometimes you want to be able to maneuver and mix in some weird stuff like a check raise here. Of course, guys, guys, we see that Govan has a flush. But when he has, you know, the, the queen jack of hearts and c-bets here or the, you know, the king ten of clubs, sometimes it's nice to to play this as a check raise instead of a check call or a fold. So let's not be results. Okay, we can be results oriented. No, that's the only thing we keep track of in poker is results. That's true. There's no hand and mob for played the best. So there's 43 minutes left on the level, but because we're on an hour delay, what does that add up to? <laughs> Is it a whole hour that we have to wait? An hour 43. Hello. We will be done for the day in 43 minutes time. Oh, uh, we've talked a lot about uh, Mini EPT Cyprus and the fact that we're adding Power Path tickets to the prize pool of every single tournament. If you haven't come across Power Path yet, do recommend you check out the promotion. Remember, you get a 50-cent ticket every day you play a real money hand on stars, and that will get you into the first step of the power path. Work your way through the steps to win one of those coveted power passes, bronze, silver, and gold. And remember, you have the power on how to spend those passes. That's so sick. Really? You get on the first step? If you play a real money hand, any day you play that, you're going to get a free 50-cent ticket to play the first step. Is that just because of EBT Cyprus? No. That's, that's all the time. All the time. That's so sick. I'm in the wrong business. Must be power pathing. Remember, if you're in the UK, you need to opt in to get that free ticket. And as I always remind people, it is not inconceivable. Yes, it's unlikely. Inconceivable. At that first step, it's a 50 cent spin and go. Yeah. So, so you win one right away. Most of the time, it's going to spin a ticket for the next step of the path. You right. know that. But every now and then, it's going to spin a bronze, silver, or gold pass. It's not inconceivable that you could win a gold power pass for 50 cents. <laughs> it's been a while, and I don't want to put you on the spot, so if you can't answer this, I'll ask Nick tomorrow. But I saw Arlie post this clip of a guy beating him heads up in a spin and go and having the chance to win like 800 bucks or something and then spinning something again, and it came up $35. I don't know what that is. I'll ask Nick. Nick will know. We'll get to the bottom of it tomorrow. Apologies for not watching everything that Arlie puts out there. <sighs> I'm an Arlie Shaban stan. Seven Seven Spin and go max, says Tom. Not related to Power Path. Got it. Okay. Max! <laughs> Uh, two. You put that down. You put that down right now. Finally makes the fold.
James, I know you're an Xbox guy, but uh, the Spider-Man games are worth a PS5 alone, IMO. I'm not buying another games console. I don't have time to play the games I have on the Xbox without buying a second games console to play more games. Well, it's not your, it's not your fault that uh, you bought the wrong one. <laughs> you know why they call it an Xbox 360? Why? Because when you walk in, you see it, you turn around, you do a 360 and walk back out of the room. <laughs> that's a 180. That's a 180, though, I think. Shit. And that's the meme. My joke stands. That's the meme. That's the meme is getting someone to say that's a 180. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. I don't get it. I just don't know why they called it an Xbox One when they could have called it an Xbox 720. <laughs> Come on, someone, someone post the meme in the chat. Show it to him. Well, I, don't, I don't get it. <laughs> Mercedile 15 with the new comment of the day. Everyone laughs so you don't get banned. <laughs> That's why I'm laughing too. No, no, no. no it's just uh, water. Uh, Isn't there a famous actor named Kazan? Uh, we're not going to talk about it. Elia Kazan. We're gonna. That's a director. Yeah, but that's wow. what he's talking about. I I think I was talking about the the guy from the Godfather movies. What was his name? Maybe. John Kazan. <laughs> ah, we can mistake. <laughs> oh no, I gotta look up this other guy. Can you spell that for me? One Coffee was good. Hmm? Coffee was good. Not bad. More than nothing. More than nothing. I still think my favorite story about bad names for products comes from when Ford decided to employ a focus group to come up with names for its new car models. The focus group came up with two names. The first, the Ford Focus. <laughs> the second, the Ford Car. <laughs> really? Car? But spelt K-A. I think that the worst name of a product ever was the diet pill from the 1990s called AIDS. No. A-Y-D-S. AIDS. Can, I, can, can you guys catch me up on this hand quickly? Did Tratow call from the small blind? I don't think Talbot limped under the gun, right? No, Talbot raised to 8,000. It was called by Tratow so, and Kazan in the blind. So Tratow was tilt, tilted after losing that... He's been six seventy three. Nah, no, 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 no. He's, he's, he has been on tilt ever since that hand against Swan Pardo. This guy's been on tilt for the better part of five hours. Okay. I, I also don't think he's on tilt. I think he's just a fun player. Everyone knows what you mean when you say that, Joe. Kind of like you want a fun date to the prom. Yes, fun, active, same, same. <laughs> Spewy? Sure, I'll take Spewy. <laughs> Tell you what, it doesn't look like he wants to fold this straight draw. I didn't come all the way to Cyprus. To fold five high to this fuzzy Canadian. He's fuzzy and he's cuddly. <clears throat> we'll try to stare at him and just put him on exactly King Nine of Spades. I'm gonna say I want to see him shove. Wow, he calls. I like calling here because that way when you miss, you have five high. <laughs> Just six DK back. Needs to hit a deuce, four, five. He does hit the five. Sorry, pair of fives high. I don't think Tonka's going to be happy when this goes to showdown. No. One. <laughs> One. <laughs> it's not going to go to showdown. Got there. When you have that many outs, it's hard not to get there. 
I mean, should have just check called <laughs> and got the extra 60k. <laughs> you, almost got, you almost got me to fold. Almost. Almost. Oh, wow. He almost right. laid down a monster. Another seven more K, I'll fold. Darn it. <laughs> <laughs> You know Tonka's oh, watching this seven. right now on the on the oh, delay. I said seven K. <laughs> yeah, there's some trash sizing there from Tonka. Got what he deserved. Tonka's gonna punish. You know what happens with when charts for the next four hours <laughs> now? You know what happens when you size seven K not enough? You get what you deserve. <laughs> He's crunching all the numbers on that, and it turns out the solver does say 7K more. Yeah. Ah, oh, the great slammer bets all of the pogs. Why do you want to count? You've got ace four. Maybe he thinks he's got a suited ace. Ooh, be careful Ooh, of that be line there. Careful. Forward motion. Oh, it's really you're really putting it out there, buddy. I gotta say. Uh, I'm not putting. This is a little dicey. I'm not gonna lie. Where's the line to you, James? I find this count out to be capricious and arbitrary. Yes. I think intent is clear, Griffin. The intent is that he's counting his chips. I'm glad you said that. That was in my head too. But you still have to be careful. Agreed. Excuse me for wanting to build a little drama. Very difficult for it to be dramatic when someone's tanking with ace four. Damn, I should have jammed. Holy shit, my heart say, Come on, maybe See? you start stacking chips. Damn, <laughs> I should have jammed. See, See, I told you, you do realize if you jam that he can't fold <laughs> nines because he's all in. No, he doesn't. He, do, he doesn't care. Yeah. Uh, huh? What? Low pay, yeah. To bring Low it back pay. to earlier today, let him cook. I wouldn't see anywhere. You can see it later on in the stream. <laughs> You'll see it on TV. Good answer. I, I won't tell you until Poker then. Stars. TV. Good answer. Good answer. Thank you very much. <laughs> I think it's a shit answer. <laughs> 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 I was being polite. Ah, Parker's still tilted about his trash sizing. Molded to Kazan on the button. It's got the snowman's. Nom nom. You're Romania. Starts the hand with around 16, 17 bags. This is a happily get it in spot, no? This is a, you can't even induce here. Gets a fault from Tonka the in the small. Ace five suit. Ooh. He's a Romaniac. How much? 71, I think. It's actually going to be too much, I think. If you were up against a reg here, you know, if this was Sam Grafton shoving the button, I think I would be inclined to call with King Queen, but against this particular opponent, you don't think he's just blasting in with the King Jack off and the, you know, Queen 10 suited. So anyway, I start blasting. <laughs> Cavett Vora says, for how many years are we having the year of Romania? Just the one year. It's the year this, of Romania. This year. Yeah, it's always this year. 
weird. Yeah, very strange. Can't can't Romania have one year? This year, whatever the year it is. Doesn't seem like too much. Sense. Uh -oh. I'm going to kiss her. Oh. You lost. <laughs> wow. Okay, that's confidence. What was that? He said he was going to kiss what? His wife. He said, bad news, my wife is here. I'm going to kiss her. You lost. Interesting. Doesn't he know it's it's big time loser behavior to love your wife? Yeah. <laughs> so lame. <laughs> no, show the wife. Come on. Yeah, she needs to say hello. Seriously. <laughs> Under the gun open from Ustinovic, gets a fold from Tonka on the button. I heard a kiss. Oh, he's got the glasses up and everything. We have gone to the flop with Carbo defending his big blind and flopping a flush draw. Carbo, where's Nara? Huh? Where's Nara? Yeah, you like that? You like a little bacon in your pasta? Hey, buddy? You like that one? <laughs> oh, boy. Stinovich was ahead before and is a huge favorite now. Nara's on holiday with Hydrate. <laughs> oh, heartenized. It's carbo time. <laughs> Replace the uh, whole card camera with a joke hole. Just for. <laughs> and too high up in his range is the Stinovich turning that king. Gonna see the bad news. Wanted to see the 6 7. Yep. Instead, sees the flush. Carbo adds to his stack, playing just shy of 90 big blinds, well above average. Average stack right now, around 240,000. He flushed him with the joke hole. <laughs> Jason's loving the, uh, the references. He says he's yeah. not part of the Carbo team. <laughs> I like that James doesn't even bother asking what we're referencing anymore. No, because he knows now. Oh, does he? Yeah. He watched all three seasons on a plane. He had to get shushed by the flight attendant. Oh, <laughs> that's so sweet. James, that means so much to me. You have unfolding the button. James is handyman. He built the deck at Haunted House. You know, I, as much as I want to go to Haunted House, I, I, I actually I actually want to go to Aqua more. I want to see me Haunted House more than Aqua. Yeah. It's just blind v. Blind in an unraised pot. Oh, nice. Top two for Carbo. Where's our empty seat? I have no idea. We have no seats. Dennis says, you're not a part of this Carbo team. Fold. Slowly. 
Another pot for qualifier Gerard Carbo. Playing 90 bags. No, give him a walk. Slowly. <laughs> Still at the 2K, 4K blind level. 25 minutes left on the day. Look at Tonka. He looks forlorn. Yeah. Nearly made it, Parker. Not long to go now. So proud of you. Just keep going. Half the audience just woke up. Yes. Thanks for late for work. <laughs> that was my put out recycling alarm. I unfortunately <laughs> thinks it's uh, time for me to take out the recycling, but I'm not at home. It's one <laughs> chore he has at home, <laughs> yeah, probably yeah, also. Yeah. Once a week, that goes off at this exact time, even if my phone is on silent. <laughs> so I apologize. And honey, if you're watching at home, get her. Uh, whatever man is over there. I can't remember <laughs> when and where it was, but didn't we run through the list of all the stuff that Griffin's responsible for? <laughs> and there's a frightening quantity of tasks and that it, he is trusted yeah, with. Yeah, because his girlfriend works for a living. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he is Griffin. Yeah. Now I gotta do the dishes, I gotta make the beds. Recycling garbage. Vac vacuuming. That's a big one. Because then, hopefully, not going to get himself into too much trouble again with the ace jack. Ustinovich just ditches the sevens. And no, thank y'all. Oh, Kazan, don't blast off with ace jack again. No, no, no. He's he's uh he's he's been reminded on the rail by his lovely Romanian wife. Well, she literally came over and said, "Stop." Overplaying Ace Jack, yeah. No. Four betting with <laughs> Ace Jack. Yeah, we had a my gun on her. I feel like this person is similar to me in some ways. And once I got away with that Ace Jack thing one time, that would be it for me. But he didn't get away with it. Oh, right. <laughs> so what would that mean for you? Well, he didn't go bust with it. James is holding up. Don't do it. His hands in front of his face. He doesn't want to watch. Oh! He did not listen to his wife. <sighs> this guy likes his jack. All in the call. Domination situation. The good news is he didn't keep his wife waiting too long. She showed up. He was like, be right with you, hon. Ah, not about that. <laughs> Good luck, bro. Good luck. Sorry for the bed. Hmm? <laughs> Sorry for the bed. For the jack. Yeah, well, there's all chirpy all of a sudden. The, pan the, pan the pants here. come like that, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I, I shouldn't have said that. I love my wife. <laughs> That's from Jason. She helped me and I was freaked out about Ace Jack. <laughs> Well, the ace doesn't change anything. Kazan needs to see a jack. A king and an eight. <laughs> I think he'd take a chop right now. Oh. Well, no chop possible. No chop possible. It has to be a jack, a jack on the river. <laughs> Can I use my one time now? Yeah, sure. Okay, I'm using it. Twice. I'm using it, bro. Ba boom. No ah. jack. Good luck, guys. Nice to meet you. In for twenty-seven dollars. And cashing out for significantly more than that. Thank you so much. Nine thousand two hundred and seventy-five dollars. The payout. You know, if this were me, I would immediately start screaming at the person who just showed up on the rail and brought me the bad luck. Robert Kazan. Classic place, ace jack, ace queen. Ace jack, ace queen. Still smiling. Dreams. Made, lived, and crushed. 
here at EPT. Meanwhile, Gerard Carbo's had a phenomenal couple of orbits. Yeah. <coughs> Second in chips at this table, more than 450K, more than 110 big blinds. Not too long now till the clock is paused and they draw for the last number of hands to play tonight. <coughs> I'm going to ask the question again, and I mean it now about his tournament life rather than his actual life. Is Mario Truto going to make it <laughs> to the end of the day? Oh, we started coughing again. The question could be taken either way. I think he's a tough, <coughs> tough fella, and he's going to make it. Lama with ace deuce in the big blind has 20 bigs defense stinks something, something about it stinks it. really stinks and is this going to be another part that goes Gerard Carbo, of course, there is a decent chance of a chop in this situation. Okay, I thought I was going crazy. I thought I was going crazy, and then it stopped, and then it came back again. I legit thought I was going crazy. I thought I was going crazy. Thank God it wasn't me. <clears throat> Plenty of chop opportunities now. In fact, more than half the time, this hand will end but is in a chop. But is going to be a choppertunist? I think so. I think with Ace Deuce here, all of us are choppertunists. Even a nine's a chop, right? We haven't, we haven't sang. Did you guys get any chops in? Mm -mm. It's been a no chop, full day That's coverage. weird, actually. James, do you remember chopping today? No chops today. Chop anything today? Nope. I feel like we average about three a day usually, so the yeah. fact that we have none. I think you're confusing live and online. Mm. I would say two live, three online. Per day? Yeah. Crazy talk. You know who would know? You know his opinion I would like to hear on it? Stat trick. Yeah. I think chops live are not as common as you think they are. John Delano watches every stream. I'd be interested to hear his opinion on how many... Live <coughs> chops a day. Probably has a spreadsheet to tell us. But we're not even going to see a river. Can we get a, a rabbit cam? How does that work? We have people for that, right? We do not. Tom and the cat say two. I'll take two. That's fine. We're going to see a miracle walk. Can't work out whether Statric is actually analyzing some data to give you an accurate response, or is just ignoring you, right? Probably just messing playing Minecraft. Over. His oh, day's okay. over. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, we've been just phoning it in for the last 45 yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah. Right? He usually clocks out around minutes at 17. Some of us are trying to focus. <laughs> I think we're matching the energy of the players, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. There's only the three amigos from the start of the day. Cirque du Soleil. Wait, no, you sat down Five, late, too. Three, you didn't start eight, with us, did you? Well, over there. Yeah. No, they broke the table, then I sat down. Then you joined. Yeah. James, yeah. Joe, question for both yeah. of you. Do you have designs to go to the Sphere in Las Vegas? When there's a band playing there that I really want to see, like I think Muse will probably put on an incredible show oh there, God. and their act is so custom tailored to that place. I will, so yes. I will spend thousands of dollars. I will go see show. Muse there, yeah. But you're not going to go when we're there for the... No, I don't think we'll have time. Yeah. That's the thing. I mean, obviously, you two are playing while we're there, and I would like to see you two live in that. Wait, we're playing? November 4th. Yeah, you two and me too. Yeah. Jesus Christ. I just, I, I, I'm going to switch both your mics off soon. I'm done. <laughs> I'm literally done the with this crap. You don't have to do that. <laughs> Try me. <laughs> I, have, I have tickets for Nate Bargatze while we're there, and I don't think I'm going to get to go see that, that I bought like a year ago. Yeah, I think... I think you two are only playing the first weekend, so that's going to be a hard one to try and make happen. But 
Kylie has her residency at the Venetian. I'll be very disappointed if I don't get to see Kylie while we're in town. Oh, wow. Okay. I'll go see Kylie Minow with you. Sorry. Kylie who? You know. Kylie Minow. Kylie Minow. Oh. I thought he meant Kylie Jenner. He might have been meaning Kylie Jenner, actually. I'm not... No, of course I'm talking about Kylie Minogue. <laughs> What's those Minogue? Yeah. One, two. All right, so we got a deuce, two, three, four. That's nothing. King, two, Five, three. three, four. Okay, that's a draw, at least. With ace high. All right, do something funny, Tretu. There we go. <laughs> on cue. C creative. You can rely on them to do something creative. Yeah, funny. <laughs> 4,000, yeah, okay, bud. Pay me my got, money, got nice up. bet. Oh, you thought I was going to fold, huh? Look at this thought I was going to fold, but it was a McGovern. So we are down to 159 players. Potentially a few more eliminations tonight. The survivors will bag and tag and come back for day three. We will be live tomorrow. Hopefully at the advertised time of 12.30 Eastern European Summer Time, which is 11.30 Central European Summer Time. Five more levels to play tomorrow. How many hands are we feeling tonight? Three, four, five? I'm not feeling great about it. You think it's going to be five, don't you? I think it's going to be high. Okay. Okay, well, there's three numbers that could possibly be, or could it yeah. be two? No, it's three, four, or five. Okay, I'll take three, you take four. Joe, you got five. No, I'm, I, I, the way things have gone today, I'm with Joe. It's <laughs> going to be the maximum number of hands, and each hand's going to take like seven minutes to play out. Okay, you guys both take five. No, you guys can have four and five. I'll take three, and um, the losers pay for breakfast tomorrow. Sure. Adam Gray says it's always coming five. Ooh, we're going to get... Uh, don't want to jinx it, but we could get a... We could get a five-way pot with the way that... Tratel just played just about anything from the small blind, and then Parker's going to be so so committed. Yeah, some multi-action will be fun at this. the end see, of the see day he here. Did yeah. you call that? He wants to play the 4-3. You sick, sick man. I love it. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. That's nah, just wants to call. And Parker must be real bad. Yeah, did not play out of the big blind, so it's four ways to flop. Ace, king, 10. That is Broadway for Carbo. Flopping Broadway in a four-way pot. Fun. No one else even having a remote piece of the board. <laughs> Not as fun. This is why blockers aren't real. You unblock all the pairs and no one even has a 10. What a joke. Oh. Oh, Gavna. <coughs> and staying under repped is Carbo, not getting all panicky about wanting to get more money in. Doesn't think that his opponents are very strong here. Coming out with a raise here would just look so strong. And Govan, I think a lot of the time is going to think Carbo has something like a king queen or a, you know, a ten jack suited. Your queen tens and the like. And those hands might fold to a big bet on the river. So Carbo is giving Govan a chance. Pardo is really considering it now. 
thinking maybe I don't believe that just everything oh my gosh this is great so because of everything I just said yeah Pardo has now thought okay well if I don't think Govan has it and I think Carbo is capped I can come out of the bushes here and put out 30,000 I've been real quiet it's one of the last chances of the day and makes it 36,000 a 4x squeeze into the stone cold nuts and look at Carbo. Parker. Such awareness from Carbo here, just finding the call. Just a call and a king on the river pairing the board. This is where I convinced myself that Pardo was raising with a, with a set and now it's on a seven. Yeah, well, that, up. yeah. That's, what, that's what Pardo's really repping. But and it's, I think it's hard for. Carbo to really have a king in this spot because I don't think the king queens and the king jacks are going to call another 27,000 or whatever it was on top of the nine. Yeah. Three, four, five, what do you reckon? So I think Pardo is going to put his opponent Always. on, you know, something like ace jack, ace queen, something that would, you know, play it like this. Could also have pocket sevens himself, Carbo. So that's why Pardo is going for it and is going to rep that seven's full boat. And that's just going to be a quick call. Yeah, it's a little too small, right? Yeah, I think maybe at this point, Pardo might be thinking, okay, when my opponent does have the 10 jack of diamonds or the queen 10 of diamonds, I don't want him to win with that at showdown, and he probably won't call a s even a third pot. But when he's loaded like this, I don't lose, you know, 80,000. Brilliant, brilliantly played hand there by Picardo. Could have bet the flop, could have raised either one of those bets, but stayed in the cut. And got max value. Really nice, nice work. Hello, sir. Welcome Hello. to the table. <laughs> New player coming in. It's EPT yeah. Reg Majid Ijal. Well, they said to finish the deal, and then they would draw and announce. So we're waiting to find out from the tournament staff how many more hands will play tonight. The clock has been paused. Randomly selected, it will be three, four, or five. We know what's coming. Here we go. Yep, it's five. Told you. Five alive. I guess breakfast is on me. Sorry, did we already cover this? When did they add Griffin's father-in-law to the table? You like Have you Michael? met Griffin's father-in-law? No, he's just, just giving that vibe. Looks like a father-in-law. Yeah. I mean, without the mustache. <laughs> Your button, last button. Carbo keeping the heater up, but he's going to have to contend with a 17 big blind ace king. The kind of stack size, especially under the gun, to cut off. You're not going to be able to call. Zama with the jammer. We saw this one from Carbo before, didn't we, with two fours? 
he called against two sevens yeah for fewer chips too, too much because also the range is, is so much tighter before it was just an open shove for a bit less chips 54,000 at 4k hijacked a big blind but uh, the range is gonna be a bit quite a bit stronger there I want to quickly address a question from Sten on YouTube about that hand between Juan Pardo and Gerard Carbo. We didn't see it, but when Carbo made the single chip call, Juan Pardo mucked his cards, didn't even contest the part. So at that point, as the last player with cards in front of him, Carbo automatically wins the part and doesn't have to show the winning hand. So that was one, right? Oh, yeah, there's a graphic that says four hands remaining. Thank you. <laughs> Makes it a lot easier to keep track. <clears throat> one, raise, eight, five. Oh, Tratu. He's a tricksy player. Good boy. And tell you what, based on the way that Tratau reacted with that ace four suited when there was a raise and a shove i don't think that there is any way Tratow folds this hound now whether he plays it as a shove pre probably more likely as just a call but i will eat this can of soda if he folds pre i am really looking forward to him counting out his chips further and further into the table Makes the call, and we will see a flop. Ace, queen, jack it is. Top pair versus a set of jacks for Tonka. And how many of his 107,000 remaining chips do we see Mario Tratu lose here? 107,000. Okay, that's a bold prediction from Mr. Stapleton. Now that he's got the diamond draw. 97 left. I would expect probably something in the range of 25 or 30,000 here from Talbot to set up that river shove. The double fisted bet from Tonka 28,000. I mean, how does Parker do it? How does he just flop a set up against top pair? And a player that seems reluctant to fold in many other he's, more marginal he's spots. Letting it go this time, I think. Hope you like the taste of aluminum. Minimum. A nice bet. Big one. Is he going to sniff this out? Telling me you've got the ace as well. I half believe you. <sighs> I think your kicker's bigger than mine. Yeah. Oh, man, what a fold. Which one? <laughs> what a fold. Either. Good right. Does shows the jacks. Treat the audience and the table to the jacks. Nice. <laughs> Wrong read, actually. <laughs> <laughs> what a needle. <laughs> what a needle. Bad read. Mama, привет. Big one. Could have got a lot. Worse. Eh? Maybe I should have folded your free bet, eh? Yes. Still got chips off me. Oh! Aces for Malacca style. And Juan Pardo opening under the gun to 8K. Big fold. King Queen suited. There's Jalal. A little late night ASMR here at Poker Stars. 
We're just gonna lull you to sleep here with these pocket aces. Three hands remaining. And it's lull making an ill-timed three bet from the hijack, re-raising to 21,000. And Carbo with nines in the small blind. Gets away from it. Big blind folds. Action back on Pardo. And Echelal only has 87k left. He's only got 20 picks behind. Hard to trap here, I think, because you really think Echelal probably has something good. But King Queen Suited is not the kind of hand. Never that He's going to call the shove with. If you knew what, knew what it was, you'd just call the aces, but... And he does it anyway. Just in case. This really is Malacca style. <laughs> well, I doubt Ejla will put another chip in this pot. You ever heard I, of a continuation yeah, bet? I continue, James. You know, okay. If you're gonna if you're gonna three bet, you gotta continue the story. You'd hate Ace Jack to just get a free turn card, right? But of course, Pardo doesn't have the Ace Jack. If Griffin's father-in-law loses this pot, he's extending his time at the lake this year by an additional <laughs> week. Did I tell you my girlfriend caught the bouquet at the the wedding on Sunday? Oh jeez. <laughs> Everyone made a scene. And Malaka style playing it perfectly. And if that king, queen, or a spade peels with exactly pot remaining. Oh, God, he looks so beautifully bored, doesn't he? I'm loving the fact he's still wearing his VIP <laughs> bracelet from last night's party. Is he really? Yeah. Jeez. He wants everyone to know he's a VIP. Maybe he came straight from the party. No, that was Tonka. No king or queen. Instead, the ace of spades now picks up the flush draw. You know what, though? That's a pretty bad card for our aggressor here because it might convince him to make a move on the river you know if Pardo has something like two nines or tens would I think very often fold to a bet here on the river Pardo setting the trap just do it got him to do it too it's almost unfair almost you should only be to decide the actions you make, not you and your opponent. I kind of like this this size. You know, it, it looks strong. Damn, the VIP bracelet's black. It's so badass. Is that a matte black? Dude, please don't waste our time. Yeah, I'm just going to chase him away of the broom now. It's just... <laughs> made the absolute maximum there that was that was master class stuff he's playing at the top of his game right now except for the pocket six <laughs> but hey if you don't cross the line every once in a while you're not trying hard enough in the game of tournament poker as he said himself gotta try yeah you end under the gun fantastic yes i hope i get him once like i go like that Two more hands to play. Get back them chips I lost off you. Done. What? One.
for raises ten thousand. <laughs> That is a re-raise. Ace Queen for Stinovic. Four betting is an option. Yeah, Stinovic does have the room here to make it something like 75 or 80K and still be able to fold to an all-in if his opponents do have actually have better slash are willing to shove. So I think this is a great spot for Asinovich to pick up some chips. It does suck when you do just run into two kings and the like, but as we can see in these positions, especially the way that players fight for those last few hands before the end of the day, and there is... Re, re, raise. When the crowd say bow, selector. Pretty incredible how real these blockers are. <laughs> I was about to say thank you for your quick fold, Gibbon, but I see you're going to make us wait. I mean, the sizing is uh, pretty small. Govan does have 30,000 out there. It's just 35,000 more to call. You are in position. The price is there. You know, you don't want to put in a fourth bet and 65,000 of your 300,000 in the middle with ace jack offsuit. But, I mean, it's a pretty good price. If your opponent does have kings, you can kind of justify peeling here. Oh, there's that too. Okay, I take it back. Govan makes a move and gets a fold from a better hand. Now, if they had drawn three final hands, we wouldn't even got to see that. Huh? That was, that was hot stuff. That's poker, baby, says Cool Runnings Poker. Well, we got to see that hand, and guess what? We get to see one more hand. Trust your instincts. Look at this beautiful moment there. Put the camera on. Uno mas mano. That uh, was really impressive stuff, and you can just see the stress. You know, that wasn't uh, some reckless move from someone that didn't know what he was doing. That was brilliant. It's a very disrespectful thing to do to someone on their birthday, though. Yes. Touche. Trat two. In. Made it. Day three. Bag it. Ejlal. Made it. Day three. Bag it. Talbo. Jury's out. Does have everyone covered. He made it. Oh, no, wait. Carbo's got him covered. Carbo's folded. Tonka's safe. Tonka, bag it. Day three. Kind of hard to get three bit with the ace nine after you just yep. four bit folded the ace queen. <laughs> Probably would have worked, but. And Sam are the last line of defense. Uh, uh, you kind of have to, right? Yeah, kind of have to on that stack size. Ooh. Five, Trey Deuce. And hearts. Yeah, this is all Tonka. Tonka does like to go for those small bets, though, so I think Samer is going to be given reason to continue with that gut shot. I think he's exhausted. He's going to pot it here. I think he's just going to bet 4,000. Huh? We're both pretty wrong. Big, yep. Good for him. Good for him. 11K, the continuation bet from Tonka. I did say half pot it, right? And a reminder, this is the last hand of the day. 
likely that all the players are watching at the feature table right now will bag and tag and return for day three. Looks like plays finished in the rest of the room. 155 players remaining. What would San Martino do? Mm. Probably get us to correct the spelling of his name. Zama folds. Tonka wins the last hand of the day. Shows one. Tonks but donks. What about the show one, show all rule? Dealer did show it to the whole table. Get me to bed. <laughs> or actually not, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Bring in the bags. Yes. Tonka very much looking forward to getting to bed. Tonka yeah, should put one or two of his beard hairs gentlemen. in his bag just for, you know, DNA verification. I wish you all nothing but the best of luck tomorrow. So day two draws to a close. We have burst the bubble. We have played through the post-bubble bust-out bonanza, and it looks like 155 players will be returning for day three when we play another five levels of Hold'em. We could wrap this up tomorrow, 155 players? Keep telling yourself that. 55 hot dogs, 55. <laughs> and this is how things ended for the players at the feature table. Tomorrow, the blinds will be 2K, 5K. Big stacks for players like Carbo and Tonka. Not so many chips for players like Harold Zama and Majid Ejlal. A reminder, we are into the money. Everyone's now guaranteed at least $9,275. When we get to the late stages of this tournament, you're looking at six-figure scores for everyone at the FT. Apart from the winner who gets a seven-figure score, more than a million dollars. Total prize pool in this EPT Cyprus main event of $6.4 million. And tomorrow, shot clocks. Correct. The shot clock will be in play from the start of day. A reminder that we kick things off 12.30 local. That's 11.30 Central European summertime. Make sure you check out the PokerStars blog for updates and stories from the European Poker Tour. The guy's doing great work, and of course, you can follow the live updates as well via Poker News. Including those all-important end-of-day chip counts for all remaining players. But we're going to be back for day three. Make sure you join us. 12.30. Eastern European summer time, 11.30 Central European time, day three of the EPT Cyprus main event. But for now, from Joe Stapleton, Griffin Benger, Nick Walsh, and me, James Hartigan, it's good night from Cyprus.